Hello, everyone. There's emotions here. So someone's got to talk about this. Someone's got to talk about them happy girls. We got to go where no man's gone before. We got to go overseas. And something has got to sit there's got to tell you something else also. Ugh! Ugh! And uh, uh, once again, when we have these type of discussions here on YouTube land, um, you know, like, uh, this is something of a deep, deep, simple-ass conversation. And when we start talking about this kind of conversation... We gotta look at very deep in the eyes of this of the eyes of the whispers, man. So apparently, before I start the whole theme of the, the thing here, um, before I did this, James Franco, right, is gonna get, you know, he's getting heat on why he hasn't played Fidel Castro. And already these right wing conservatives, even though they're trying to make a good point, man, they still F up. I am telling y'all. There's something going on in these voices, man. Something's going on in these kids. Oh, I gotta talk about. Oh my God, Color, colors. Oh God, the Hollywood. These liberal leftists. Just look at them. Just look at them. I'm just howling it all over there. And I'm like, you know, don't get me wrong. Little lepers. These lip. These uh. These uh, leopard seeds over there in Hollywood. They sure got some weird ideas going on in these music industries. So yeah, hold up. Thought I would have imagined that a lot of the conversation would be surrounding the fact that, hang on a second, James Franco was someone who was admitted to for the requisite, you know, couple of years. Is this someone that we really actually want to support and that big directors and big studios in Hollywood in general should be working with? And I know a lot of people might say that, hang on, uh, wanting James Franco to disappear from public life forever, that's just cancel culture. Uh, but in, in my opinion, saying, hey, this person is a predator, I don't want to support him with my money. Money, it's kind of different than cancel culture, which in my opinion, at least is more when someone loses their job for like an unpopular tweet or something they said 10 years ago. Like, I don't think it's strictly just, oh, cancel culture to say, hey, you were like a 30 year old guy who was creeping on a 17 year old. I don't like that. I don't want to see your movie. But in any case, I would love to know what you guys think about that whole situation. But it turns out what other people were actually more concerned about was the fact that James Franco is White. Specifically, as actor John Leguiz Leguizamo uh, said, I'm, I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. Uh, I'm going to throw up a picture of what this guy looks like here because I actually didn't know his name before this, even though I definitely did recognize his face from some roles. But in any case, as Riley explains, he, quote, took to Instagram to speak out against the recent casting of James Franco as Cuban revolutionary Fidel Castro in the upcoming independent film, Alina of Cuba. Boycott this effed up, plus seriously difficult story to tell without aggrandizement, which would be wrong. I don't got a problem with Franco, but he ain't Latino. So, I mean, like, again, there to John, Leguizamo, uh, maybe you should have a problem with James Franco. Uh, doesn't seem like a good dude, but but whatever. Now, as many people pointed out, this was strange criticism to come specifically from John Leguizamo because he is someone who, despite not being Italian, has specifically played Italian roles before. And some people also theorized that, hey, maybe he was just upset because he didn't get the role. But I mean, in any case, he wasn't the only person who had this complaint. The fact that, hey, hang on a second, James Franco isn't Hispanic. He's not Latino. So why is he being cast in this role. As actor Jeff Torres said, I'm auditioning for another generic Latin American drug dealer and James Franco is dead ass playing Fidel Castro. Latinos getting done dirty AF out here. I like the fact that you got these Hispanic, Latino, Americanized, gutless kids. I'm auditioning for another generic Latin American drug dealer and James Franco is a dead ass playing Fidel Castro. Latinos getting done dirty out of out here and everywhere, damn. But if you know anything about Fidel Castro, he's also a drug dealer. He, I mean, I mean, if you do, if you actually do some research, Fidel Castro, just like Chavez, had legitimately had a military style run drug empire walking around as well. I mean, for hello, like oh, these auditioning. I'm auditioning for a generic Latin American drug dealer. They just don't go to the auditions then. Oh my God, it's hard to be. No, you're stupid and dumb. You're probably very Americanized. You can't do any novellas because you're just whatever crap. You're just trash. So you got to do these drug dealing stuff. 
to bye bye by Hollywood. And I'm sorry, but you're you're going to these roles. The the cast as the the drug dealer, you're still going there. That's your fault. And you're saying that oh my God, James Franco got a better part playing for Del Castro. When we let's be for real, let's be for real. No one wants to play for Del Castro because the heat it will get under Cubans. Damn sure that it won't be no Cuban guy playing for Del Castro. No one. Everyone know. See, this is the thing about no one talks about. Everyone knows why no one wants to play Fidel Castro. Because if someone plays Fidel Castro, then all of a sudden it'll be like inaccurate assessments. Um, they, they can't speak Spanish correctly, uh, the Cuban way. And so I could play about how Fidel Castro wasn't protected that way. It'd be more leaning left, more leaning, leaning right. I, I, you know, it, it'll be it's such a. I mean, it'll be such a mess that it, there's like no point playing even. It's no point in making a movie about Fidel Castro. But there really is not. I don't know why they got this. And everywhere, damn LOL. Similarly, the Annenberg Inclusion Initiative wrote that let us get this straight. First, Hollywood cancels multiple Latinx shows and Batgirl. Then they cast Castro with James Franco. No wonder there is so little progress in this town. They still don't get it. And Jenny Ruizza also wrote, I'm so confused by the disrespect the industry continues to give Latine performers. Now James Franco has been cast as Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro, everyone. Okay, so first off, uh, if in your statement you use the term Latinx or Latine, there's like a 99.9% .9 chance I'm going to disregard whatever you say just, just based off that. Like, I know what your stance, what your politics are going to be by the fact that you've used those made-up terms. But also, I do find it strange that Hispanic performers or Latino activists are still under the impression that Hollywood is marginalizing them when it's like, guys, have you not been paying attention for the past five years. Like, yeah, someone Hispanic isn't as tasty to Hollywood as someone who's like black or trans or whatever, but I mean, the tides have turned. We we, we just know that. Even if in the past, uh, white performers and talent in general was preferred, which was not okay. It's 2022 now. I mean, have you even seen a Netflix adaptation lately? There has been a huge overcorrection. So I'm sorry, I just don't buy these complaints. In any case, All right, here's here's the problem with this chick because she's stupid as f. First of all, let's be let's be defensive. There's a difference between Netflix and Hollywood. It's not the same thing. The thing about Netflix is that what you understand is that the producers that keep producing these these uh, series in Spanish, right? They're from Latin American countries. They're sponsored by Netflix, but they're from Latin American countries. It has nothing to do with the United States. That's something that people don't talk about. It has nothing to do with the United States. The thing about Hollywood, it's always run by white dudes, white American males. They're always going to put white American men on top. It's just the way it is. Get over it. Get used to it. Don't watch their content. I don't care. Get used to it. Whether you like it or not, everyone knows Hollywood's run by white American males and they're going to hire Anglo or English-speaking actors from Ireland, from, from Australia. They're going to put their white American guys on top with all the, all, the, all the foreign chicks. It's just the way it is. We all know the biggest interracial daters out there in the United States is the white American male. We all know this because he promotes it all the time in Hollywood. This is why I, I, I just don't. This is why I got issue with the with the uh, with the with, with some of these white boys. I'm saying about black guys taking. I mean, I, I just don't see that. I'm sorry, I just don't see that. We all know, we all know for a fact who runs Hollywood. It's, it's just the way it is. The second in line is black American males, which is not a surprise because once again they're black American males. This is the second most well known group because they these two people have lived the longest in the United States. I'm sorry to say this, it's just the way it is. So you got a problem with that, then don't try to get a job in Hollywood. I hate when people are, we got to fight the race for Hollywood. No, you don't. Get this crap out of your freaking face. I'm, I'm serious. 
I'm literally serious. Again, it annoys the crap out of me because because don't these people realize that we have cinemas and series in our country we watch to? I'm sorry to say that, but this is the reality of it. And I'm talking about these. That I, I that's why I'm talking about the white American guys because they sometimes they get upset. They want to be victims. It's all about black dudes, which is weird to me. I'm thinking you should know as a white guy in this country, United States, that you guys date out out of all the groups of men, you guys date out in record number. You guys are mostly promoted all around the United States. We have to shit our bags. To everyone knows Texas Man Alive is nothing but mostly white American males. They're shoving Chris Pratt as a sex symbol, which tells you how ugly these guys really are in real life. And that goes beyond what I've been saying before. Um, that goes on before, I'm saying. But at the same time, it's just the way it is. That's the United States. Hello, you live in the U.S. It's mostly the largest demographic is white Americans. The largest male demographic is white American males. So, of course, the girl represent themselves. Duh. It's just common sense. So don't get upset. And I hate this whole excluding crap. Like it doesn't make any sense. We all know this. It's retarded. I don't understand this Hollywood crap and all this other stuff. Like they make your own productions. Wow. The thing about net. I'm, I'm going to keep saying about Netflix. Okay. Netflix has nothing to do with Hollywood. Netflix, what that, what, what they have done is actually they done better than Hollywood. They open the door for people from around the world because they're actually more tech savvy, international savvy, so they're global because it's social media. Yeah. Uh, um, and that's something people understand. Netflix tapped into that global market where they actually sat there and said, we are going to advertise to every country around the world and what does that mean? We're going to get your producers to we're going to fund a project, slap a label on it, and there you go. That's why Hollywood was an issue of Netflix. And the reality of it with Netflix, oh, look at the series. Yeah, because, oh, look at the representation. I'm like, yeah, because the thing is, let's see for real. A lot of Netflix that's, in, that's like the best content for Hispanic, Latino, whatever crap, are in Spanish. I don't want the American English one. That's all just Americanized shit. Is it who gives a shit about that never sells? I'm sorry. Anything I spoke, anything about Latino and Spanish is all in English. It's always crap. No one buys into that shit. I told you so many times. It goes to show you because it goes to show you because in order to sell with a Spanish Latinos, don't speak English. You got to speak Spanish. That's just how it is. And that's what Netflix did. They got the writers in Mexico, these other countries, they tap into that market, and that's why they have their own series. And that's what she's she's, she's kind of like misusing Hollywood and Netflix. It's not the same thing. It's not. Let's, let's, you know why Narcos is so so popular? Because it's an exact ripoff of these narco novellas that was made in the 2000s. And 2010s. That's what ha that's how they got that money. That's how they got that the imagery. That's where it came from. But again, I have a problem with these guys who keep bitching about Hollywood representation. Uh hello. No one look, Hollywood in the next coming years, not right now, but in the next decade, you're gonna see a massive shit with Hollywood. It's not what people are gonna think it is anymore. Since since the movie theater dying off, it, it's it's not it's gonna be there, but it's not the same anymore, unless they change it to like a movie theater slash nightclub. I don't know, but the way my, movie theaters are being operated now, it's not the same anymore. Everything's on it's online, it's on an app, it's on everything now, and people are not gonna spend ten bucks to movie theater. Um, for a ticket and have the kids and popcorn where you're going to shell out over at least around 80 bucks. 
eighty to one hundred bucks, depending on where you're going. Because that's that's what's going on with Hollywood. People now, kid, people are not. You know, I'd rather stay home watch the kids in the movie than than spend money going and get popcorn and all stuff. And that's the fall of the movie theater people. And I'm sorry to say that, but that's just the way it is. I mean, uh, that's just the, that's just the reality of it, and that's just what's where it's going. That's why I got a problem with you talking about Fidel Castro and the Hollywood shit. It doesn't make any sense to me because there's no point of that anymore. The industry is dying. So that's no why why people are so begging for representation. It's just the weirdest shit ever. It's just dumb. The film's creative producer actually addressed why they chose Franco specifically, and this is what he had to say about it. And spoiler alert, it was not just because he hates Hispanic people. As he told Deadline, to get there on such a tough look to cast, we use Fidel Castro's ancient Galician heraldry, I'm probably saying that wrong, as our focal compass, and then comb through the entire ranks of actors with Latin roots in Hollywood to find someone who has a similar facial structure. In executing a close search into our hopeful through the eye of Spanish and Portuguese genealogy, which the Galatians held, we found that James by far had the closest facial like of our industry's leading actors, meaning that the focus would be to build out his character accent and we'd have a stunning on-screen match to intrigue audiences and bring the story to life with true visual integrity. So basically, according to this creative producer, they were looking for someone with similar uh, racial or ethnic background as Fidel Castro, i.e. Spanish and Portuguese. And overall, they were just looking for someone who physically looked like Fidel Castro, which, I mean, if you're creating a biopic, makes sense. I don't see anything wrong with that. However, let us now turn to what the Mary Sue had to say about that statement. Alina of Cuba using race science to excuse casting James Franco as Fidel Castro. And by the way, accompanying that just very flattering and not at all bad faith headline, they also had a screen grab from a Simpsons episode where Mr. Burns is measuring a skull uh, of a little bust that says phrenology on it. Yeah, because wanting someone of similar racial background and who looks like a person to play that person in a film is apparently now phrenology and race science. You love to see it. But at least in the Mary Sue's defense, they did also go into James Franco's uh, sexual abuse allegations and misconduct here, which is probably the only time on this channel I will ever defend the Mary Sue. But I will admit it is nice to see that they are also upset about the sexual misconduct and not just the audacity of James Franco to be white. But in their words, the exact problem regarding this casting, and now this is a little bit hard to get my head around it, but maybe you guys will have a better time. It's that the production team has, quote, hired a non-Hispanic white man for the role of a white Latino. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I don't even quite understand what that means because by the Mary Sue's own admission, both Fidel and James Franco are white. I guess their problem is that James Franco wasn't brought up in the correct culture uh, to be acting this part, which is very strange, but just reinforces the idea that according to the left, acting cannot be a thing. You actually have to be the person, essentially, if you're gonna play them on screen, whether that be your cultural background, uh, your sexuality, your gender, identity, you name it. But what also just makes this entire conversation all the more confusing is the fact that Ana de Armas is going to be playing Marilyn Monroe in the new Netflix film Blonde, which I believe is coming out either at the end of this month or in the conversation all the more confusing is the fact that Ana background, uh, your sexuality, your gender identity, if you're going to play them on screen, whether that be your cultural background, uh, your sexuality, your gender identity. All right, let me let me explain something to you. I like how these kids, she's Canadian, she's a half a girl. Uh, I think it's a miracle, but uh, I remember they were in shock at the fact that um, her father was Chinese, his mom was a white Canadian, and they were like, she was explaining to people like every time when she says that you're, a, you know, you're half Asian, half white, they were all in shock that. The fact that it was actually the dad is Chinese, and like they're like, wow, I never met a, a, a an Asian dad with a white woman. Like it's always like ninety nine percent of the time. Like that was a they did a whole series on that shit with this girl. Like why is everything? She starts saying, why is every time when I say that my dad's Chi Asian, like all of a sudden everyone gives me these weird looks. I'm like, and I, I think I I think what was the guy Euro Asian Tiger. Made a good talk to her one time about that. Steve, you know, you're Asian Tiger, that the Hapa guy who's half Asian, uh, uh, Asian, the, the, just started debunking these white nationalists through all his talking points. She, he talked, he talked to her about that. Like, why is it that way? Um, 
why is it that way? And he, she was, he was like breaking it down. She was kind of like, oh no, because obviously, obviously she don't want to take that shit because all of her audience is predominantly white males. And they got a fetish for her because she's half Asian, half white. So she's exotic. So, you know, these, these white guys are rolling down these places here in the United States and Canada. So that's what's her large. So she speaks as like talking point, liberal, uh, these liberals and this and that and the left and all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. She's like a Lord. Like she's like, like, she's a half a version of Tommy Lauren. You know, we got parents to white American males. You know, this, this is what mammies do. Parents to them. You know, bow down, suck the, the you know, the conservative penis. is a conservative is basically co word for, uh, you know, I want to be white so bad, Mr. Pro White. So you got to be a mammy to these mother, to these guys. So, so the problem is, is that she turned around, made it to it's, oh, you know, this liberal leftist. Uh, excuse me, time out. Hold on a second. Uh, when, and I'm actually about to finish this part. Okay. Um, Euro Asian Tiger, Euro Asian Tiger, dude, Maria, it's your Euro Asian Tiger. He was a happy kid talking about white. He was the first one. I remember talking to this guy. He was the first one. Um, he was the first one to talk about why Asian women got with white men and how white men would treat their their half of sons like shit while treating their half of daughters like rich, rich and glorious women. And he was the first one that did all that stuff. He was going after the little the white national with their Asian fetishes and, and how, you know, they allow Asian men in the groups in white national circles, but treat them like shit and how they're like a little worship. Go- she was going to all of that stuff because the stuff, because and he got banned off of YouTube. He got he got um he got harassed and all that stuff. But a lot I remember I remember I remember listening to his stuff, man. It was insane stuff that he was saying. It, it was some insane stuff. And when his channel was straked up five, six times, I was like, this guy's gotta be saying something because even the white nationalist, like like uh what's his name? Uh Charles Tyler. No, uh, what's the, no, no, no. What was the, what was one of the white nationalists uh, guys? Uh, Taylor. Uh, there's so many in there I forgot. I mean, I just just bump in my head. Basically, a lot of the top white nationalists they got after his ass because basically he was exposing them for having Asian fetishes and how secretly the self hating and all that stuff and the uh, there you go, Jared Taylor. Thank you very much and how all this stuff was going on because. I remember someone reaching out. I knew someone that knew of him, and he knew who I was. And I remember someone was telling me that a hey, why don't well, you know, your Asian Tiger actually sent some of your content. Um, this was back in 2017 and everything. But, but back in the day, man, he was like, he will go in on all these guys about what was going on, the abuse going on, and all that stuff. So when she, when when this girl was talking to him, she was saying about how oh my god, um, why is everyone flipping out when when uh, Asian man gave a white woman all that weird stuff, and he was explaining to him why is that way, and she felt kind of insecure about that. And when I heard that video she did with him, I think she, she I think she took it down. She was actually defending white men. She was saying basically white men are being targeted, white men are doing this, white men are being, uh, 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 you know, subjugated by the left, blah, blah, blah. The leftist, uh, you know, the left is anti-white, blah, blah, blah. And he was pointing out that, okay, you keep supporting these right-wing talkers, but at the same time, you should know, since you're half Asian, what they say about Asian people. And she sit, she sat there and didn't do nothing. This is why I try to explain to people about these people. These people are mammies. They're con artists. They're a joke. This is this has nothing to do with liberal or left at all. It has to do with male worship. 
has to do with bending over for these people. I, I refuse not to take that at all. It's just the way it is. And guys like him call all these dudes out. He called all he was on Reddit, man. He had a he had a whole he had a whole list of white dudes having Asian fetishes. How he was pointing out how a lot of conservatives were talking about conservative values being American, and yet all these guys had like Asian wives. And how like, and you know, obviously, um, Steven, you know what I'm talking about. Because Georgia Tiger, people were saying that they get that um at the time they were they said that they were reaching me out for him because some of the stuff that I was talking about was sort of was going what he was talking about about the hidden white nationalists and like the black American, the fetishes, not weird shit, the uh the sexual fetish. Because he was going in on these white dudes and what's really been going on in these households, how there's abuse going on, how to neglect these Asian wives, how they how the self-hating Asian wife would treat them like crap and how they'll treat their sons like shit and that they'll be keep that to sort of keep to kind of like cope with that. They became super white to ap- appeal to their father, but their father would never, never, um, never do that. So that's why you see all these like Asian guys in these white national circles and they just allow them in and all. It's, it's some, he was going into all of that stuff and God wish I had his videos. I, I should have said them all, man. I should say that all because the stuff that he was talking about was insane. And he had and he was going after big time white nationalists, right wing conservatives. He was going in out of all these guys because they had some weird, kinky fetishes. It's hidden, and they know what was going on. The guy that's why the guy got rid of that guy. That's why he's been sued a couple of times. And this girl's still talking like this about right wing conservatives about the left, this and that, when you, lady, know, damn well know on your platform, you have a bunch of white guys who are literally walking around are anti-white, or sorry, anti-Asian, and you're half Asian, and your dad's an Asian guy, and you know what's in these circles. This is why I have no idea why in the world any guy who's Asian should even support conservatives, because you know anything about these guys. I talk about conservative Americans. Obviously, we know the gen- the real conservatives are these other countries outside the United States. Those are the real conservatives, okay? Those, those are the real conservatives. Not the shit you see in the United States, which is basically white American male worshipping. That's what's, what's going on here. Conservatives basically is white American male worshipping. I don't want, I, yeah, that's why I don't bend over to these guys. Not at all. I don't believe that crap. Um, these people have said the most craziest stuff. And for this, for these, for this, these, uh, you know, mammy whores sitting there spewing all that stuff is got to be insane. This is no different with Tyreek Nishi, what he's about to do about this, because he does that pro black shit. That's a whole nother thing itself, too. And this goes back to this male worshiping crap. It's it, the mammyism is so huge. It's got, it's, it's unbelievable. It is so huge. And if you're not understanding that, you're never going to get to what's going on. And I'm sorry to say that, but that's the that's the reality of it. Because this girl here is straight up lying. First of all, you talk about Fidel Castro, well, culture and and this and that. And I said, well, well, it shouldn't matter. Uh, excuse me, you are conservative, right? Then you should know that culture does matter, that language does matter, and the way you're raised in a culture does matter. Because anyone who's actually really a conservative will understand that. I understand that. Okay? Like, for example, let's take it back for a second here. Okay? Let's take it back. When Celia Cruz was was played by a Puerto Rican girl, she was an Afro-Puerto Rican. They didn't give a crap. Afro or not. They wanted a Cuban chick, not her. When, When the guy was playing from the articles... Pablo Escobar, Wagner Mora from Brazil, they didn't like him playing that guy. He wasn't Colombian, this and that. Oh, but genetically, no one cares about genetics, but culture, nationality, how you raise the culture, that's a big, big deal. And for her to say, oh, that's a left thing. 
Why, when you're hearing that right now, I want you to understand this. When you're hearing that right now, why well, just her coming out of her mouth? This girl's like these. Let me say right now, these people. I'm telling this right now. As much as these girls want to sit there and talk about conservative right wingers, deep down inside, they love liberals. They love that shit. They love liberals. Don't let them fool you. They they these women can be quasi feminists if you wanted to do that. Basically, don't raise your voice to the man. Because dare you question a guy. Because the moment you raise your voice and say, I question this male here, immediately you be called a feminist. Just like if someone talk, criticizes someone who's conservative, they're going to call you a communist. Just as like if you criticize a Democrat liberal, he'll call you, he'll call you a racist. It's the same okie doke playbook. It's the same thing with what black Americans do. It's the same thing with white Americans do. It's the same freaking playbook. This is why I have a problem with all these people who are Hispanic Latinos going around saying about Hollywood, why are you complaining, bro? Why are you complaining? No. What you need to, oh, I get, I only rules I do was only just uh, drug dealers that stop doing those roles then. Don't, don't bar, you're, you're adding more fuel to the fire. I'm sorry to say that. That's not an excuse. This is 2022. Everyone's moving away from Hollywood. I don't want to hear it. No one cares about Hollywood like they used to anymore. It's done. You're looking at the decline of Hollywood. I don't want to hear this crap. I want to hear all this stuff. I don't want to hear it. I watch a lot of foreign films out there. There's enough talent around the world. You can watch it in their language, but none of y'all want to do that because you're lazy as F because you want to learn doesn't want to learn another language. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to, I, I don't I don't want to hear it. I really I really I get tired of hearing this crap. And I hate girls like this walking around trying to act like she's got a parent to white boys. It's 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 absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. I think what was it? Did it did it Steven? Did it this guy girl date like a black dude once? These white boys went flipping crazy. No, no, no. It was Lauren Southern, right? She got with a white with a black guy, right? She was conservative. Oh, I so she got with like a Mr. Mr. BBC all of a sudden. Oh my god, you know, she's not conservative. I'm like, you see, you see how this crap works? You see how the logic works. It's the same thing right now, right, Stephen, in Texas. What a surprise. Every every Republican conservative running for office right now that is Latino is always a woman. What a surprise. What a surprise. It's always a woman. What a surprise. You know when a woman, you know when a woman's running, you know that woman's not in charge. I want to let everyone know that. Kamala Harris did not move up to second, second become second command of VP was not for his Jewish husband. Come on now. This is ridiculous. I heard a rumor that Lauren Star is she married to a happy girl. Regardless of the happy guy or not, they're all a bunch of mammies to, to this day, man. I swear to God. All these all these women are all just still mammies to this day. They all go. Listen, they can date wherever they want. They're all like bowing out of white white American males. We're worshiping, idolizing them, just like mammies will do. Just like mammies. Just bowing down. Just keep on worshiping them. They do no wrong. Agreeing with these other guys been saying, even though you got guys like Andrew Tate, a biracial American British male, raised by a black American father. What a surprise. The face, the face of the manosphere. The face of the, the face of all these pillars, the face of manhood on social media right now is a guy raised by black American males, and all he does is shit on women every single day. You can't you cannot make this crap up. I, I try my best. I went to Hollywood to get the script going, but apparently it was just too realistic. Gotta be a docuseries. I mean, I, I mean, this is this is this is the most retarded crap I've ever seen in my life. As by the way, life me a minute ago. Now I gotta start a new way of finding new information because it's probably be more studying events I've seen so far from my life. That's this is why I keep trying to tell this to so many people that there's something going on. 
start questioning it. It doesn't make any sense. These people are going to act like, no, 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 no. Listen, I get what you're doing. You're bowing down to white American males, which is weird to me. I did never respect this chick when she was questioned, when, when that girl, when that guy, your Asian tiger was questioning him about, about how Asian, Asian got being treated amongst what she was. She just did. She just flew under the bus, started defending white boys. Oh, they're being persecuted for being white. The left is anti-white, blah, blah, blah. All this weird stuff. You know, they're, they're, they're there. You know why she was doing that. Yeah, a bunch of guys in the comment section. You don't believe me? Go on this girl's channel. Look at the comments. A bunch of, bunch of white boys. You know, all horny and emotional. Oh, she's so attractive. Oh, oh she's so beautiful. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh. Not, oh, I love you talking about your concern. Same thing with this other chick. What is it? The real... What Ranger or Steven Maria? Who's the new chick now that's a Puerto Rican American? Third generation removed. That chick that's like Latina now. That's speaking like Manny talk now. That you know, you damn, you damn know that ring did not come from a Spanish guy. Oh, I got, I got a ring because of Kevin Sams. We all know. I know for a damn old fact. I don't know, man. I might. You know what? I might be miscorrected. Who is that girl? Um, that that uh, someone's gotta listen to me. You know what I'm talking about? That real. Uh, I forgot what's her name. The the man the the there you go. The real femme uh, sapien that girl. That girl. That that's another mammy. We I don't know Ranger who's her husband married to. It cannot be a Hispanic guy. I know it's it's not it's not an Hispanic guy. It cannot be. It cannot be a Latino guy. Can I I I I uh. He cannot. She she cannot be married to a Hispanic guy. It's gotta be an. It's gotta be an American dude. Because only he's American. Only only American will, will marry that chick. Old white guy. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. I got married. I got married. I was in the Kevin Samuels. Uh, when I heard that, I was like, oh, I'm like seriously thinking 100. percent That girl is not married to a Latino guy. 100. percent I knew it right then and there that there's no way possible. <laughs> this and once again, being a mammy, as always, this is what I, there's. Hey, hey, listen, listen. There's listen. Shout out to these girls getting the bag. My as well. Even though you shit women and, and throw under the bus and degenerate them even more, at least you say, well, might as well get some money out of it. I'm tell I'm tell I'm I'm telling you I'm telling you, you know you're a female right now. You listen to these chicks, you know this whole mammy thing is huge, it's big business, and you got you gotta ask the question. I know you want the bag, but but do you are you a sell this female species for some couple of dollars because you want to dance a bunch of black and white boys? They love. I mean, oh my god, I know they're gonna pander to to white black because I mean, that's what the money is, man. Of course. They're not a parent of Hispanic. Are you kidding me? What money can you make from those motherfuckers? Uh, R- Russian girls for years been trying to make money off these Hispanic dudes in Spanish. And they still couldn't get the money. They got some, I'm not going to lie, but they still couldn't get that much money. I'm not going to say everything she said was wrong. There's some factual things. And by the way, the left does need me criticized 100%. But the mammies, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. But on the flip side, we got someone else to talk about. We got to talk about this, folks. Because we got another guy in the spectrum that's going to speak about this. And we know who he is. Was actually Italian, and then they moved to Cuba. But they're hell bent on having their lineage represented, and we're the same way. We got to be the same way. Puerto Rican and Carlitos way does a great job. Yeah. 
said, hey, this man is not Latino. And it says, this is still going on. How is Hollywood excluding us, us but stealing, stealing our narratives? He's talking about having a boycott. He said, I ain't got a problem with James Franco, but he ain't Latino. Yeah. So now, and James Franco looks like him too. I think he would do a good job. He actually looks like he can do a good job. Yeah. He looks like he can do a good job. And there's been people, non-Latino, who play Latinos very well. Al Pacino, he plays Latinos damn good. Al Pacino's Italian, but he played Tony Montana, a Cuban drug dealer. He played a Puerto Rican in Carlito's Way. He does a great job. Yeah. But no, and, but these are fictional characters. So when it comes to historic characters, they want the historic characters as closely aligned to the lineage as possible. You see? Franco is Portuguese? Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Well, yeah, they're all white. You see, they're all white. But they're hell bent on having their lineage represented. And we're the same way. We got to be the same way, family. People don't like folks tampering with those in their lineage. And we have to stop being ashamed of thinking the same way. We have to stop being ashamed of thinking the same way, ladies and gentlemen about representing our lineage, representing our culture. Yeah, Castro was um, supposedly Italian, yeah. I've heard that too, that his family was actually Italian and then they moved to Cuba, whoop-de-whoop. -whoop. And John Leguizamo, which, which is interesting, he's not even Puerto Rican. He's been pretending to be Puerto Rican. He pretended to be Puerto Rican for a long time and he's not even Puerto Rican. He's like Colombian or something. I, I, I talked about this before. I think his dad said, hey, no, ain't nobody in the family Puerto Rican. So he was trying to do the whole Puerto Rican thing for a long time. Yeah. All right. First of all, I've never heard my freaking left him pretend to be Puerto Rican. He's always been called Colombian. Another thing, too, he said that Fidel Castro's Italian descent might be, but the last time I took is from Spain. But they're all white. They're all white. And what what gets to me seriously is that you know, pretend to be Puerto Rican, pretend. You know, again, this is something people don't understand. They're making something a big deal out of nothing. It's not a big deal. Who cares? I mean, well, Al Pacino, I'm like, okay, but that's Al Pacino. Like, let's be for real, it's Al Pacino. James Franco is not a good pick because let's be for real. Like, he's not a serious actor. Like that. He's not a quality good actor. And, and another thing, too. The Q, anyone who's Cuba is not going to play Fidel Castro. You know what would happen if that if a Cuban actor played Fidel Castro and we all know it's very it's very left leaning in Hollywood, so they're gonna betray Fidel in a good light. Do you know the backlash for that guy, for the Cuban community over there? You know the backlash that will occur if you made that movie. Fidel Castro. It's a real interesting dynamic here. Very interesting dynamic. But see, they all they try to make a lot of that stuff interchangeable. He's not exactly Puerto Rican, but he's Latino is Latino. No, no, no. If you're going to be about lineage, be a stickler for the lineage all the way through. Am I freezing, guys? How am I looking here? Looks like I'm freezing here. How am I doing up here, guys? Am I? Feels like I'm freezing. Well, yeah, John Leguizamo is um, Colombian. Uh -huh. Real interesting dynamic. And speaking of Latinos, so um, shout out to the brothers and sisters who went down to Power 106. They had a round two of the pull-up. Shout out to them. 
and there were some some racist Latinos who were trying to confront the brothers and sisters, and they stood their ground. They stood tall. Um, much respect to the FBA family, making sure things are on point. And <laughs> oh God, this is actually pretty true. This is not important, but the USA is like racial debates of a Hollywood film. They all, oh yeah, they love, dude. Let me try now. They love race. They love talking about race. They love interracial sex. They love all that weird shit. You know, I just like making fun of Americans for your guys' obsession over race because it's just absolutely hilarious. Because it's some of the stuff you guys point out is kind of stupid. And the thing about it is like, oh, look at the pull up and those racist Latinos over there. It, you, you know, I keep saying this. Racist is basically is racism is basically why are you not kissing my ass? Just because someone questions you doesn't mean it's racism, right? Because it's weird because if we if they question us, oh that's an opinion, but we question them, oh that's racism because your skin is black. Does that make any sense? Only Americans have been dealt with a blow of retardedness to understand this conversation because outside these borders. No one takes these shit seriously. Like, I, I don't know how to say this to people, but the stuff that you guys complain about in this country is borderline retarded stupid. I'm sorry. Pull up, man. Pull up. Pull up. He they pull. They show pride. Brothers and sisters was over there showing pride at the second pull up. And want to put that, wave that finger, y'all. And wave that finger. And then racist Latino showed up. I'm like, oh my. If I say I don't like fried chicken, you all call me a racist. You know, you know something? The Americans here as a whole, they got a problem. <laughs> you know, the way Americans view race is just absolutely hilarious. That's why I listen to these people. That's why people like, you know, unity over there. You know, racism and social construct. I'm like, I don't care about social construct. I don't know what that even that is. I don't even care. Much respect to the family, not letting the, the scared, cowardly tethers detour everybody because the tethers are trying to project their cowardice onto the FBA lineage because they ain't about to do nothing. They're not about to say nothing. So shout out to those who I mean, I, I see, why am I freezing? I don't know what's going on with this thing. Looks like I'm freezing, but hey, we'll make it do what it do. All right, we'll make it do what it do. Um, and speaking of pulling up, we're trying to organize the the, the big, big pull up for Washington, D.C. We're still waiting on them damn permits, man. My sister Jade is going down tomorrow to see what the delay is. They told us that there was going to be a delay with them getting back with us about the permits. We want to get all of that stuff nipped in the bud because we're going to have this big pull up in D.C., where all of us are going to be there. That's the one that we're trying to get popping for real, for real. So we can let folks know what the business is. All right. We're still trying to get the, the big pull up in DC going on for October 15th. And um, again, only thing that's going on in DC, they're just dragging ass about getting back to us with the permits. The major delays in D.C. due to COVID, okay? So, yeah, man, we're working on that. We're still working on it. Don't forget, we're still working on that. We're just waiting on them to give us the um, permit. You say the, the National Park Services, they stay on the BS? Yeah, yeah, man. We were calling them, and that's why I'm glad we got Jade out there who was just showing up. She just going up there because, yeah, they don't be answering the phone and don't be answering the emails like they're supposed to. So, yeah, we're going to make it do what it do. <laughs> they want to take my phone calls. They receive my messages. <laughs> Could you imagine you're the park police? You're like literally all you got to worry about is like, like, you know, like bombers and, 
and like uh, assassinations, and and then you got this guy calling. We're gonna pull up the five white supremacy. <laughs> We're gonna pull up the five white supremacy man, and you get. We're gonna be down there at the National Mall. We're gonna be protesting. Oh my god! It's just like, could you imagine? Could you imagine these people be saying this? Could you be imagining that? And I'll bet you a million bucks he ain't gonna. Sh- he personally is not gonna show up. Be sitting there marching. We're going to pull up FBA, ADUS, man. That's how we roll. So we're going to make it pop off. What's up, m Dom? In our mix. Yeah, shout out to our sister Jane. Oh, what's up? Uh-oh, we got some... some Scared tethers in here already. You scared tethers stay in our mix. Actively redirecting attention to stay in our mix. Those are part of um, you're your own separate group among the non FBAs because all non FBA people are not tethers, but the tether class boy, you guys are cowardly and you love. Trying to project your cowardice onto us. Your cowardice and your fear. And we're not allowing that to happen. So y'all stop. Oh, God. Uh, Basically, black foreigners, man. Uh, uh, black, Black Americans have this issue now with black foreigners. Like you, you're the buffer class. You're the buffer class, man. You, you were designed by the white man to attack us. And I'm like, I don't think the West Africa sitting around saying we gotta attack these black Americans. Cause they actually really believe that. They actually believe before they come to the United States, someone takes it to a dark room and tells them, "Don't mess with black Americans. Stay away from them." And they're like, "I told you." They'll show you videos of how negative we are, and they watch the news all propaganda. I'm like. I'm thinking to myself, I don't think that's what happened. I don't think, I don't think the TSA, when these Africans show up from like West Africa, Senegal, Burkina Faso, Ghana, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, name it, Derpo, Congo, Central Africa, Kenya. I don't think, in fact, my sister, my sister, wait, hold on. My gosh is married to a Kenyan man. So I got to talk to him about this. In fact, I actually had, I actually told him one time, when you came to this country, did, did, did the TSA send you to a dark room and told you, stay away from these black American males, stay away from them, stay away from these black American females, stay away from them, show you images and all that stuff. And did, did that actually happen? Did, 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 the, did when you were in the airport, when you came to the United States, did they, did they told you to go to a dark room, a dark big room, and they, they forced you anti-black American mill sentiment. Is that what happened? Is that what happened? No, it did not happen. Okay, this is some fictional fantasy stuff going on here. Never mind the fact that you guys act a fool, cause a riot, cause a muckus, call, not in a riot, forget about that crap. Just go to any local McDonald's where you guys live and just sit there and see the, the level of anger coming out of these guys' mouths. Fights break out McDonald's. If you don't believe me, Go to any local McDonald's nearby the hood. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Go to your local McDonald's where you live that is quote-unquote nearby a hoodish area. You'll see what I'm talking about. Go to your local bus stops. Go to your approach transportation. They're there. You'll see all that weird stuff. I think I think maybe that that they saw as a they made those conclusions. Oh no, it was TV. It was the white man. Did they listen? They, and, and now they're coming to think they're banning us. They want to have a buffer class. Good, but you know, you know, yes, yes. Go to McDonald's. We love to see you smile. We love to see you smile at McDonald's, right? Yeah, you see those. Everyone's all fit, happy. Go to freaking McDonald's. Once you actually go to the real McDonald's, everyone's. All, 
<laughs> like depressed and angry. He's always fights breaking out. <laughs> I mean, what kind of lie McDowell was doing the past couple of years with that ridiculous campaign? We love to see you smile. We love to see you smile. Well, I love you. Too. I mean, seriously, McDonald, McDonald's is like one of the worst places to see people. Everyone's all depressed. Everyone's all pissed off and angry. You got the homeless bum. Then you see some fights going on. We got we. You know, I'll be, I would live seriously. There was a there's a there's a there's a McDonald's nearby one time that I used to live nearby, and it was always fights on Friday, Saturday nights. Always fights. Always fights. And then I have to come back home. And I said, we love to see you smile. We love to see you smile. You remember those commercials? Oh, McDonald's, we love to see you smile. I'm like, I'm thinking, what are you talking about? What smile? I, I see every time when I step in on the weekend and get something to eat, there's a fight breaking out. And we all know who got, we all know, let's be for real, there was some lemonade. We all knew who, who, uh, who, uh, you know, who did that. We all know who clawed toilet seats when we went to a piss. We all know who did that. We all know what happened to the glass once we entered McDonald's, who broke that glass. Okay. We all know what happened when we, when we come inside McDonald's, we see nothing but soda, everything on the floor. We all know what happened. We all know what happened when, when we see that 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 fat lady that has to adjust her shirt off, and you see some 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 you know like like some blood somewhere. We all know what happened. Okay, we all know what happens when we stay in line. Someone out there is gonna yell and scream about their order and just start throwing rampage, literally like the game of rampage. Forget about what you saw with the gorilla and the alligator and the and, and the and the uh, coyote. Forget about those those characters from Rampage, the the video game. No, 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 no. And the uh, the squid monster, I believe, right? You know, I'm talking about the little alligator squid monster kind of thing. No, it's a, you know, a monster, right? You know, like an alligator monster. Yeah, forget forget about that. Forget forget about all that. We got actual Rampage live in effect. We all know who those people were, okay? Because every time we net, every time on a Friday, Saturday after I went out with a friend at one against an E, this is what exactly what happened. And not to mention, you will find once you get there, police officers arresting people at the same time, and we all know who they are. Because the guy that I was with going to McDonald's, he was a black dude, and he literally told me these people are crazy. And he got pepper spray too. By so I took his pepper his pepper spray. You hate on him. He had to have milk on his face. We all know why he had to have milk on his face. We all know why. We all know what happened. We all know what happened when we heard that noise in the background. There was a fight breaking out in the, in the kitchen in McDonald's. We all know that, but that's okay. That is all okay because we all love to see you smile. That's that. See, McDonald's is seeing McDonald's people. All those... This is why I... I refuse to go to McDonald's inside. We don't know what's going on. With and by the way, it also includes Burger King. It also includes Popeyes, Taco Bell. We we don't, these fast chains, I, I refuse to step inside. Not to mention, I step inside, it's always sticky. Unless, listen, the only time is unless it's really hot outside. I did some work. I want to be inside. But I'll be there for like, like one or two minutes because I can. I know what's coming next. We all know this, folks. We're not, we all experience this and do not sit there and tell me that the TSA told me otherwise. No, 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 no. We have eyes. We don't need, we don't need to watch no TV sets. My eyes are my TV sets. We see what we see. I'm not telling you. I step out. We know what's going on. Okay. We all what's go, we all know what's going on in these areas, New York City, in Boston. We all know what's going on in South Florida, in Houston, Texas. We see it all the time in, in, in LA, in Las Vegas. We all know this, folks. I'm sorry. I don't want to hear this. Okay? And McDonald's has done a disservice to people when they sit there with healthy people, happy people, and say, we love to see you smile. When I just go in there, I see angry faces. Grr. 
And tell me not lying. Tell me not lying. I know a lot of you kids right now are having funny emojis, but deep down inside, you have seen what I've seen. That's why I can't stand guys like this. Oh my God, you've been brainwashed. You've been told by your parent. No, 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 no. My parents told me to respect people. I never, I they do they never taught race to me at all. Not at all. Just respect people. It was. It's actually you guys. It's actually you guys that shape what I feel because I saw what I saw. Okay, I saw what I saw. I mean, the old folks people they couldn't eat food in there anymore because you scared them away. We all know why my, my one of my dear before he passed away, Mr. Jefferson, an old African American male with you know African sorry African American man because he actually was a man, was in his late seventies into his eighties with go McDonald's. He stopped going there for quite a while before he passed away. We all know why he stopped going there. There's always a ruckus going on in the morning. He stopped. And he told me straight up. He told me. Though it says he gave me this mean. He told me I told him exactly what's going on. I said, stay away from that McDonald's. I said, what's going on, Mr. Je- Jefferson? I said, oh no, 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 no. We all know it's in there. And he actually gave me a hard ER in the end. He told me stay away from those people. They're trouble. And I was like. I remember I remember at McDonald's very I remember at McDonald's very very I know a lot about McDonald's man a lot of times on the weekends man a lot of times on the weekends I'm telling you it was a good it was some good times on the weekends you know if you want to see a good fight just go out go to McDonald's on a Friday Saturday night oh yeah you want you want to see a good fight you want to see a live fight boxing or UFC fight go to McDonald's in your little local hood on a Friday Saturday night you'll see it Tell me I'm not lying. Tell me I'm not lying. Come on. Come on, people. Come on. You, you, come on. And we know who's fighting. You know, come on, man. Is he for real? You'd be surprised to be fights breaking out, and all of a sudden, some guy in the corner say, You want to bet who's going to win this fight? I uh, said, so I got I got five of that dude with, with the hat on. Oh, yeah. Stop whining about us because we're never going to let that cowardly tether energy rub off on us. We're never going to do that. We got a lot of stuff I want to cover today. Um, Out in Atlanta, shout out to my Atlanta folks. In Atlanta, ladies and gentlemen, in Atlanta, there's something going on out there in Atlanta where they are putting nuisance abatement laws out there now to try to target the black businesses out. All right, folks. All right, we got into that. We got into that discussion about Latinos. Now, I I wanted to see this. Um, I did want to look at this because... a uh, dear friend of mine, um, God bless him, but um, he wanted to talk about this with me about it. He said, Kem, please make a video about this, please. I said, why? And I think you need to see this. So shout out to the guy because, um, you know, he... Um, He's a proud, proud, um, he's a proud man himself. Um, and this is something that I've seen so far. And when I saw this, I was pretty much in shock what was going on. Like, um, and, um, well, I saw this. He said, Kim, I need I think you need to see this. And we we have to talk about this because it, it's we have to say this because he he 
apparently he said something that I heard. Well, I didn't want to do this, but we got to talk about this uh, five feet, five feet tall creature in the corner here. Not this guy just yet, because he's he's not a self-loathing guy that that actually sat there and said, "How come I cannot get a Becky in Seattle?" Um, so, folks. Anyway, I might as well get paid to do it, right? And I'm looking yeah. around, and again, there's like five girls I think all sitting side by side with each other. And mm-hmm. I just thought it's such an interesting dynamic where, where like, when you're honest and you're open, like, mm-hmm. I joke a lot about cheating on my channel. I was like, yeah, like, cheat on your girlfriend. But I actually don't think that's the best strategy. I think, right. like, not even the most morally right strategy, but that's the best strategy. I think the best strategy is just be honest with the girls you're dating. I think right. exactly what you want, right? And so I'm telling, but the thing is, I'm super masculine in my frame. I'm super, mm-hmm. like, centered in my reality of what I want. Mm-hmm. And so when I tell the girls, hey, like, look, I'm, you know, polygamous. I'm not polyamorous. I'm polygamous. I, mean, I like to date What's the difference multiple between- girls. So polyamory is, you know, a lot like kind of just open relationships. Like I'm banging okay, other okay. like other girls, the girl I'm dating is banging other guys. Right. I'm not necessarily okay with if I'm if especially if I'm in love with a girl, mm-hmm. I don't want them fucking other dudes. Cause it just right, makes me right. think like that's gross. Now I don't want to fucking bang you anymore. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I don't yeah, wanna yeah. I don't wanna I don't wanna share you because yeah, yeah, human that makes beings, sense. we desire scarcity, right? Okay. Why does every hot girl want to fuck Drake? Like Drake lives in my city. I know multiple girls who've had sex with Drake. Right, like I'm Eskimo Bros with the baby, right? Yeah. Like I, know, like, I, I, I'm, I'm serious. Like I've hooked up with tons of girls who are fucking celebrities, right? Mm-hmm. And all right, I'm gonna look at you. I'm gonna look at this guy weird. The baby and Drake. Yeah, I know a couple girls that bang the baby and Drake. If if the women that you're pulling is going after Drake. In the baby, what kind of girls that you've been sleeping with, bro? Now, let's just put uh, shout out to the to the to the guy um, from Malaysia who sent me this video because um, he told me, please, Kim, I want you to respond to this. I will respond to this right now. So I think he's, he's somewhere in the middle of the night or in the early in the morning hours. Don't much time over there, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this again. Oh, I'm betting all these chicks, man. I'm going to bang all these chicks, man. I'm going to bang all these girls. I'm like, yeah, I'm banging all these. I, I sat in a row, and I'm like, I'm looking at a sideway with this guy. I'm like, the hell are you talking about? How much do you pay these chicks? I, I, I'm serious when I talk like this, man. Uh, it's gonna, it's You're going to hear it. You're going to hear it. Because uh, he, he said something very, very odd. Very, very odd. Because I used to live in LA as well. And so when I thought about it, right, it's like, why? Why does every girl want to fuck a celebrity? Why does every girl want to fuck the millionaire on the yacht? Well, right. it's because there's so few millionaires and there's so few celebrities. When you look at the general population, women desire scarcity, right? Mm-hmm. Men desire scarcity too. But if you think about what a man desires from a woman, it's he wants the girl that not every guy can get. Right? right. So right, as right. a man, you want to have the hot girl that not every guy can get. The moment I see a girl I'm into checking another guy, even mm-hmm. like talking to another guy, dude, I lose complete fucking interest. Right. Oh, but right. Um, it, it's the same reason Bitcoin has value because there's only going to be 21 million Bitcoin in existence. And so, mm-hmm. you know, 20 years from now, Bitcoin's going to be worth like 20 million fucking dollars each because mm-hmm. there's a scarce amount of Bitcoin. Right. Yeah. And yeah. So, Human beings, we desire scarcity. And so if you can make your man yourself a man of scarce value, right? right. There's only one of you. And truth is, there is only one of you, right? But right. you got to act and behave like there's only one of you, right? Like carry yourself with that confidence, that self-esteem, almost like that God complex. Right. And also mm-hmm. have inherent value and logical, tangible experience to back that up, such as maybe it's club act. Like for me, I love mm-hmm. meeting um, club owners, working right. on deals with them creating these like win-win relationships. And now I have access to these clubs where I have like unlimited bottle service, free entry mm-hmm. for all my girls. So it's like, I get to create these like cool little fucking experiences. Or like having my bougie as fuck penthouse. Like everything's gorgeous penthouse over like in the city of Toronto, right. right? Like it's beautiful, right? You girls come in. I love seeing like when I bring girls back in the club. And um, the first thing that happens when they I open the door, the first thing you see is my bar and like the lights. And yeah, the first yeah. they're like, they're, like whoa, right? And they're like, they're just, like what, what the fuck, right? They're like, take right. it back. Right, because right away the first thing they'll ask me is like, "What do you do for work?" Right, and I'll be like, "Oh no, I, I just have a sugar daddy. I'll, I'll downplay." It. I'll be like, 
I'm a male stripper yeah. or like um, I have a sugar daddy. I, I joke about it. That's right? smart. <laughs> I'll be like uh, YouTube, I'm a dating coach. But I don't, yeah. I don't like explaining to girls what I do. It's just like so confused because they're like, what? You're a dating coach? And I'm like, so so I'm, again, honesty, I'm just half the time, I'm really honest. Half the time, I'm a compulsive liar. It just depends on my mood. But um, <laughs> the, the half the time I'm honest, I'm just like, I just explain to girls. I'm like, yeah, I make YouTube videos where I pick up girls. Check out me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll go on their phone. I'll subscribe them to my YouTube channel. Like the first, Because <laughs> the, the thing is, you know, it's funny. Back in the day when I first started YouTube, I would have yeah. a lot of girls be like, ew, are you one of those pickup artist guys right 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 and, I, and i'll be like oh uh, no I'm, I'm more of a dating coach but now i'm just like fuck yeah i am right because mm-hmm. what are they gonna say oh it's creepy pick up girls and i was like well i had sex with lots of girls right mm-hmm. uh, what are they gonna say oh it's weird that you teach guys to pick up girls i'm like well i make lots of fucking money right, right, so like, right. i make like i can make your annual salary in a week what i do so it's like right. what can you really say that's bad about it right i'm, I'm helping people right? and change people's lives and so you got to figure out as an individual how can mm-hmm. you do something similar in your life? And not necessarily, I'm not, t- and it's not about the money. It's not about the girls. It's about the principles of where you're coming from as a man. What are you doing that's adding immense value? Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, this guy's knows the app out of me, man. Okay. It's about to get something very, very weird, folks. It's about to get weird. Because he he actually said something to me, um, and I'm not joking. I'm saying this. I, I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find it. Hold on. I guess it's good for getting girls, right? Which, funny enough, I I think I fuck less girls now than I did when I lived in a shittier, <laughs> uh, you know, apartment. <laughs> mm-hmm, <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. So I find it that's really really funny. So it's, it's not the penthouse like if you girls. It's not the yacht or the. It's you. It's you as a man that gets mm-hmm. the fucking girls. It's just your job to take them to something cool. Well, and you know, funny enough, like when I was broke, when I was a broke boy and I had no fucking money and I was, um, living with my fucking parents, Mm -hmm. I would take girls back to like an earlier point about the stereotypes. This is like the reason I really like your content and just like really like following you is you use stereotype is almost like a weapon. A lot of guys will use it as an excuse. You see the, the black pill. I don't know if you heard of the black pill. Um, it's like, yeah, of course toxic as fuck. It ruined my friends, dude. It. So the reason oh, I actually got a nose job, I got a nose job, right? Oh, because wow. one of my best friends became a male stripper. And think about what a competitive environment that is, right? Because mm. you guys are all competing over the same girls for the same living. Back to like an earlier point about the stereotypes. This is like the reason I really like your content and just like really like following you is you use stereotype is almost like a weapon. A lot of guys yeah. will use it as an excuse. You see the the black pill. I don't know if you heard of the black pill. Um, It's like. Yeah, of course. Toxic as fuck. It ruined yes. my friends, dude. It. So the reason oh, I actually got a nose job, I got a nose job, right? Oh, is wow. One of my best friends became a male stripper. And think about what a competitive environment that is, right? Because mm. you guys are all competing over the same girls for the same limited amount of money, right? right. And it, it's such a toxic environment. There's a lot of like sabotage going on. There's a lot of like manipulation going on. Like mm. dudes are trying to drug each other. Like it's a fucked up toxic environment. So all those dudes are trying to find any competitive edge possible. Okay. You're a friend of a male stripper. I, 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 oh, they're competing against each other. I highly doubt they're, they're really dancing for girls. Let's see for real. He's a male stripper. He's dancing for guys. That's where the money is. Possible. And so my buddy got really into black pill and it kind of fucked him up a little bit. So we got like surgery and stuff. And so he convinced me to get a nose job. But the reason I got a nose job wasn't because I even believed in a black pill. It was mm-hmm. more so, was, I was like 20 years old. And I was like, man, I got a tenant that girlfriend who was a famous actress in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, she's like a TikToker and like famous on TV and shit. Was that Valentina? Um, it, yeah, it was Valentina. <laughs> Fucking stupid whore. I hate that bitch. I hate her. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then um, also, um, you know, yeah, it was Valentina. Fucking stupid whore. I hate that bitch. <laughs> yeah, it was Valentina. Fucking stupid whore. I hate that bitch. <laughs> Yeah, it was Valentina. Fuck a stupid whore. Hate that bitch. Hate her. Yeah, it was Valentina. Fuck a stupid whore. Hate that bitch. Hate her. And um, <laughs> and then um, also, um, you know, I was killing it in business. I was killing it in career. Like everything. I was like, what's the fucking higher level? I'm like, I don't know. Like, get a nose job, become an actor or something. So I was like, I was like, thank you, exploring options. So I got a nose yeah. job, and I don't regret it at all, whatsoever. Because I definitely yeah. got hotter girls now for sure, and girls always compliment my nose. Right, but I was getting oh, that's like, awesome. yeah. like, I mean, I fucked like 200 plus girls before I got a nose job. And like, since I got a nose job in the last few years, I banged like over 100 girls. So it's like mm-hmm. nothing really changed. Like, I banged the same amount of girls as before. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I don't, it's hard to say if I'm even banging hotter girls because I'm banging hot girls before, I'm banging hot girls now. Right. But like, 
My game's on. <laughs> you got a nose job. Okay. Okay. To the Okay, this is a response to the guy. And he asked me about this. Because uh, he was talking about stereotypes. We're about to get into about stereotypes here. Okay. Let me explain something about guys like this. He's insecure. All right. He's insecure. Very, very insecure about himself. Okay. He doesn't like himself. It's obvious. The reason why I know that is because he should know from the culture he's from that the stuff that he's talking about does not exist. It will not fly in these places. It would not fly. So we know for a fact that this guy here, he's just taking advantage of white, white predominantly mostly white chicks. Oh, I got a hundred girls. You know, I, I you know something about these guys that bang over hundred chicks. I, I just don't believe you. As a guy, I don't believe you. I can see you making out over maybe at least 25, 30 girls and slept with 15, 20 girls. I can see that. That's pretty logical. But now I'm banging a hundred girls. I've been a hundred girls. I don't believe that 100 percent unless you're pay, paying prostitutes. That's the only time I can see you. Okay, you got 100 chicks. I got you. Why are guys like this guy walking around saying I bang 100 chicks? And why is this guy interviewing like being impressed by this, knowing fully well that you as a guy should know he's lying? Any guys listening to this know that this guy is lying. No way in hell you got to bang 100 chicks. Not like that. Because, and this is something I don't understand. Why are you open about this? Because if you know anything about females, what is the worst thing women don't want to hear? The fact that you've been sleeping around. So why are you announcing to everyone that you're a whore? Social change too in the last couple of years, right? Yeah, so, um, but yeah, that's a little, little different, though. Stuff, dude, it is different. The black club yeah, mentality is toxic yeah. as fuck. At the end of the day, dude, like when like, I'm probably like between 105 to 110 pounds right now. I'm mm. five foot four. I'm skinny as fuck. You know, mm. I'm I'm not jacked. And like, I'm not the best looking dude. I got pimples on my face right now too. I got mm. I got pimples from stress from like working a lot and shit. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm still fucking a lot of hot girls, right? Yeah. Here's here's the thing, dude. Women aren't attracted to you based on how you look. They're attracted, to you, and that gets your foot in the door. They're based on they're trying to be based on behavior and the way you make them feel and your vibe, your vibe, mm. your mask and authority. A lot of guys mistake looks for presence. Okay, when you walk around yeah, with a confident sense. energy and a body language, you naturally look better. When you walk around smiling, when you're mm. walking around like you own the place, but maybe you're not smiling, but you act like you own the place, and you're like, mm. who the fuck is that guy? Right? Mm -hmm. And then women become like very competitive for your attention and your validation and like mm -hmm. look if you're not a six foot three jack good looking white dude who looks like a fucking male model then i'm sorry bro life fucking sucks what are you gonna do cry about it like a little fucking bitch go mm -hmm. fucking cry no one gives a fuck but it's great because while you cry you know what i love what i actually love about these fucking losers here we go again here we go again about white tall white guys this is what i'm trying to tell you these I, I, I anytime a guy starts talking about interracial dating and the third thing that comes out of his mouth is white girls, and then you talk about got male beauty, and the first thing comes about is white men, particularly white Anglo American Canadian men. I got those are all reflex to me because that is a sign of that's kind of like that white worship that you guys been stalled with because. You were raised in these countries where you saw, you grew up, saw all these white girls on TV and this, and you're like, wow, these girls are so pretty. And that's what your condition here, here in, in these areas. And that's what happened. That's what happened. Is mm -hmm. we need fucking losers like you to cry and be a little bitch. So guys like me can go on and kill it. Is if every mm -hmm. guy was getting all the girls, it would just get too competitive, and then I would yeah, get less girls, that's, right? That's a really good but way to put it. You make because you're broke. You know what I mean? It, it's like mm -hmm. relatively speaking, I'm rich. Like when I went to Columbia, everyone's broke in comparison to me. So I'm like, mm -hmm. well, fuck, I'm rich as fuck here, dude. <laughs> you know I mean? That's a really good but way to put it. You make because you're broke. You know what I mean? It, it's like mm -hmm. relatively speaking, I'm rich. Like when I went to Columbia, everyone's broke in comparison to me. So I'm like, that's a really good way to put it. You make because you're broke. You know what I mean? It, it's like, mm -hmm. relatively speaking, I'm rich. Like when I went to Columbia, everyone's broke in comparison to me. That's a really good but way to put it. 
you make because you're broke. You know what I mean? It, it's like mm-hmm. relatively speaking, I'm rich. Like when I went to Columbia, everyone's broke in comparison to me. So you know, I'm rich, but in Columbia, everyone's broke. So I'm like, I'm I'm rich. I'm the king, man. I'm 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 slaying the dragon over there, man. I'm getting bad bitches over there. I uh, see see right there. There is that kind of saying voice like he because see, I, I know for a fact this guy's insecure. Same for this other guy, Chang guy. Because anything regarding Latin America, these guys get really insecure. I saw that dude Chang talk to that dude, where's Wes? Um, they're talking about how like Asian, the Asian fish is big in Latin America. Once again, it's Asian fetish. Black fetish, white fetish. Oh, they want me. They desire me. Well, is it a surprise that it's it's always like Latinos want Arab men, Latinos want white men, Latinos want black men, Latinos want Asian men? Where, where, where uh, you know, are you sure that's the case, or are you just being horny? And that's why you got a passport. You went down there. Let's be for real. Okay, guys, I saw that guy. And, and and I I want I'm trying to pull up the stream where this guy literally threw his bad guys under the bus because that guy wears West and that dude that other guy literally sat there and said that we are better providers than those Colombian men down there. It was like, huh? Like I was like, what? What's going? Like I don't understand these of these guys. Like, what? They're the grudge against Colombian men. Oh look at them! Look how they are. They are. Uh, they're alcoholics they, they're, and they beat up the women. So is the rest of the world, bro. Domestic violence is all over the world. So there's, there's no domestic violence in the United States? None at all? There's no femicide walking around in, in the United States? None at all? There's just, everyone's walking by, just, you know, but over there, we got to protect these females, you know, from these evil, uh, evil beaners. You know, I'm I'm a high value because I got the dollar. I got the you know Canadian dollar in this case. I'm rich. I'm rich compared to these to the rest of these people. I'm above them. Yeah, yeah, sure, buddy. So I'm like, mm-hmm. well, fuck. I'm rich as fuck here, dude. <laughs> I mean, this is awesome. I'm a, I'm a god here in Columbia. Mm-hmm. I literally felt like I was a god. I literally felt like there was no rules for me. I could do anything. I'm fucking yeah. rich, and I'm good looking, and I've got game. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm at the club running game. Me and Matt Levine are at the club running pickup, and nobody because we've both been done game for ten fucking years. Dude, you think the local guys had any idea what pickup artistry is or what you know mm-hmm. advanced seduction skills? Are? Do you think any of these fucking dudes had any idea of what mm-hmm. the fuck we were doing? I used to live in LA. I used to give game in LA at like Hollywood parties, running pickup, and nobody because we've both been done game for ten fucking years. Dude, you think the local guys had any idea what pickup artistry is? Or what you know, mm-hmm. advanced seduction skills. Do you think any of these fucking dudes had any idea of what mm-hmm. the fuck we were doing? I used to live in LA, running pickup, and nobody because we've both been done game for ten fucking years. Dude, you think the local guys had any idea what pickup artistry is, or what you know, mm-hmm. advanced seduction skills? Do you think any of these fucking dudes had any idea of what mm-hmm. the fuck we were doing? I used to live in LA. I used to get game in LA at like Hollywood parties, mm-hmm. at YouTube events with like, yeah. so it's like in Toronto, I'm, I'm competing with like millioners of yachts and club promoters and. All these club owners for girls. I'm not kidding, right? Yeah. So like, when I'm going to Columbia, it's like there's no competition, right? And so the whole point is like, you know, kidding, right? Yeah. So like, when I'm going to Columbia, it's like there's no competition, kidding, right? Yeah. So like, when I'm going to Columbia, it's like there's no competition, kidding, right? Yeah. So like, when I'm going to Columbia, it's like there's no competition, kidding, right? Yeah. So like, when I'm going to Columbia, it's like there's no competition, kidding, right? Yeah. So like. When I'm going to Columbia, it's like there's no competition. Kidding, right? Yeah. So like when I'm going to Columbia, it's like there's no competition, right? And so the whole point is like, you know, we need losers like you who are an insult fuck mm-hmm. to make guys like me more successful, relatively speaking. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Ring Blackfield. I'm gonna go on and go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To make Guys like me, more successful, relatively speaking. So thank yeah, you. Yeah. Thank you, Ring Black Build. I'm going to go on and go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kidding, right? Yeah. So like, when I'm going to Columbia, it's like, there's no competition. Right? 
kidding, right? Yeah. So like when I'm going to Columbia, it's like there's no competition, right? <sighs> All right, let me let me get this straight. So you went to Columbia, and the guys don't know what pickup artistry is. They don't know what seduction is. The hell are you talking about? I went to the club. I was picking up chicks. Are you sure they're not prostitutes? Because usually in clubs in Latin America, you don't really try to pick up chicks in, in clubs because they don't know some before they go to the nightclubs, right? I highly does is going on. Okay, let me tell you something. I'm gonna say this to everyone else here. Okay, this guy for this is the him and many other guys that are going down Latin America. A lot of different groups of men. For some odd reason, they got grow with the men, and it's weird because no one even talks about these guys. Do you think these guys know about seduction? You think they know what game is? You think they know what pickup is? They know nothing. And we got the game. We got to have this. And, uh, you know, when I go to Columbia, there's no competition. I'm dealing with millionaires. And, but when I go to Columbia, I'm on, I'm on easy mode. I can get all these bitches. That, that to me is like, I don't understand what the hell. He says, oh, wait, when I go to Columbia, I'm rich. Everyone's poor. These Colombian guys, I, they, they can't compete with me. Yo, yo, hello. Hello, bro. Hello. Yeah, you, buddy. Yeah, you. What are you talking about? First of all, no one's competing with you. Second of all, you're just a weird guy asking ra random chicks on how to get chicks. And by the way, the best shit that this guy was with us was horrendously ugly. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. There's, oh, well, I go to Columbia. There's no competition. There's a, I, what? Listen, what is up with you guys and Colombian guys? I highly doubt you even know any Colombian guys. Let's be for real. What is your grudge against Colombian guys? For some weird reason, the last couple of months, these guys have been egging on Colombian men. These Colombian men. These Colombian men. These Colombian men. And I'm getting all these girls, but these Colombian men. What's wrong with you? What are they done to you? What, why you got a grudge with Colombian? What's wrong? What's wrong now? What's wrong now? What's wrong now? And it, you know, I, I, you know, something. I have no idea why, why this is even the case. You know, why is this even the case? Because, um, I mean, piercing, right, right, um, especially like you're an ethnic minority. I'm a mm -hmm. quote unquote ethnic, I hate the term ethnic minority because <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's like, like Asian, like South Asian, and like you know, East Asian, yeah, and that's like half the world population, but it's one <laughs> ethnic minority for everyone, right? Which right? right. is super funny, but um, <laughs> you're, you know, I feel so bad for my white friends because they're the real ethnic minorities. But um, they're they're being suppressed, right? Uh, right by right. the media and stuff like that. But anyway, the whole point is you're an ethnic minority, so you know I could walk up to a girl without piercings and without jewelry, and without accessories, just you know dressed in a fucking t-shirt and jeans, right? Yeah. Unless the girl gonna she's gonna automatically stereotype you because most fucking Indian dudes are cringe. Most Indian right, dudes right. are super fucking beta, right? Most Asian dudes, if you think about the stereotype of the Asian dude, what do you think? Yeah. You think they're very docile and very like. Shy and very like kawaii. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you think Bob's in Vajin? You think, um, you know, like fucking like, hello, I am from India. You know what I mean? And <laughs> yeah. So the whole point is like, you want to differentiate yourself from that stereotype. You want to break yeah, the stereotype. Yeah. And the best way to do that is getting your nose pierced, getting fucking yeah. tattoos, right? Yeah, Wearing yeah. a pearl fucking bracelet. You know what I mean? Wearing a, you know, silver ring from Egypt. You know, like doing all these things that, you know, break away your stereotype and now what's funny is like being here's the best part because once you get to that level now you're exotic so before mm, i was like yeah. an ethnic minority but now i'm this like exotic individual now girls want to hook up with me because i'm like the only brown dude they know who's cool i'm the mm -hmm. only brown dude they know who's like good looking and dressed and looks like a fuck boy right, right i'm right. the only brown dude they know who's like killing it and crushing it and making it right and so the whole point is you want to you know break the stereotype differentiate yourself from every other fucking guy um, you know, recognize your value 
and build it and demonstrate that and show that. And like, again, dude, go follow me. You mm-hmm. can follow me on Instagram. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you gotta be different. Get some, get some, what do you say? Get some pearls, get a nose ring, get a tattoo, be different. Dude, hello. I mean, I mean, I was, I was like, what in the hell? I says, dude, let's be for real. What the stereotype says. I'm like, okay, I'm okay, okay. And you gotta break over the stereotypes and do the opposite. Hello, hello. I'm like, you don't like being Indian, don't you? You don't like yourself, do you? None of these guys like themselves. What do you think about them? Most of them are this. I'm like, dude, dude, what you got to do is get a tattoo. Get this. Get a nose job. Do something, man. Break the stereotype. And once you do that, now you're the cool brown kid. Now you be exotic. And it's like, okay, this is something. This is something I'm going to try to say something to you, okay? You do know that your culture is what makes you exotic, right? That's the whole point, you idiot. So basically what you're trying to say is basically be, listen, this is how it is. He's a, he's a, he's, he's this face, you know, you know, basically a white, white man trying to like a black dude. The baby, Drake. Everyone's gonna drink in the baby. Well, I heard that the baby. I'm like, what? What kind of girl you been talking to? And then on top of that, oh my god, you think you're the standard like the tall white white? I'm like tall white guys. I never hear him talk about anyone from his own background because usually you try to compete with yourself. You try to compete, measure up to the best looking guys from your ethnic group. This is, this is how it is. Okay? You don't want to do that. You try to measure yourself with all, other groups of men, which you don't do, and then you proceed on to shit on your own cultural legacy, buddy. And then for some weird reason, you start talking about going to Colombia and how you're like this exotic creature in Colombia and these Colombian guys don't know how to have any game but then, but you have, and that, you know, you know, well, I'm in Colombia, there's no competition. You know, how, how is this logical? How, how, explain this logic to me. Explain this crap to me. Because usually, if girls want something exotic, right? Usually girls try to pick guys that okay, I'm used to the same guys. There's something exotic about it because I'm a brown guy. No, 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 no. Hold on a second. Hold on, there, buddy. You have to, first of all, it's what you do. It's the same for what I do. You have to sell yourself, sell your culture in a positive light. That's what you usually do. No, you do the opposite. These other guys do the same thing too. For some odd reason, the what 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 happened? Okay, whatever happened here in these countries, these Western, what's whatever going on? They did a number on these guys, mentally in the head. What are you talking about? Oh, 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 oh! I got with this, I got with that, bro. I, I'm gonna just be let's be perfectly honest, and him and the other guys too. You don't like women. You don't like your own women. You're one of these guys. That you will see on TikTok, shitting on your own women. That's what it is. You shit on your own women. You think they're not attractive. I gotta get with Becky. I get with these other chicks. You gotta put yourself. You, you're just like the guy you want to be, the Afro American male, exactly like the, like the white American. You gotta shit on women. This is what you gotta do. It's, a, it's the same protocol. And then on top of that, in order to do that, you gotta shit on your culture. I, I'm sorry, this guy. This guy does not like himself. I'll guarantee on his playlist, there's not one song from his culture. Not one. He's probably embarrassed. It's absolutely embarrassing.
it, it really it really is and i see this on tiktok too from these guys too i it is it is kind of weird because the you know this is what's going on there's a lot of brainwashing here just like the other crap is going on a lot of brainwashing a lot of brainwashing it's it's big if you don't understand how big it is it's huge understand that which is why i keep telling people cut the fat which means you have to cut maybe like 85% I mean, you got to kick almost everyone out and got to redo do the thing whole, whole thing again. That's how it is. There's too many of these guys talking like this. This self-loathing behavior. And on top of that, for some weird reason, he shit on Colombian guys. This guy has said some serious stuff about Hispanic guy, which is weird to me because you're in Toronto, right? Now, I'm not saying no Hispanic guy is there because there is. But what's weird to me is that I know some in Montreal, we, we get, we understand there's like Latinos in Canada, but let's see for real, there's not a lot of Latin Americans living in Canada. There's very few. Outside maybe Montreal and Toronto, there's not many Latin Americans living in Canada. But for some weird reason, this guy has like a grudge against guys from Latin America. For some, I heard some really weird stuff from this guy talking about Latin guys and how they are and blah, blah, blah. And how I'm better than them for some weird reason. These guys have an issue with that, I, I, which is weird to me because it's like, like, where's all this hate coming from? Like, like you know, it's it's just the most weirdest crap. It is kind of sad, folks. It is it is kind of sad to say this, but it's a reality. Listen, let me explain something to you. This guy here does not like himself. Cause I'm, I'm, not, I'm not playing. I'll, I'll, I'll break it down. Look, I mean, piercing, right, right. Um, especially like you're an ethnic minority. I'm a mm-hmm. quote unquote ethnic. I hate the term ethnic minority because <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's like like Asian, like South Asian, and like you know East Asian. Yeah, it, that's like half the world population. But it's one <laughs> ethnic minority for everyone. Right, right. right. It's just super funny. But um, <laughs> you're, you know, I feel so bad for my white friends because they're the real ethnic minorities. But um, they're they're being suppressed, right? Uh, right by right. the media and stuff like that. But anyway, the whole point is you're an ethnic minority, so you know I could walk up to a girl without piercing and without jewelry, and without accessories, just you know dress in a fucking t-shirt and jeans, right? And yeah. what's the girl gonna? She's gonna automatically stereotype you because most fucking Indian dudes are cringe. Most Indian right, dudes right. are super fucking beta, right? Most Asian dudes, if you think about the stereotype of an Asian dude, what do you think? Yeah. You think they're very docile and very like shy and very like kawaii <laughs> you, know what I mean? <laughs> dudes, you think bob's and vagine you think um you know like fucking like hello i am from india you know what i mean and so <laughs> yeah. the whole point is like you want to differentiate yourself from that stereotype you want to break yeah, the stereotype yeah. and the best way to do that the whole point is like you want to differentiate yourself from that stereotype you want to break yeah, the stereotype yeah. and the best way to do that is getting your nose pierced vagine you think um you know like fucking like hello i am from india vagine you think um you know, like fucking, like, hello, I am from India. All right. Okay. <clears throat> this is this is something that these guys. I don't care what they have to say about these coaches because there's a lot of red. There's a lot of these dudes in these red pill spaces. These little manager spaces. I'm gonna tell this to this Malaysian guy about this. <sighs> Listen. Um. These guys are embarrassed because they feel like their country are not that cool. Which is weird to me because every country in the world has their uniqueness. If you're a foreigner, you can sell your country. In fact, what better way than you take a girl, right, from whatever country, that is the U.S., Canada, take a girl, hey, Come to my country. Come to this place. Come here. You can do that. They don't do that. A lot of these guys don't do that. This is why, like, for example, with, like, Hispanic guys, because it's weird to me because, you know, I, you know, anyone that's Hispanic, right, what's the first thing we do? We try to tell them about our culture, what we do and everything. Because I thought that's how it is for the people, Right? Right? I'm assuming that's how it was for the people, but apparently they're not. They, he's embarrassed. Oh no, I'm from India. I'm from India. Oh, like he's like around the court. Oh no, oh no, no, my uncle Shh, gotta hide. 
They're they're look at them. They're creepy. They're nerdy. And blah blah blah. And all this other stuff. It's it's listen. Here's the problem with guys like this. And the reason why I'm saying this, because I'm grilling this guy and the other guy as well, is because I gotta get the video up there because this is some weird shit about Hispanic guys, which I find very odd. Why are you talking about Hispanic guy? It's weird. It's like I'm still thinking, like, what the hell you did to you guys? Like, I understand if someone robbed you and beat you up, you had a bad by bully by the okay. If that was the case, okay, I accept that. That's my bad. But I highly doubt that because the way you kids live, you don't live in you don't live near by a lot of these Hispanic areas. So I highly doubt that's the case. But where's all this anger coming from? What's going on here? I didn't, you know, and, and let's say you got you met some ghetto Hispanic kids that you know act a fool. Okay, even still, but you still go to these countries and act like you're better than the guys down there. And you say you got no competition. And then you proceed to shit on your own people. And I'll guarantee you, I've all this this guy, um, this uh ju this juju bee over here, this June bug guy, um, doesn't understand this, but I bet you a million dollars out of all the chicks that he's been banging, I'll bet you not one of them is an Indian or Desi chick. Not one of them. I'll bet you a million dollars. He's not banging not one of these chicks. He's 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 one of these guys. Listen, listen. I know, I know these characters. I see him come talking to my face. I met these guys in, in person. I know how they talk. And when they come talking to me, I can tell them, oh, where, where are you from? Oh, you don't know, listen, listen. I listen. In college, I had a lot, I had some Indian friends. They introduced me about their culture. They actually, I, my shit. Growing up, my friend was Punjabi chic. So I know quite a bit about it. And to really be honest, oh, I come out of this creep. Well, let's be for real. Let's be for real. Like the guys are shy, whatever. Listen, let's be for real. You come to the country, you don't know, you're going to be shy. Hello? You come from one culture. Come to this other culture, you're going to be shy. That's like me going to Sri Lanka or me going to Vietnam or me going to Poland or me going to Angola or me going to places like the UK or something like that. I'm going to be shy. I'm not familiar with those surroundings. So you're going to be a shy person. Very, very simple. Very simple. But the problem, um, the problem is, is that a lot of these guys come with this mentality. For some weird reason, they've been brainwashed. It's what you know, Loki Doke here, which is, and it's a lot of these guys. It's just one of many guys. I'm telling us right now, this is why I've been saying for quite a while cut the fat, cut the bullshit, get rid of them. And yes, it's got to be the vast majority of them. And unfortunately, it's the truth. You got to get rid of them. You have, listen, you have to start doing that. You have to start cutting the fat. This is why I keep trying to tell people all the time. The reason why I keep saying this is because you guys, so many guys talking like this, because the fact is these guys are defeated because guess what? This is the biggest problem. They live in these countries that's not majority that look like them. I get that. You go to school, you watch TV, and, and you want to fit in, and you're trying to, oh, I don't fit the standard of beauty. No shit, Sherlock. You're not from the country. What do you expect? Okay? You go on TV. You're showing hot women, and all the hot girls show you are women that look nothing like you. So this is what they do. Same thing for girls. They don't show you nothing like you, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Right now, in 2022, this is not an excuse no more. This is not, I'm sorry. This is just not an excuse. This, everyone on social media, everyone has access to t uh, channels around the world. Um, there's movies around the world. You can plug it in and look around and see all the hot chicks you can find around the world. You guys chose not to. You've been stuck in your ways. You've been brainwashed. And you want to sit there and project this issue on, oh, my God, look at them. Look, look, look. You don't want to be the stereotype. What what's, what stereotype? What are you talking about? What stereotype? It's just you not liking yourself. So instead, you want to play an ad. You could be the, you could be the, of the, the, this other brown, whatever, uh, guy to impress the chicks, which basically is where, 
which is weird to see when he started saying that we all know what Congress trying to press white women, white women, black women, anything that's not his background. Because God forbid a girl from his background shows up, he gets flashbacks like the Vietnam War. Oh my God, she reminds me of the, my, 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 my mother. I know these guys. I see that while I was in while I was in college. I see these type of guys. I know, I know. And this is a prop. This is why I try to tell people the level of you who you who hello, which is which is a sad thing, but it's it's a common thing. Now you're gonna see this across the board. You can see this around here. It's why I try to tell people all the time. It is what it is. But see, that's okay because that's not my business. But here's my problem with this guy. Forget about all that stuff for now. My problem is, what the fuck are you talking about, Colombia? Oh, I went to Colombia, and uh, you know, uh, I'm rich in all these guys. Oh, I, I get some mad game. And you know, these Colombian guys, they don't got no game. They, that's what he's basically saying. They got no game. They're not this. They're not that. I'm like, we're... we're where the shit that this came from? Why are you talking down to Colombian guys? Where did this crap came from? I mean, I mean, where did this came from? Well, why acting like that? What are they done to you? I highly doubt you even met Colombian guys. Cause it seems to me, and, and you know, all this weird stuff. I got a nose job. I got a nose job. I uh, got. I know another thing is questionable. No stripper friend. Got to question that. I got a question, you bro. And again, you got a little pearl, pearl, uh, pearl necklace, which is weird. Very, very weird. And my problem is not in all that because at the end of the day, that's your culture, your community. You don't like them, that's fine by me. But why do you need to go down to another country in Colombia and shit on the guys? What the hell's wrong with you? I'm telling you. These guys are so lucky they speak only English or they speak broken Spanish because it's mostly because if this guy Glenn, was talking about this in Colombia and in front of their faces, he'll get slapped and beaten up and probably even get killed. I know for a fact he was not talking like this. I know for a fact, and I and trust me, if you ever been to Colombia, you know what I'm talking about. I know for a fact that the girls that you've been talking to are probably prostitutes and whores. Sorry, it's the way it is. And the only way they probably were talking to you was De Niro, De Niro, De Niro, De Niro, De Niro, De Niro, De Niro. That's what happened. So miss me with that. I don't want to hear this crap. And don't sit there and tell me, oh, uh, 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 you know, it's uh, uh, there's no competition in Colombia. And it's like the same thing with the other guy from the last stream, Flip. No competition in Colombia. I'm like, like it's kind of like, you know, it's weird that you're, you're saying this because – you do real listen. I'm gonna be honest with you. You're very lucky. I said before, men from Latin America are very nice guys. They actually are very generally nice people. You're so lucky because let me say right now, because like I said, you'd be surprised what your women say to us about about us. Okay, privately. Okay, you'd be surprised what black girls, what white girls. And Arab women say to me and my friends personally, okay, you should be surprised what my friend who's Brazilian, when he went to school, what any girls told him personally. Now, the best thing about it is that, you know what we do? We decline it. And some of them, and you know what? This is a funny thing, because you'd be surprised half of these chicks have boyfriends. And you know what a lot of my friends did? They literally, you know what we did? We actually were a man of to say, um, no, thank you. I know you guys will do the complete opposite. You bang, uh, uh, you know, you you bang, you guys love sharing bodies and banging boyfriend, uh, you know, having their guy, they got a boyfriend at home and you still bang the shit. I know you guys. You're so lucky. Because let me tell you right now, you don't want listen, you're so lucky we don't travel out. Because trust me, if we went to your we went to your spots and you talk about the guys over there, it'd be game over. You're so lucky. You're so lucky that these white boys in this country don't do it because if we actually if Argentinian men were to go to your places, it, no, they're gonna lose. And if and trust me that. So you're really lucky that these girls only want to bang 
Drake, and the baby because that's brainwashing right there. Because those guys are hideous, okay? Just like you. And you should be, in fact, the fact that someone opened their legs for you, bro, you should be thankful. You should treat these women like roses. If some girl, oh my God, thank you for actually liking me. In fact, I'm five feet four. I weigh 110 pounds. Like, thank God you actually did. You should actually wipe up the girl that actually took you seriously. But you didn't do that. Instead, you'd be disrespectful. You disrespect, you, you don't like women, period. And that's the reason what's happening. You have an attitude problem. You're insecure because you're short and super skinny. That's what it is. And do not come over here and tell me that, you, that there's no competition in Colombia. I know why you're acting like that because you saw what you saw. Because like I said, there's a bunch of hot girls walking around Colombia than where the guys look. And you're so lucky because I'll guarantee you if there was a million guys from South America or Latin America were flocking into parts of Asian countries, you will see another thing coming. But see, we're not going to do because we're not assholes. I have no idea what these guys are doing. And trust me, from my personal experience, you'd be stunned what girls have told me. You'd be stunned what they'll say to me. Not just to me, but all my friends. I have friends who are Colombian, Brazilian, Argentinian, Dominican. You'd be surprised what they say to us. And you'd be surprised the response we have. Did you know that most of us actually declined the offers? Did you know that? I know I know you got to accept in a heartbeat and brag about it the next day. I know you guys. I know how thirsty you are. It's 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 unbelievable. I know this guy's probably paying prostitutes or seducing chicks. There's gotta be like one rape case from this guy. There's gotta be, I gotta be one rape case. Gotta be. Because the way these guys are talking, they sound like a bunch of perverts. Like seriously. Like, I don't believe you are over 100 chicks, another 100 chicks. I, I just don't believe this guy saying this unless you're paying prostitutes. It's it's, it's absolutely crazy. The, these guys are, are delusional and they got to stop. They got to stop. Now, if you got you got self esteem issues, hey, it's none of my business. But what is up with you and Colombians? And the other guy, too, same thing. What's up with you? I mean, they, they're saying some weird shit going on. Some weird shit. What the hell's wrong with you people? Uh, you know, God, God forbid, man. God forbid. God forbid. I mean, you know, you can't, you know, by the way, if you're a girl, you can't announce your preferences anymore because you get, you get shit on. What, what, what? Who do you like? That's why I tell them all the time. Just say you just did. You just, I tell, I tell girls all the time. Pick, pick other, other men. Don't pick us. We're ugly. Stay away from us. Seriously, I, I don't. I don't. I, listen, man. You gotta respect people. I understand that, but man, when you talk like that, I got no respect for you, man. You don't like yourself. Don't respect you. Sorry, sorry, buddy. Sorry. What will, what will Keith say? Your car been revoked? Nah, you you don't, your car is not revoked, man. Your car has been destroyed. That's what happened. Bam, like out. It's it's uh it's absolutely insane. I, I mean I don't know what's up with these guys. Like you, oh my god, I can't believe it, man. Four in the morning. Doing, she respect us, so she gonna respect him if he fire her ass. Though fire that bitch, fuck that bitch. Or travel, and the issues associated with dating in modern times, and also modern trends. Now listen, brother Hama has been killing the internet on TikTok, on YouTube. You know he's a clarion caller like me and so many other men that are dealing with not only. A male hyenas, but also uh, a female hyenas, you know, simp service, you know, guys that go across the internet causing chaos because they're trying to destroy the energy of men coming together to do what's best for them. Brother Holman, tell the audience who you are, man. Uh, why do you think it's so important for men to do what's best for them? Because I've always said that men do what they want to do 
and boys do what they can. What do you think about that pronouncement uh, that I just said a minute ago, brother? Well, I think that that's absolutely true. Men do what they want and boys okay. do what they can. As a man, uh, you're being, you're, well, not as a man, as a boy, you're staying here and conforming to the, the bullshit that we have a dating option, you know, selection that we have here in the United States. And right allowing the simps and the females to persuade you and shame you <laughs> into feeling like you are wrong for following men like us that are telling no you doubt, no doubt. that there's greener grass on the other side. No doubt, no doubt. You know, uh, one of the things as a licensed therapist that I see when people do that is classic projection. It's also based on them not understanding whatever they're struggling with in the pain. And so what they do, Brother Holloman, they take their pain and project it onto others because they lack the courage and the temerity to go out and do what those men are doing. And so what they are doing, they're trying to use reverse psychology to confuse you, to get you back in that negative trap because, you know, they're, they're slaves of their mind. They're saboteurs of their mind, and they want you to be a saboteur, too. You know, I've always told people, Brother Holloman, that needs drive behaviors. And it appears that you are not getting your needs met in America. Tell the audience the top five needs that you struggle with as it relates to getting your needs met in America, and since you began to travel abroad, what has it done for your psyche? So I would say that um... look at his eyes, summon the power. Brother, tell me how you feel about these American females. Why did I treat you so good? Give me five reasons, boy. Tell me five reasons. Why you left the plantation? God forbid the power of the American female Thou strike you going nowhere before. Strike your praise the Lord. Oh, you want to deal with these American females? Just look at them. Look at them. Look at these American women just sharing their bodies, being a whore all their lives, being a hoe, being a thug, being want to choose the bad boys. Then Aaron chose me when I was in college. When I went to the clubs, I got rejections. And that's what they get. Just look at them. That's what you get. You die alone, cats. You understand me, boy? You understand me? You understand me? It's like, you know, like, you you know, like, they, they literally want to punish women. They want to punish women so hard. They're, they're, they're so eager to get that whip. They want to be that slave art. Yes, girl. You understand me, girl? I told you, girl. What I've been telling you. For all these years, girl, you American females run your mouth using your body. That's what you get. You understand me, woman? You understand me? Always going to the club, showing your body left and right, showing your shaking the ass and taste. You're a hoe. Which is weird because you're going to Brazil, right? Which is known for showing ass and titties. <laughs> but, I mean, it's weird, isn't it? needs was that I was not getting met with women that would show up. In other words, women that were flaking, mm -hmm. uh, lack of conversation with substance. It's uh, another strong one. That's, I've never been asked that question that way. Oh, take your time, uh, take your time, take your time. You're good though, go ahead. Yeah, you have the flakes, you have the lack of conversation, the extreme lack of femininity, they're becoming very masculinized now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of women here with deep insecurities and they, they just, they, you can't really, because I'm not trying to get married just yet, mm -hmm. but you can't even have a good time. And that's not even just about sex. That's just about being cool or relaxed, finding a woman that's relaxed and cool that you can actually just converse with. And I, I found that in Brazil. Uh, when I went to Brazil, I now have a peace of mind, right? Yes, because yes, yes. before I went to Brazil, I thought I was crazy. I thought right. something was wrong. I now have a peace of mind. 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 I now have a peace of mind, right? Yes, because yes, yes. before I went to Brazil, I thought I was crazy. I thought right. something was wrong with me. I had yes, already done yes. a lot of self improvement. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. But right, right. I, I was like, you know, okay, if I've already improved my physical and I feel fine, maybe I'm crazy or something. Maybe, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, you ain't crazy. I, I've had guys that have done consultation with me, brother. They said the same thing that you said. They thought something was wrong with them, but it's not wrong with you or them. 
it's the culture that we live in. We live in a very entitlement culture, a culture where sadly, many of our men have not been taught to defer, I mean, the man power relationships. And sadly, many of our women have not been taught to understand that their husbands are the power source and the one that's gonna love and protect them. But 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 they want what I call a brother Holloman taxation without representation and the mental breaking of the American man. Let's talk about the taxation that you went through mentally, how I almost destroyed you before you uh, went to the Sunday shore, Sandy shore of Brazil. So I would say in 2020, I actually just started, I started in maybe December, November, 2020, I started to develop hatred mm. uh, towards women because it got that difficult to uh, just converse and just uh, other men that I thought were below my attraction attractive level uh as sexual marketplace value whatever you want to call it men that i thought i would have in the east at least an equivalent or a better chance than were getting the results i wanted right. uh, and i noticed from cutting here but those were pookie and ray rays right <laughs> and right, they right, further right. confirmed as the years went by I further confirmed and uh the taxation was man, like it, it was trying to kind of kill in my mind, like, okay, I'm going to have to jump on something and hold on to something that, that's going to at least be like 50% decent. And that, that's not the way to live. When you can go to Brazil and get it 90%, you can get 90% of what you want in Brazil. Right. So right, right, right. You, you're going to have to, the, the taxing on your mind is knowing that you would have to sell uh, a sexual marketplace value, whatever you want to call it. Talk about the taxation that you went through mentally, how I almost destroyed you before you I went to the Sunday show or Sandy show of Brazil. So I would say in 2020, I actually just started, I started in maybe December, November, 2020, I started to develop hatred mm. uh, towards women because it got that difficult to mm. uh, just converse and just uh, other men that I thought, November, 2020, I started to develop hatred mm. uh, towards women because it got that, November, 2020, I started to develop hatred mm. uh, towards women because it got November 2020, I started to develop hatred mm. uh, towards women because it got that difficult. November 2020, I started to develop hatred mm. uh, towards women because it got that difficult. I hate you, American women. Look at you. I hate you. I'm tired of all the lies you do, woman. You sit in there, you want to go in no night love, and you rejecting me. Now, you understand me, boy. You understand me, girl? You understand me, girl? Now I'm tired of you lying, girl. You you significant ways. And look at you, American females. You just hold yourself. You he didn't say black Americans. He didn't say white Americans. He said American women, American females here in the United States. All of y'all in a group in a neat package from the trash can. Fuck who are you? I'm going to Brazil. Girls, your attempt. Oh, you got that. Not I. I already got it. one guy sat there and said, "There's the problem is Cam. There's not enough attractive girls here in the United States. There's too many ugly women here in the United States. Most American girls are ugly. Where in Brazil, it's the opposite. The majority of girls are pretty, and there's a bunch of beautiful women here in America in Brazil. But in America, the struggle is very few that are very attractive, and they got high demands." And I don't like that. And the vast majority of the girls here are ugly. So this is why I go to Brazil. There's a racial, social construct, whatever crap they call it, uh, sex, sex ratio crap, whatever. And that, um, you know, whereas girls here in America are ugly, not attractive, whereas Brazil, every girl's a 10, you know. And they're going to tell you, like, oh, well, you know, in Brazil, the women here, they, 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 you know, you know how it is, man, Kim. Uh, uh, I want to let you know, Kim, that that in America, in America, you know, in Brazil, you don't see that. In Brazil, what you will see is, what you will see, uh, Kim, is that in Brazil, you will see quality women. You will see tans, and it, they're submissive, Kim. That's the difference, Kim. That's the difference, Kim. There's 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 actually women that are wife material, and uh I'm like, oh god. Here we go again with this wife material again. Like um like it, you know, every time when I hear these guys talk about this, 
I start to laugh. Like, are you serious, brother? Brother, are you serious? When they talk about Brazil, man, I know what they mean by Brazil. When they talk about Brazil and them competing, we know what they're trying to say, folks. We know when they mean by, oh, Brazil, these women are family-oriented. Why can't they be... Why can't Brazilian women be are so beautiful? Why can't American girl be just like Brazilian chicks? There, I see tens everywhere. Oh, oh yes. Oh, I, I just oh, you don't understand what we have to deal with. I see so many beautiful women, and they're and they're wife material too, by the way. But unlike these women in America, just holding themselves. Just being sluts and just showing nudity. See, I don't want that in America. I don't want that. I want to go to Brazil and find a, a quality woman, right? They, that's what they're trying to tell me otherwise. Because when they fear a competition, women are going to compete for me. That's what <laughs> That's what they mean by competing for, for them. That's what they're thinking. They're my own oh, women are going to fight for me. I feel this out. Look at me. Oh, look at me, man. Why can't I not get that in Brazil? Women were just being submissive and just they're being family oriented. They're beautiful and gracious and wonderful, white material, man. But you come to America, look how these girls dress. Look how they hold themselves. Look at you, girl. You've been holding yourself for quite a while, slutting yourselves up. Look at you. In Brazil, they don't do that. They don't do that crap in Brazil. These women are, you know, educated and white material. These guys, it, it, it's weird because, you know, we see images about Brazilian women. Literally, every girl they show you is like literally half naked. When they, when these guys talk about Brazilian women, they're always half naked. But they'll say, that's the culture. But if a girl walks around half naked in America, she's a whore. It, it, it's just that... This is why I've been trying to tell us to a lot of females out there, when they give you that question, who would you rather have? A rich guy who's ugly or a hot guy who's poor? And I tell this every single time to a girl. I tell them the advice, take the hot guy who's poor. I'm going to tell you why, because it's a trick question. Because if you start saying that, that I'm going to choose the attractive guy, even though he's poor, he's still good looking. I want to be with that guy. You know what? And what's the reaction? They're going to get angry. They're going to be aggressive. Huh? Huh? Why put the only guy uh, uh, with lots of money? I tell people, no, 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 Kim. I want to No, no, no. Trust me on this. When it comes to looks and money, when it comes to these guys' faces, literally faces, tell them, always tell them, looks overweigh money. Just tell them that. Don't freak out. Because you know why? And it's what it's another trick I'll tell them. Tell them how come you pick the rich guy, the, the poor, the poor guy who's good looking. You can tell them, you can tell them this. Just tell them this. Tell them with the rich, with the with the good looking guy, I can't go looking kids. And those good looking kids can um those good looking kids are gonna probably I'll can now get I can get more from a good looking kids than these ugly ass kids. Because it's a trick question. I always even though money's important, I always tell this to girls, don't want to talk about money, but I tell them all the time. If they ever ask you that question, always answer poor and attractive. Watch the reaction. They're going to get angry. They're going to be aggressive. They're going to be very vowel. And you're going to ask yourself, well, wait a minute. Why are you be upset about me saying that? The same thing goes with because it's a trick question. Because it's not about money. It's about the fact. Take away the money part. It's about the fact that deep down side, they cannot compete with attractive guys. And this is what I'm talking about. They're trying to avoid competition from other men. That's why. This is why I try to tell people money 
is just is just the Mills answer to plastic surgery. It's the plastic surgery for men. This is why I try to tell people all the time about this because very, very important because it's a trick question. This is why I try to tell people all the time. Um, in regards to anything else, because a lot of these guys, and what I mean, and Dickie Princess, the hot American poor guy are cocky though. Princess, be honest with you. We're not talking about American guys here. Why I'm trying to tell people is this. These females here in the United States, if they're going to start talking to you about, about these women are more attractive, that you need to put other groups of men and say, no, these guys are attractive. You're ugly. Watch the reaction. Because let's be for real, American guys are ugly. They know they're ugly. Money or rich. Money or rich. Poor or poverty. Doesn't matter. They're ugly. They know this. America, I know American guys. I know how insecure they are. They're not that good looking. This is why I try to tell a lot of people it's a trick question. In fact, if I was a girl, someone asked me that question, I said, I'll take neither. I know what these guys are trying to do. I know what these guys are trying to do. I'm trying, I'm, just give me advice. That's all I'm going to tell you. Just give me advice. You don't have to take it or leave it. Let's be honest. I'm just speaking from a guy's point of view. I know how these guys are thinking in their mind because when they think about a word, I know exactly what they're doing because they're tricking people. Because it's like, it's like you're going to Brazil. We know why you're going to Brazil. Oh, the femininity, the energy. I'm like, it's weird because it's like, um, it's weird because you do know that in Brazil. The, the sexuality over there is more expressive, more open is here in the United States. The problem is, is that they don't understand the reason why these girls are, are the way they are is because of you, the American male. You did, you allowed this to happen. So don't complain that your women are this and that. That's your fault. Oh, they don't want to dress up for us. You don't dress up for them. Oh, they're not nice to us. You're not nice to them. And don't come to me because they're not my women. Sorry. I don't have to deal with this crap. They're not my women. Oh, you don't understand. You know what? You're right. I don't understand. In fact, I don't want to understand. You're not our women. And you're not our men. I don't give a crap. That's something that you got to fix, not me. I got other things to worry about. Sorry. That's how it works, folks. Sorry. I know that sucks. I know that's life, but sorry. You're going to hear it. You're going to hear it. To uh, just converse and just uh, other men that I thought were below my attraction, attractive level, uh, as sexual marketplace value, whatever you want to call it, men that I thought I would have in the East, at least an equivalent or a better chance than were getting the results I wanted. Right. Uh, and I noticed from cutting here, but those were – Pookie and Ray Ray's, right? And <laughs> right, right, they right. further confirmed, as the years went by, I further confirmed, and uh, the taxation was, man, like, it, it was trying to kind of kill in my mind, like, okay, I'm going to have to jump on something and hold on to something that, that's going to at least be, like, 50% decent, and that, that's not the way to live. When you can go to Brazil and get it 90%, you can get 90% of what you want in Brazil, right. so right, right, right. You, you're going to have to, the, the taxing on your mind is knowing that you would have to sell it being mm -hmm. here. <laughs> Shout out to my man uh, XL Pro for that five dollar super sticker. Thank you, XL Pro. XL Pro always showing brothers love, man. Shout out to him, guys. And guys, do me a favor, man. Brother Holloman is killing the streets right now. I mean, he, he's he's making a lot of hyenas mad. He's making a lot of sips mad. And, and, yeah. and look, and look, brother Holloman. You know, when men try to come together, the they got they don't That's think so they good. got <laughs> they don't think they got no they don't got, they don't think they got no trust, brother Holloman. They think they got to tolerate abuse. They think they got to tolerate disrespect. They think they got to tolerate some or many women that don't honor them and respect them as men. I heard you say something that I saw, and you're young enough to be my son. Actually, my, you're my oldest I'm child's age. And, you know, I came out of high school in the class of 90. And, and if you go back years, even farther then, men demanded stuff from women in relationships because men are the gatekeepers to relationships. 
and women are the gatekeepers to sex. But watch this. Many coming to relationships already haven't given their value away. Their value is their ability to procure and to protect their essence, which is their uh, um, their, their, their sexual organs. But you know, many times they come to the table with uh, a lot of fun and they still demand that you make more money. And this taxation without representation for what it's, what it's doing, it, it places them as, as the leader uh, in the relationship and it places you under them. And what it does, it, me it, it makes you feel like you're fighting over and over and over again and you're not getting anything in return. There's a concept that came up with Brother Holloman called RATS. And the basis stands for this, resources, attention, time, uh, security, and settlement for the sake of sex. But what are these men getting if, you know, they're, they're not virgins, they don't have no bodies, but you want a man to be a high-value man and make seventy, eight, hundred thousand dollars a year. In fair exchange, there is no robbery. What say you? you you're not getting nothing in return. There's, there's nothing in return you get in the United States. It's... This, yeah, that's, I'm just, I've kind of gave up on them completely. You're not getting nothing in return for that. Right, right. Tell me also about some of your struggles in dating, you know, because some of the PUAs will say, oh, he just ain't got no game, you know, he's oh. a lame. And, uh, you know, some, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something been attacking you, young man. And, uh, you know, they don't understand psychoanalytic theory, you know, as I always use him as one of my models, Dr. William Glasser. Uh, he talked about, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the five stages of the five steps um, to actualization, and he said that it's power, fun, freedom, belonging, and survival. Those I'm a doctor, so I'm trying to clinically understand, man. So tell me, brother, why is the fact that he's American field treating you so bad? We got, I said, well, well, you know what it is, man. It because when I went to Brazil, man, I see tens everywhere. I see those Afro Brazilian chicks, man. They're so thick and so firm. They got some ass and chicks. When I come to America, man, these girls are girl, these girls are ugly as fuck, man. I can't deal with them no more. I gotta get my passport. I gotta go overseas, man. F that. These girls are just horrendously ugly. I'm tired of American females, man. Where I don't care what, what Becky, whatever. They're done. I don't want to do none of these women. These women are hideous and ugly. No, why? Brazil spoiled me. Why I see those girls? I right. mm -mm -mm -mm. white girl with asses, black girl with asses. You know, oh my God, fit and firm. I see so many mixed girls over there. I've been, I'm in heaven right now. Oh my God, while you come to America, ew, everyone's ugly and disgusting. Ew. Ew, I can't deal with that no more. I cannot deal with no more. I don't know what to do. That's why. Why is it all these guys are, oh, you, it's always Latin America. What a surprise, brother. What a surprise. What a surprise when it comes to going overseas. Why is it always, all these countries are always Latin American countries? Why is that? Why is that? Oh, Latinas, oh, Latinas. What do you do, y'all? Pastor motherfucking two. Pastor two out here, man. They're painting. They're respectful. Hopefully y'all can hear me. We out here in beautiful Puerto Rico, bro. These Puerto Rico, bro. Puerto Rico, bro. Puerto Rico, bro. These bitches are beautiful. They're feminine. They're respectful. Hopefully y'all can hear me. It's live out here. It's lit out here. And we having a blast. We enjoying this shit, bro. Beautiful women. Beautiful women everywhere, fellas. Beautiful women everywhere. 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 Beautiful women everywhere, bro. Beautiful women. See this? Oh, uh, oh. Uh. I'm in Puerto Rico, man. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Women, beautiful women everywhere. Beautiful women everywhere. Oh, uh, this is a dream. Wake up, Steven. Wake up. Beautiful women. I'm in Puerto Rico right now. Beautiful women everywhere. Beautiful women everywhere. Oh, oh, oh. Beautiful city. Fine athletes everywhere. Oh, oh. Beautiful women everywhere. Beautiful women. I'm in Puerto Rico right now, brothers. Oh, oh. So many hot, fire, firm, sexy eyes. Wake up from this dream. I'm in a dream world. I see big team with everybody. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, hot, sexy eyes, the Tina's. Oh, you, you squeeze their, you squeeze their teeth twice. Make a wish it comes true. Oh. This is what we want y'all to experience. 
We want y'all to experience beautiful women all over. Don't 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 seclude yourself to America, fellas. Don't seclude yourself to America, fellas. Don't 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 seclude yourself to America, fellas. Women all over. Don't 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 seclude your experience beautiful women all over. Experience. We want y'all to experience beautiful women all over. Don't 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 seclude yourself to America, fellas. You seclude yourself to America. Don't seclude yourself to America, fellas. Don't seclude yourself to America, fellas. You're better than you're better than just American women. American women don't treat you right. They don't respect you. Out here, we treat you like kings, like bosses, like royalty. They love pure black men. Okay. That, we ain't got to be no celebrities. We ain't got to be none of that. We ain't got to be a celebrity or nothing, bro. Pure, pure black men, bro. Pure black men. That's all we got to be. Yeah, we treat it like, bro, we treat it like kings. I'm talking about bad bitches everywhere. We walk block to block. They holding us. They, they reaching for our hands. You know Pastor too, bro. They reaching for our hands. They smiling at us. They giving us good energy. <laughs> they smiled at me. The reaching my hand about was God. Oh, the reaching my. Are you sure you're not being pocketed, buddy? The reaching out my hands want to touch me. I'm strong. And my melons got scared, and she tried to touch my crotch. Oh yes, and I'm like, hey, 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 hey. Where my wallet? Wait, what's going on? What's going on, man? Where, where, where my wallet, man? Where, 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 where? I swear I got a 50 over here. What's going on? Yeah. You know, like, it's weird because the guy that, oh, I like how he starts talking. It's the dark skin. The dark skin. Oh, it's my, my melanin dark skin. We're desire, man. We're tens. We're, we're, we're like gods. And, and, and they're, they're reaching us like we're like, we're like the Messiah walking. We walk with pride, brother. We're walking with pride. Look at me, man. Look at me. I'm a high value man. Just look at me, man. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. All right, we got swag. Just look at us. How are you guys got so much swag, right? And how much you are mailing it. But for some weird reason, it's always the same thing. Brothers, I want you to experience something. You have to do with these American chicks no more. They're so abusive and so controlling. You don't want to come home to a naggy, naggy bitch that don't appreciate you. Don't you understand that? Don't you understand that you don't want to deal with bossy bitches no more? Look at me. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I want to experience what I'm experiencing. Beautiful, fine ass, sexy, firm mad Latinas. Oh, why won't you do that too, y'all? We're the same. We're the same. We are the same. Come on, y'all. We got to jog together. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Come together. That's how these guys talk. These guys are woo hoo hoo delusional. Got PKD right here. You don't know what to do. He like a kid in a candy store. That motherfucker, that motherfucker bouncing like Brock Lesnar. He wanna <laughs> clap them. He wanna clap some of them. Listen, these bitches are bad, bro. Clap some of them cheeks. You wanna clap some of them cheeks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These bitches, bro, are excellent. They got they treat us with the right energy, got the right respect, and that's what we want. Some of us that can come talk to us on their own. Period. Show us respect on their own. That's what we want. See, we, this is what we be telling y'all, bro. We be telling you, we don't, we don't want no masculine, uh, over aggressive, hostile women of America. Uh, over aggressive, hostile women. Of America. Masculine, uh, over aggressive. We don't we don't want no masculine uh over aggressive hostile women of America. We don't we don't want no masculine uh over aggressive hostile women of America. We don't like that bro. We like beautiful bodies, bro. Beautiful body. We don't like that bro. We like beautiful bodies, bro. 
He don't like that, bro. He like beautiful Boricua, bro. He don't like that, bro. He like beautiful Boricua, bro. Don't you understand, girl? I'm tired of this naggy bitches here in America and their standards, man. We're tired of this. We want that beautiful Boricua. Oh, firm and just beautiful and just tense with that long curl, with that big fur. Not going to lie, they got big asses over there. But big, firm asses over there. Never mind the fact that you destroy all the New Yorkian chicks. You really destroyed them, buddy. Now they're all complaining about, wow, these girls are aggressive. They're living in America. What do they get? I don't deal with these Latinas in America no more. They all become American. No, 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 Look at them. Look at them. You want to have an attitude towards me? I didn't do nothing to you, woman. And why are you yelling at me? You know, like, how, how are these guys, these, these alpha males, right? But yet, for some odd reason, you cannot control your own women. How is this possible? I, I'm strong. I'm built. I'm a six-pack am. I'm an alpha male. And then turn around and say, I can't do my women no more. Women in this country, they just nag. When I come home, they start yelling at me for no reason. I didn't do nothing wrong. Look at me. I'm in the I'm in the bar right now, hiding from my wife. And you'd be surprised how many guys at the bar hide from their wives. What are you doing over here? I'm hiding from my wife. <laughs> no, 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 no. Trust me. If I got a nagging wife, I'm not hiding. That is my house. I pay the bills as well. Bam. Okay. And we're discussing this evenly. Because I know some guys sleep in their cars kind from their wives. <laughs> That's the truth. These guys are scared of their own women. They're really scared of <laughs> my, my women. Scared you let me. <laughs> like and you see all the other group of men hold, hugging each other. <laughs> You're naggy. You're really naggy me. That's actually what the Indian guy said. Actually, that Indian guy from Canada started saying about how like I can't deal with Indian women because they're all they're always nagging. And that's what you know. I'm, I'm, I don't want to deal with nagging women. But what's up with you guys? You do understand wherever you go in the world. Listen, the reason why I laugh at this shit. Is because if you cannot deal with nagging with your own women here in the States, other countries in Asia, Europe, Africa, women from Latin America are probably the most nagging women on planet Earth. If you cannot deal with your women's bitchy behavior, you're not going to deal with women down there. Because they're going to cuss you out. They're going to boss the fuck out of you. Brazilian chicks are not these submissive women. Puerto Rican girls are not submissive. Like, I don't know where the, where the hell you got that from. Definitely not Dominican chicks. I don't know what you're talking about. You guys are delusional. You're scared of your own women. I just want respect, Kim. Beautiful body. That's what we like. We got respect. I know how to treat us right. We're enjoying it out here, man. We're enjoying ourselves. You know what I mean? We really are enjoying it. Real talk. So, y'all don't need to be treated bad out there in America, man. Women treating you like they're more manly than you. Treating you like you ain't shit. You don't need to be mistreated, bro, and abused and used. Don't get treated bad, bro. Get treated like the man you are. Real talk. Yep. <laughs> Real talk, man. I just want to say to you, brothers, you know, you have to do these masking women. They're bossing you around, telling you what to do. You gotta be tired of these these women. These women even hit me. 
domestic violence all the time in the, in America now is running wild because these American women are beating guys. Uh, how how in the hell are you allowing women to beat you up? How is this possible? What are you doing? What the hell's wrong with you people? I'm talking to you, brother. I'm talking to the. Well, I'm talking about brother. I'm not talking about uh, a black man. I'm talking about the American male. What are you doing wrong in these households? What are you doing wrong to the point that you get to hide and run away? Like, and and by the way, the thing about it is this: I know a lot of girls do. I, I think the problem is here in the United States. I do know girls can be bossy here in this country. Um, it's very calm because guess what's happening? The women are outworking the men here in this country. The women are have to do double the work. They're now the wife and the husband. The women are stressed out of their mind. They're angry. They're frustrated. And on top of that, they have to bo- and, and on top of that, they have to boss the fuck out of their husbands. And they and some of these guys are so 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 they just they just so weak that they don't even fight back with their with their with their with their wives. And on top of that, the worst thing about it all is that they brag about masculinity when in reality they became feminine bitches. That's their fault. That's their fault. I don't want to hear it. That is their fault. Women treat me bad. I want to know what to do, man. I don't know what to do. What's going on, man? Don't look at me. Oh, yeah. By the way, also give them bad sex. And you wonder why these girls are pissed off and angry all the time. And they're like stressed out of their mind. Like, And these are things that girls quietly do complain about here in the States. They talk about this. But uh, once again, the mammy behavior comes back. They can't say anything. They'll be ridiculed, get shitted on. And it's like, don't say anything. Get back to your place, girl. And like, they got to sit there. It's just the most weirdest crap ever. And I'm looking at these guys. I'm like, well, that's your fault. Why are these girls so masculine? Because you're not masculine. Why are these girls don't want to be feminine? Because you're not masculine. Why are these girls misbehaving? Because you're not masculine. Why are these girls? You're not masculine. You're not masculine. I hate to break the news to the guys in this country. You're not masculine. And the reason why I know you're not masculine, I don't care what anyone said. This is the reality. It's here two things that decide that you're not masculine. It's either you take this shit from your female, as in like she, you can you, you allow this girl to boss you around and cuss you out without even fighting back. That is a bitch. Or you can play about you and cussing you out. Because the guy, a real guy, will be in that kitchen, stay on his ground and say, no, I'm going to do this. And you start debating back and forth. And in the end comes reconciliation. A truce. Yeah, this is why. That's why these girls, you know, say, I want a guy, you know, who I don't, I, I don't. I swear to God, what's going on in your households, man? What's going on, man? I mean, it's, it's, serious, it's serious times talking like this. I'm not joking. These guys got some severe mommy daddy issues. Ooh, the elements to help a man feel like, uh, you know, he's getting his needs met, but. When you go back down memory lane between power, fun, freedom, belonging, and survival, which ones were you missing um, as it relates to you feeling like you were wholesome as a man and getting the respect that you deserve? I was definitely missing fun. Mm-hmm. Freedom, can you elaborate on freedom a little more? So freedom is simply this, the freedom to do what you want to do without being held back. You know, anytime men begin to travel abroad and say, I'm going to do what's best for me, it appears that their freedom is being more or less limited because we live in a very gynocentric culture where, you know, sadly, uh, you know, they can do what they want to do when they want to do it. But watch this. In the last election, uh, a large percentage of, 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 of our women, sadly, voted for policies that were not beneficial to the black man, the black boy, a black family, black girls and the black community. 
they voted for themselves. So when it comes down mm -hmm. to power, they vote Brother Holloman for power as it relates to them. But when it comes down to servitude, they want you to serve them without them without giving you anything in return. So when you think about uh, freedom, what were you lacking in freedom as it relates to modern women uh, in America? What were you lacking in freedom? What did you not get that you got now? What did I not get that I got now? As far as freedom, I, I wouldn't say that there were any policies because I haven't gotten to a stage uh, like a marriage stage or anything like that. But I, w I wouldn't say not nothing as far as freedom. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. You had to <laughs> go over the other points again. I, I missed some of those <laughs> oh, it's, it's, okay, it's okay. It's all right, yeah. man. When you when you think about freedom, freedom basically just means the right to live your life on your own terms without scrutiny. You know, uh, were you getting freedom and and dating reciprocity? And what I mean by that, were you getting respect? Were you getting the freedom to be respected and get respect in return? That's what I mean by freedom. No, Did you, no I was not right. getting the no, I was not getting the respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. And, 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 and is it safe to say that it did a lot of damage to your psyche as a man? And, and if so, I'm telling the audience how modern dating impacted you mentally. You, you talked about earlier, you had a lot of anger and hate and rage. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so I wouldn't say that I have the rage anymore. It lasted maybe three months from 2020, early 2021. Mm -hmm. But I had got to a point where I had never seen, you know, because I, I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. But I tell you if, you, if you, if you're in that same situation, you need to go change the environment completely outside of the United States. Mm -hmm. That way you can have a peace of mind, because I promise you it's different elsewhere. It's completely different. Right, right, right. If if you had to guesstimate as a young man on the dating scene as a Xenial, and I've had other Xenials tell me the same thing, I'm going to show you some clips in a, in a minute. Right, but right, right. they're doing everything that you would like, but you, it's going to kill your self esteem to, to commit to them. I wouldn't do that. Right, I'd rather, right. Alone, I'd rather have my mental messed up and do that, but. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. These American women, I just, I'm just tired of this man here in the United States. F you, American female, what you get, woman. That what you get with these policies. You know these women, regardless of Republican, conservative, or Democrat, they always vote for themselves. They don't care about know about themselves. It's what they get. I'm like, it is like a women issue, and that's for their issue. Of course they're going to vote for issues that relate to them. Duh. That's everyone. Look at them. Voting for think about themselves. What about me? What about me? Listen. Okay, it's like if I work out with a girl, right, in the gym, I'm trying to build muscle, right, and I'm gonna, you know, out, you know, logic and common sense will say this. Um, you're gonna be stronger than a girl. Why? Because you're a guy, right? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing also you need to understand, too. The same thing goes for um, when it comes to making money, when it comes to competition in regards to, um, you know, um, building, when it comes to all that stuff. You're supposed to compare yourself to other men around the world. They're not doing that here in the United States. They're comparing competition to women. No one does that. And no one cares. Who cares that a girl makes $10,000 more? Who cares about that? Who cares that chick said, oh my God, you're so poor. Oh my, that's not, who cares? That's a girl. Your job as a guy is to go build and protect and provide for the community, the shield that is the flag, and you're not even doing that. And it starts at home. I don't care what anyone has to say. If you're not have the foundation was being family oriented, I, everything else, I don't respect you. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care what anyone, if you're not have a family structure, family oriented. You're not, you know, actually trying to fix, build community. If you're not, if you're not that, 
I'm sorry, but you're trash. You have failed as a man. You're a failure. And you wonder why these women are coming in and like you're not you're not fixing the, the house. Might as well I do it. And oh my gosh, she's masculine. How dare she compete with me? How dare? Well, my my dare is how did you allow that to happen? Okay, he just grabbed the grab the say that no, I'm gonna cut it for today. It's not, it's, see, listen, it's not that difficult, man. It's not that difficult. It's not that difficult because you're about to hear this worse. It's going to get worse, folks. Yeah. Because uh, it's about to get worse. It's about to get worse because one of his cousins is about to speak about this, man. It's about to get worse. It's about to get worse. Drive, drive. Let's get into it. All right, we're going to take you back to a topic that we started talking about before the commercial break when Josh Ernest rudely and deliberately interrupted the outnumbered program <laughs> about how the number of kids being born to unmarried cohabitating couples is at a record high in the United States. Okay, Dr. Manny, couples right. not marrying, shacking up, having babies. Uh, it's every day in, in our practices. You know, I deliver babies for a living and I see this, you know, it's a quarter at least of patients that we see every day in many, many hospitals in the country. Uh, why is it happening? Well, uh, uh, for a lot of times, it's cultural. There are many uh, p people coming to this country where that is a norm, where people meet, they get together, they want to have a baby, and bingo, they come back here, they don't think about the marriage thing. Um, there are some people that don't believe in marriage, and I think that that's probably a problem. You know, the comparison and the study looking at unmarried mothers decreasing, well, that's a trend uh, that, of course, has been going on since teen pregnancy rates have come down. So I know the statistics are going down, mm -hmm. but this new philosophy philosophy sometimes is the way people were brought up, but also is because, in my opinion, the whole concept of marriage, whether it is, uh, you know, heterosexual marriage or homosexual marriage, whatever the case may be, uh, is really something that people don't are not paying attention. The concept of fidelity is something that is being lost. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a story yeah. in The New York Times the other day that in, there are buses in France now uh, promoting this website about you, you know, women. You can have an affair if you're married. Mm -hmm. And we have that here in the U.S., too. And the French government will, will all up in arms because, oh, my God, you know, under the French Constitution, marriage is something very sacred. Of course, they don't follow it that much anymore. But be that as it may, and people see that as a, as a point of expression. It, it's not. It's the whole thing is that marriage into itself has becoming more difficult for people right. to accept. And I think that that's what we see in these statistics. I think that's absolutely right. And if you look at the statistics, Harris, men specifically are opting out of marriage. I mean, this is a term that's been dubbed by Breitbart as the sexitus. All right. So I get into lots of trouble when I pipe up because I was raised by Shirley and Bob and this is how they raised Oh, me. Bob and Shirley. I know. <laughs> I love them. Uh, you know, I mean, it's all about the milk and the cow. I, I don't think there's oh. a lot of pressure on men to get to get married because we are much more sexually free society uh, in general. If you kind of look historically, well, the seventies were pretty wild. But I mean, <laughs> you do know, tell, do tell. Right. I was in grade school. Hello. Um, but what I'm saying is, as a society, are we? And it's a question really for the doctor <laughs> too. Are we really at a point where? You know, sex and marriage don't have to go together anymore, obviously. It used to be part of a song that rhymed. But we've gotten away from that. Guys just don't feel the pressure anymore. Well, and, and Kennedy, yeah. women have been encouraged to give it up, as Harris talks about, freely with the rise yeah. of feminism, yeah. have sex like a man. So they're doing this, and they're mm. not making the guy step up to put a ring on it. No, mm. and, and they, they are... Uh, they're sacrificing the integrity of the relationship. I think a lot of times, and maybe that sounds judgmental, I also blame Tinder because I think there are a lot of dudes Makes that don't want to get married because if you're not married, it's not cheating. Am I wrong? You're right. So that was uploaded in 2015. I don't know exactly when that segment aired. You can't tell me what to do sexually. Now it's the men saying the cow and the milk analogy. And, you know, modern women are up in arms like, you can't tell me what to do. Sexual empowerment, empowered street queens, blah, blah, blah. Right. Men are not supposed to voice their preferences or opinions on why they don't want to marry women. But you have here women telling you why men are no longer picking them for marriage, why commitment is in the drain, why the marriage rates themselves has plummeted and continues to do so. And we're headed in a crazy direction. So here's more. Ready. Our fifth story out front. Ladies, get a degree. Here, you know something? It's so funny. 
you guys brainwash these chicks to give it up. Literally. You guys brainwash your old women to become whores. And now you're upset. Oh my God, they're whores. What's going on here? <laughs> I'm like, listen. Listen. Um, listen, let me explain something to you, buddy. Talking to you, American male. Talking to you, buddy. The American male. I want you to understand this. Okay, you guys are running to Latin America, right? Because they're white material. The reason why they're white material, I'll tell you why, is because the guys want to get married. You guys do not want to get married. You want to be whores. But you don't want to say you're a whore. So you're going to sit there and tell, convince people that, oh, no, 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 women can be whores, not men. No, 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 you're a whore. Okay? That's what you are. You are a whore. If you are a guy and you're sleeping around, you're a whore. Okay? Same thing for a chick. You're a whore. You brainwash these women into getting up on the first night. They're doing that. And then after that, you call her a whore. But the guy sleeping with the girl is not a whore. This is the mind control that they're doing. A lot of these guys are coming off like, we didn't do nothing. This is what you deserve. This is what you want. You want a dick all your life. I don't think that was the case. Let's be for real. Let's be perfectly for real here. Okay? After 23, I don't care. Am I right, Maria? After 23, girls are thinking about babies. Every time they see a guy, they're thinking he's good looking, he's attractive, I want to have sex, I want babies. Perfectly normal. They're thinking about babies. That's, and you guys have conditioned these females into wait, wait, wait until you hit 28, 30, and that's the normal age to get to have kids. No, it's not. That's a lie. And these guys have been lying since day one. You know these girls are supposed to get married at 23, 24, 25. You know this. You know you're supposed to get the girl who is the most educated, get these girls. You know this. You know that for a fact that most of these girls shouldn't be, I mean, seriously, you shouldn't be promoting the degeneracy. You should be knowing that. Instead, what you did, you did the opposite, and you promoted whoredom. And you convinced these chicks to go and make out with each other, to kiss each other, to do lesbian things, which is very, very weird in spring break, how it's weird that they want other white, especially white women, because they, they made their women whores. And they're going to come to me and tell me that, oh, my God, why are women such a whores? I don't know. You made them that way. And they'll tell, they'll come up. To, I, I met, I met tons of white guys, tons, tons of white guys who have sat there and told me that these got, that, 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 um, um, that they're, whore, that they're whores. And I'm like, well, why are they whores? These white chairs that are dressing up. They're not doing that for me. I, I'm not. They're not trying to impress me. They're trying to impress you, buddy. And when they dress up and get drunk, they're trying to impress you, not me. They're not talking to me. I don't want to talk to them because they're not my women. Same thing goes for the black women here in the United States. Dressing up. They're, once again, they're getting, uh, you know, their body, you know, working out, going asses out, asses, ass, booty out. Tays are out. Wearing all that weave and law. Who do you think they'll do that for? They're not doing it for me. They're not doing that for me. They're doing that for you. And these are the girls that you called them sluts. But who, but why are they dressing you up like that? Don't sit there and pretend that you're an idiot. Because you are one. You know, you love your horse. You love whores. You love sluts. 
You love the you love prostitutes. You love only fan girls. This is what you like. Don't deny it. Are you gonna sit there and turn around? Oh my god, I've been waiting all my life to get married, but these girls are such sluts and whores. The hell are you talking about? A lot of these a lot of these guys are are allowing this to happen. They're allowing this to happen. I'm sorry to say this, but it's the truth. Constantly shifted into we're going back into the 50s. We're going back. We're regressing. Our rights are being taken away. All the woman in the red was saying is, hey, I'm asking women to be mindful of the biological clock that awaits you. You can't spend all your 20s, that entire decade from 20 to 30, thinking about who I'm going to evolve into. And then you're going to wake up funny enough, she says, 30. Isn't that funny? At 30, you're going to wake up thinking, who am I going to be at 40? And but what you really what you really want to say is men stop looking at you right around 30 because they're trying to find a woman five years younger, six years younger, seven years younger. Again, it's nice to get a degree from Princeton Little Ivy League school and show yourself capable, very smart woman. But at the end of the day, what these capable, smart men in those exact campuses are looking for is not going to be you at 30 plus. So she's saying while you're on campus, while you're young. You may want to think about while you're surrounded by these men that are at least on your level intellectually and most likely are going to have very good jobs. This is a rare pool of potentially high value men with bright careers ahead of them. Excuse me, uh, bro. College are that's the college kids that the vast majority of white, uh, uh, predominantly white kids and black kids go on college campuses and get drunk and hammered and literally promote degeneracy. And you're saying, well, we well, see you should get what he's got. So basically what he's trying to say is, is listen, you want to get what these guys give a nerd, give, give, give a software engineer, nerd, give a doctor, nerd, give with a, I don't know, a, a biz major nerd, give a nerd, Unattractive guy, not good looking guy, you know, give a nerd. He's uh he's going somewhere economically, even though he's not physically attractive. Probably can't say she satisfy you, but you know, he makes a lot of money. Get with that man. So what what these guys try to do, they try to lower your standards and say, you know, I want you to date someone who is way below your level, who's not attractive, but that's okay. You have the same career. And that's something these guys are doing. Now, thank you, person. By the way, this too. Amer these guys also don't want to get married in their early twenties. Because remember, they got a whole time to play the field, man. They got a whole lot of time to play the field. They got to play the field. Don't worry, man. You're twenty-three. You got, you got a whole lot of time of you. You got to play the field. You know what? They, you want know be honest with you? If I was 21, an American girl, I'm like, I'm 21. I'm an American girl. I'm going to university. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Now, a lot of Hispanic chicks that I know personally, they literally went to college, spent three months back in their countries. I'm out of here. Not dealing with this. No, out. I'm going back to, you know, Mexico, Dominican Republic, Costa Rica, Panama, Colombia. You know, per, you know, per, they, you have girls saying this to me. Like, I'm going back home. I know why. And they'll come and tell me, like, I don't want to deal with the guys here. Are you kidding me? And these are a spat. It was back in the day. I remember me growing up. I feel bad for these rest of these girls because they're figuring out right now, like, holy shit. I wasted so much time in these fucking places. And it's like, yeah, you did. This is why I try to tell these guys, you're, you're about to hear it, folks. You're about to hear it because you're about to hear it. But again, look what happens when you say something like that on TV. There's always the sister day is in shambles, boys. Let's read about how I need to cover more of her videos because that lady is spot on. 
And she wrote an opinion piece on Fox News saying, why men won't marry you? And she just straight to the point. Where have all the husbands gone? That's a question Peter Lloyd tackles in a series in London's Mail about Britain's marriage rate, which is at its lowest level since 1895. Yeah, you read that right. 1895. The state of matrimony is not just ailing. It's dying out faster than a mobile phone battery, Lloyd writes. For an army of women, Mr. Wright is simply not there, no matter how hard they look for him. Mr. Wright has checked out gone his own way we know the story let's continue things are no better this side of the atlantic according to a pew research center the share of american adults who've never been married is at an historic high and men are more likely than women to have never made it down the aisle 23 percent versus 17 percent in 2012. there was a time when wives respected their husbands there was a time when wives took care of their husbands as they expected their husbands to take care of them so she writes two quick points right here. What gives? Why are men here and abroad avoiding the altar in spades? And again, this is only in the West. Don't be fooled because everywhere else that still has traditional gender roles. Men are still respected for what they can provide, aren't demonized by society. No crazy talk about the patriarchy and holding me down and female empowerment, this and that, where that does not exist. Matrimony is still very much intact and thriving. So her point one is because they can. Men used to marry to have sex and a family. They married for love too, but they had to marry the girl before taking her to bed or at least to work really, really hard to wear her down. Those days are gone. When more women make themselves sexually available, the pool of marriageable men diminishes. In a world where women do not say no, the man is never forced to settle down and make serious choices. Surprise nobody writes George Gilder, author of Men in Marriage. Scoff if you wish, call me a fuddy-duddy, but how's that new plan work out for men today? To enter into a legal contract with someone who could effectively take half their savings, pension, and property when the honeymoon period is over. Men aren't wimping out by staying unmarried or being commitment phobes. They're being smart. That's a woman saying that. Thank you, Helen. Unlike women, men lose all the power after they say, I do. Their masculinity dies too. Whoa, whoa. I don't even have to make comments here. This article alone is just completely wrecking the idea of marriage today. For women, by women. Women are wrecking that idea right now. What's left of it, that is. In the span of just a few decades, America has demoted men from respected providers and protectors of the family to superfluous buffoons. Today, sitcoms and commercials routinely paint men, paint a portrait of the idiot husband whose wife is smarter and more capable than he. I've talked about that on this channel a ton. The narrative in the culture. In scene, this woman is spot on. And she's from a generation that's before all these modern women with tattoos talking about what men are looking for and giving you advice on men and relationships and marriage. There's a real woman giving you real world advice. Highly recommend it. And final article of the day. Millions of men no longer want to get married. And you can thank the government for that. So the past articles were and videos were basically saying it's because of the gynocentric movement. And now this one is hang on it. No matrimony, no wedding dress, no big celebration with family and friends. What about the thought of having children without a marriage? It's fine if you don't believe in marriage, but the rest of us do. Oh, who's this written by a woman? Let's see how she's annoyed with this. Most women look forward to tying the knot with the man of their dreams. But what will happen if millions of men refuse to get married? This is what's currently happening in America and many other parts of the world. No, only in the West. Let's pin it down to the West where gynocentrism and female empowerment, sexual empowerment, liberty, all that stuff coalesced into what we're seeing today. Historically low marriage rates in America. Hmm. Let's see. U.S. News reported that marriage rates reached a historic low in 2018, with only 6.5 people out of 1,000 getting married. The lowest level in 118 years. Wow. Six and a half people out of 1,000 are getting married. You sound like a sucker now if you get married in the West. Because those numbers are atrocious. And of that small percent, six and a half people out of a thousand, 80% of the divorce rate is initiated by women, 80% or higher. 
and half of those fail outright, if not more. So of the 6.5, only three make it. If it's three, it's probably like two point something, one point something. Unreal, dude. Talk about a raw deal. Oh my God, The talk about having the cards stacked against you. That's insane. <laughs> Playing about men's unfair treatment and relationships and family courts. They're tired of being browbeaten by women and the gender bias laws against men. For this reason, millions of men don't want to get married and are opting out of marriage altogether. Shocker to nobody when six and a half divorce cost you half a million dollars. And we just did a video on men turning to surrogacy to have children. Cost anywhere from fifty to dollars $100,000. And they went to a, into a court battle and he was forced to say that this is where we're headed. And this is, again, the hidden bachelor tax that I'm talking about. Support for a child he never sees. I'm just reading. <laughs> Dude. Entrapment pregnancy, aka forced fatherhood, is a common problem in the United States too. Many men feel paying support for a child they don't didn't agree to have is unfair, but the courts see it as doing what's right for the kid, which is a load of horseshit because the courts take a percentage of the child support you send to the mother. If the courts cared, they wouldn't be profiting off the entire scam of these forced pregnancies. A, ma a woman receiving child support can also claim government assistance, welfare, free health insurance, etc., while the man gets nothing. Raw deal. Football central to raising children beyond the point of paying child support. Boy, do the statistics bear that out. If you're wealthy and smart, you can protect yourself. But for the average man, getting I have to change the laws so my man doesn't get stiffed hard in the courts. I don't want to deal with child support. Why is the government taking percentages out of that? Ex average man getting in a marriage, dude, is a losing proposition. Seriously, it could end your life. You do not have the financial power to survive the courts and to battle your woman. All she has to do is say, he did this to me. He did this to the kids. I fear for my life, etc." That's your ass now. You got to prove everything. Your assets are being taken. She'll live in your house while you're in an apartment under the threat of being jailed if you miss one single payment, which you're on the brink of making every single time because she took literally everything. You no longer are even productive at work anymore. You don't see your kids anymore. You have no reason to live anymore. And then men just check out. And I mean from life, not from dating or marriage. This is how a man's story ends, and it's so sad. I do not recommend in the West any man marry. Cohabitation, do that with your own risk. <laughs> Assess your risk profile, what you're willing to entertain in court, possibly because your woman has the power, depending on the state or the country in the West that you live in, that she can leverage that to take you to court legally, and who knows what you can end up losing there. Other than that, don't do it. Don't even cohabitate. Any. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't get married. Don't do it. I love, I, I want to read this stuff, man. I had a relative who married a foreign woman. She can cook and clean and keep herself in shape. His, 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 his mistake was bringing her to the States. She divorced him, God's mansion, child support, alimony, 100 acres of land, and divorce. But you want love, marriage, and child, leave and never come back. In my case, the question of why I look for love overseas is, is answered quite simply. In my own country, New Zealand, nobody wanted me. In the Philippines, they all wanted me. I choose to be alone, man. Less attitude, BS, complain, time wasted headaches. Oh my God. Look at this. Oh. Straw mask and alpha males right here. High quality men don't look at you anymore and return to that nice guy at 30. Oh. He's strong. Alpha male's right here. Strong. I'm firm and masculine. Mm -mm -mm. Look at this. Oh, strong masculine alpha males. Look at this. 
I keep thinking, Billy, my life, no need to complain theme, blah, blah, blah. I'm single, never married, quit dating. Marriage has always been an unfair money trap for men. Mm -hmm. These fine people. Paired in the 50s. Yes, it is in the 50s. All these guys just coming together. All these nationalizing groups of engine. Oh, look at that. I'm happily married. I'm Gen X, and my wife is Korean. She's a strong, smart woman with a master's degree and a great job. She never disrespected me. She still cooks for me. We both do. We split doing chores, and around the house, we communicate. She thinks Western women in this gen generation are psychotic with a hookup culture and how they act, and they all should be put in mental institutions. That's right. You got your Korean wife, the shit on American chicks. I think these Western women in this generation are psychotic with the hookup culture, and how they act, and they obviously put in a mental. That's right. I agree, because I will never, if I never met my wife, I would never, ever, 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 ever be married to any of these clown shows. I will have my house, car, a cabin, a boat, a dog, and live my life in peace. Ah, oh, oh, these American women. These Western women, look at you. Look at you, woman. Strong alpha males, look at that. Child support. I married a foreign because local women are extreme materialistic in their 20s. Too woke, judgmental, self-righteous, mentally and emotionally unstable, not accountable for anything. Strong women. Look at these alpha. Oh, my God. Look at these American men. Do not go abroad. If you do not know the culture intimately, they will not know the language. You will find yourself in the worst situation. Very, very true. I met I met a Colombian chica who was on a holiday with her family. Her little sister ran up to me, a complete stranger, and was trying to speak English to me. Her parents, like how I interacted with her, and from we exchanged numbers. And with them especially, the older daughter went to Colombia to their ranch, and when I uh, when I tell you I missed it, she cooked for me, washed the dishes, took me horse riding, and her little sister adores me. I'm telling you, get out of the worst day and see, because I feel like a man. I went to Columbia, and she taught me how to ride a horse. She cooked to clean my dishes. I never got that in America. You understand how I feel, Kim? You understand how I feel? You understand what I'm going on, bro? Look at me. <laughs> Look at me, man. We are victims. Fine, firm Latinas. Ugh. Colombian girls. Oh, those Colombian ones. So, so submissive, so attractive, so beautiful. You come to America. Look at these ugly bitches. Just look at them. I can't deal with these bitches no more. Just look at them. Just in disgust. I'm, I got my passport. I'm heading down to Latin America. Oh, those Cubans. Oh, they're such white material. Unlike these American girls. Look at them. Look at you. This is how delusional these guys are. They're, they're dumb and stupid and retarded. Again. <laughs> I love this. Ma been married to a Filipina for six years now. She's been great. She is now a citizen and is studying to be a respiratory therapist. Moving to America has not changed her one bit. I will never have married an American woman. Hear it out, folks. I'll never marry them. Look at you. I love all this stuff. I mean, I love all the traditional family-oriented men out of nowhere saying, I went to this country and feel like a man for the first time in my life. Just look at me. 
I enjoy your videos, but when you're going to discuss men going abroad for love and marrying country girls from Thailand and the Philippines who have traditional family values, this is what and so many other men in our small community have done here in Kauai. Yes, these men are mostly young, handsome, have good jobs, but weren't good enough for the Western women who weren't even nice, who weren't even nice to us till surprise. They see us as with our beautiful, unspoiled wives from overseas. My Thai wife and I have been happily married for 24 years, and today we're millionaires from our, our hard work and real estate investment. Life is good. And that's what you want. You want, see, you could have had me. We could be millionaires, but you didn't want that woman. That's what you get. You ignored me. This is what happens, man. Look at this. I got my Thai wife. I got my Filipino wife. Ugh. Those those Thai women. Ugh. Ugh. What material? Ugh. Yes. Thailand. Mm. Last night we, we went passionate love. She was so beautiful. So wonderful. That she gave me anal sex for the first time in my life. I'm like, wait, what? Oh, 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 no. I gave her anal sex. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling. I, folks, I'm not lying to people. That's how it is, man. That's how it is in the hood. I'm almost 49 year old brother. I've been married twice already. Is and and right now is marrying a Colombian woman born in Colombia, but living here for 20 years. They've been dating for almost five years, engaged for a year and a half. He didn't rush and make the mistake of marrying a crazy white girl with the same bloodline. Oh my god. Is this white man performing self-hate? He's been dating for almost five years. He didn't rush. And make the same mistake, marry a crazy white girls with the same bloodline. First one was American. Second one was from Britain. First one was cool, but she was crazy and stupid. Second one didn't last long. His new wife to be bit beats his previous two hands down. And for everyone stay here, oh my God, he made the same mistake. Why would you marry a white woman? Mm. He's American woman. These white American women just look at them. Look at them. Liars. Bitches. I will never take my own kind again. Ever. Look at this. It's too late, ladies. We men are leaving. And we are not coming back. They're coming back. Trust me. Um, we have escaped the marriage plantation. Thank you, feminists. Oh, I love this. The marriage plantation. All right. This is not just interested in many. I'm not interested in many girls here, but there was such a weird, unfocused airheadness that American women had. I met my wife, who's from Mexico City. I got a question that we both work hard to make each other happy. We both have goals and encourage each other. It's not a relationship that I could find with anyone else here. I said yes because I'm gonna write it down because because you're an American male. And we all know we these Latinas will come in charge of these households of these households and you not not you there you go look at all these five mm -mm -mm. uh Oh, look at this. I have to leave the other country. Oh, I, I love this group therapy. Say, oh, oh, you gotta go overseas. Oh, the soldiers, man. The soldiers, the soldiers. Why don't you understand this with me, girl? You American women, look at you, bitch. Look at you.
That's what you get, girl. That's what you get. It's a set. Listen, these guys are lying to the core, man. Lying. Yeah, no, there's. I've encountered that, but clearly I didn't keep it because I still ended up going overseas. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't blame you at all, man. Shout out to my man. Uh, don't blame me at all. Shout out to my man, six figure career coach for that fifteen thousand of twenty dollars super sticker. Shout out to him as 16, 16 figure career coach right now, brother. Because you're doing an awesome job. You are the new sponsor. Of the <laughs> And uh, I will say that a good majority of the videos, I've, I've, I've just seen her, I've seen her do those things. Like uh, when it comes to uh, not being able to marry one, like them being combative. My mother, to be honest, she's very combative. Really? Very, very combative. Your mom and, is? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, and she's being able to marry one, like them being combative. My mother, to be honest, she's very combative being able to marry one like them being combative my mother to be honest she's very combative being able to marry one like them being combative my mother to be honest she's very combative really very very combative your mom and, is oh yeah oh yeah wow so and she knows it even if she's right. seen it she knows it she right. if she sees it she she can't deny it i mean it's and hey that's just, it's a lot like that going on out here and mm -hmm. i can't deal with it is it safe to say that you internalize some of the things she potentially did to you or, or the people in your family? And perhaps it made you have a level of vitriol. You know, we talk about a concept in the clinical world called introjection, um, internalization. And then the last stage is called identification. Is it safe to say that, you know, perhaps seeing that level of, of, of combativeness in your family, at times that you say, you know what, I'm not going to tolerate this ish. And on a subconscious level, it made you become, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a joke with your Sith Lord. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm not going to be able to tolerate it. Yeah. Right, right, right. Like, yeah, I ain't tolerate this ish no more. I'm going to do what's best for me. And almost like a silent, rebe a silent rebellion. Like, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to show you that you're not going to disrespect me like that. That's why I try to tell you. My mama was yelling at me last night. I couldn't take it no no. I understand what it is. Mama, I'm tired of her being bad ways. You're yelling and screaming at me, mom. I'm gonna take no shit, no no. Yo, mom. The once again, the war against your mother's continue. I, I'm telling you, they don't like their moms. My mom left me. <laughs> Yo, it's my mom. My mom didn't love me. She will yell and scream. I ain't getting no hugs. Saying they want to tell me like that. I want to tell you how it goes. I want to tell you how it goes, girl. You understand me, woman? You understand me? You understand me, girl? I want you to understand this, woman. Don't you ever, ever come there and try to tell me who I cannot save, girl. Yeah, my mom. See, I told you. Listen, listen. These guys have a massive case of mom issues. This war against females. Let's cut to the chase. It's not about. It's not about. Let's be for real. It's not about women. But it is. But what kind of women? It's the girls they dated. We gotta question that. Are you telling me that the women they hate the most is their mothers? They really hate their moms. And once they go outside the world, they they every time you raise a voice and you start yelling, start nagging, they get flashback like, like the Vietnam War. They're like, you sound just like mama. I will never take this again. Not today, girl. Ah! Like, and a lot, you'd be surprised how a lot of guys here in the U.S. as a whole have got my, well, not just the U.S., 
listen, as a guy, I think every guy in the world has experienced mom issues. Like, you know, come on, your mom yells at you all the time. You have issues. Like, come on. Even for me growing up. You know, but not to the hate that is going on here. These guys hate their moms here in this country. They hate you. You birth children to hate you. I hate you, mom. Look at you. And and that being said, like I said before, every guy on planet Earth has some sort of issues with their moms. And that's fine because you're not going to agree with your mom. Your mom argues. You're going to go back and forth. You, you have some issues with your mom. It's perfectly normal. Some guys is more severe. Some there's ne- neglect. But there's a lot of... This is a big thing around the world. This is not just in America. This is all over the world. Everywhere around the world. And it's just how you deal with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I'm very stiff on women when it comes to that kind of stuff. I won't take any disrespect. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I like something you said earlier, man, uh, on the stream when you were talking about, uh, you know, I've always said before in the past, if she's not honoring and respecting you, it's fire, you know. Uh, it's billions yep. of women on this planet, man. And uh, if two billion women got, uh, if every woman got married today, uh, it would still be two million without a husband. So men don't have to tolerate disrespect. Yeah. Uh, they have more power than they realize, but they've been so conditioned to think that they are less than, they don't have any inherent worth. That it is settled for mediocrity. Now watch this. We're not talking about dusty dudes. We're not talking about uh Raekwon, the man, man, you know, uh, you know, the guys that when you say I'm gonna do what's best for me, they'll start challenging you. They say, you know, don't be talking about me and my mama. And uh, they'll get mad at you and want to fight you. And then when you try to speak your mind, you know, if you ain't careful, um, they'll come up on you, um, brother Holloman, and tell you oh, yeah, that kind of stuff. I won't take any disrespect. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I like something you said earlier, man, uh, on the stream when you were talking about, uh, you know, I've always said before in the past, if she's not honoring and respecting you, just say I'm going to do what's best for me. They'll start challenging you. They say, you know, don't be talking about me and my mama. And uh, they'll get mad at you and want to fight you. And then when you try to speak your mind, you know, if you ain't careful, um, they'll come up on you, um, Brother Holloman. And you just don't take it personally. And then on the flip side, when it comes down to being like water as it relates to being fluid, you got to be like water as it relates to being um, like static. We'll say, I'm going to do what's best for me. They'll start challenging you. They say, you know, don't be talking about me and my mama. And uh, they'll get mad at you and want to fight you. And then when you try to speak your mind, you know, if you ain't careful, um, they'll come up on you, um, Brother Holloman, and tell you. And we talk about self, Brother Holloman. We talked about self. There, there has been a lot of a couple of guys that have attacked you online. It's funny to me because I know you don't care about it because you you will charge them. And and the thing is, you don't have to answer to those haters. You don't have to answer to those people. Let them talk. Yeah, we chained out the walls on my mom. Maybe we're wrong. Kill someone, my mom. Maybe you look like. Yeah, we chained out the walls on my mom. Maybe we're wrong. Kill someone, my mom. Maybe Oh my God, my mama, my mama, you can't talk about my mama, oh my mama, uh, mama, I hate my mom, my mom treat me like shit, and when you really get woman, you understand me? And kill yeah. some of my mom. Like water going off a duck's behind. high. And you just don't take it personally. And then on the flip side, when it comes down to being like water as it relates to being fluid, you got to be like water as it relates to being um, like static. Water at its highest pressure is very forceful. And so there's a time to be bullish. And I know you can be bullish. She still is very traditional. She tells Simone, she said, oh, my mama. But, you know, if you can go back in time, uh, brother, uh, brother Holloman, 
when it comes down to a woman, what would be your ideal woman? You know, definitely you want a woman that's fit. You look like you're a fit dude. But yeah. what's your what's your ideal woman? What's your ideal woman? And uh and how do you feel the ideal woman can bring value to your life as a man? So uh, like you said, physically she has to be fit. I prefer black women first, but I'm not limited to any race. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said, uh, how would she have to be fit to be my wife? Mm -hmm. So she needs to be able to support me, right? I grew up, my mother, she's combative as hell, but she still is very traditional. She used to cook, do my dad's manicures, pedicures, et cetera. That women first, but I'm not limited to any race. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said, uh, how would she have to be fit to be my wife? Mm -hmm. So she needs to be able to support me, right? I grew up, my mother, she's combative as hell, but she still is very traditional. She used to cook, do my dad's manicures, pedicures, et cetera, that basically serve him. Uh, that's what my that's what my mama did to my my dad. I got got I got a pedicure, I got a manicure from my mama. She can cook, she can clean. I I want someone, a woman that will support me. That's why I'm in Brazil, and she really cares to my needs. I'm submit. I'm the man. The fact that I need a submissive woman. I need to find. I, I'm because I'm a high value man. I'm gonna walk with my purse. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I'm gonna walk with my purse. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, he's going to Brazil talking like this. Yo, these women down there are gonna bitch, bitch to f. Listen. Brazilian women are very aggressive women. They're not these... Di if you cannot deal with women's naggy behavior here, you're not going to last in Brazil. She's going to cuss you out, and he's gonna, she's going to try every way possible to really boss you around. And you don't know what to do. And that goes throughout Latin America. Because I'm telling you right now, in our country is the got the guys down the women down there they're very very bossy if you cannot do a bitchy behavior here you're not gonna do one so over there i always stand by i was literally saying this women from latin america are probably the most bitchy nice women on planet earth they really are it trumps european chicks it trumps asian chicks i will say that personally people might disagree with me right there they are the most naggiest. Hey, you talk about conceited and arrogance. That's women in Latin America. So when these guys are talking about, oh my God, I see these women. It's all easy, bro. They can't to my. I, I just don't believe that. I just don't. I think, like, listen, listen. Okay. Do you think I'm not stupid? I've been, to, I've been to parts of, I've been to Mexico literally. There is like restaurants and some random girl sits right next to me asking me if she wants to hang with me tonight. What do you think I'm going to look at her as? Oh, you got a shock here. He likes, she likes you. No, she's a worker. Okay. A random chick and she asks you, do you want to hang out tonight? That's what we see in my area. And I'm not going to lie. In my, in my, my defense, he is some very attractive sex workers. Not going to lie. They actually have a lice figure, ass, tits. They're actually pretty hot. Not going to lie. But I know for a fact, why are you here? Why are you talking to me? Why are you in this restaurant? What are you doing? Why are you dressing like that? Hello? And the funny, th the funny thing about it is that these guys are going to go down there and the, the, the same thing. Here we're going to hear the same thing again. They start shitting on the guys down there. Like, oh, I can compete with the men. No, you can't. You really can't. You guys are not masculine down there. Because the way you guys talk about women, you guys got mommy issues. All of you guys. Like severe mommy issues. Like you don't like your women, which is basically their mom. 
They don't, you don't like your women because it reminds you of your mom. You think they're unattractive. You want to go to other countries and all blah, blah, blah. But come on now. Let's be for real. Uh, so I've seen that a little bit growing up. And they weren't together too long. Uh, had it lasted a little longer, I'd be able to say I've seen it longer. But uh, I, I need that. Now, hey, I know some women have – there's there's two different types of women. There's, the like you say, the modern women and the traditional women. Right, there's right, There's people right, right, that right. say – Oh, not everybody wants to be a you women don't want to be a housewife. Uh you might be restricting their talent. I've had somebody trying to counter me with that. Oh, she might have talent. Well, look, if she had that talent, she did, nobody's forcing her to sign up to be a housewife. Right, right, right. So if she can have that talent, she can do her talent and follow the typical diet along with the rest of the modern women, because that's where they're headed, because they don't want to cooperate with men. Uh, but she for sure has to be cooperative, right? No doubt. Uh, she needs to know how to cook. You know, I mean, it, it's 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 hard for me to explain because I would think people would know. You know, right, right, you right, would think right, they right, would know right. that. Right, 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 right. Well, well, well many brother Harlem see cooking as being a slave. You know, they think if you cook a man a meal, not understanding that cooking to a man is very nurturing. It helps them feel comfortable. It helps them feel supported. It helps them feel loved. In the clinical world, we talk about what's called love languages. I will argue that your love language perhaps is acts of service. Is that fair to say? Uh, physical touch, mm -hmm. words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. That's the acts of service to you. Your acts of service, right. And, and, and so what women don't understand, mm -hmm. Brother Holloman, is this. Service is, is a duality, meaning the woman receives and the man receives. You know, uh, I use an a, a esoteric concept when I talk about the moon and the sun. The sun uh, gives light and life to the moon. The moon revolves around the sun and more or less projects or reflects the image of the sun. When those two are in perfect synchronicity, then both benefit. Uh, we call it a symbiotic relationship in science. But, you know, nowadays, sadly, uh, they don't think they got to do anything in return. You know, they don't think they got to give you anything. And they've been so liberally indoctrinated that now, if any time a man say anything that's related to traditionalism, um, they say it's an issue or you're, you're, you know, you're, you're misandric, uh, misogynist, or misogynist war, uh, you know, you, you know, you, you, you're a batch of women, um, your mom is black, and uh, they don't give anything that's going to help you become the better version of yourself. Uh, have you been getting a lot of critics? Um, what have some of your women critics been saying to you? Or you just, you don't care, you just laugh at them? Uh, I mean, I listen to them. I don't really care because, I'm like I said, I'm... It's every time I do an interview, it's kind of hard for me to answer because I'm I'm giving up. I've already gave up on them, but I've given up, so it's kind of I can't even really respond anymore. But I will say this: uh, whenever you bring up traditional things to these modern women, uh, what they'll say is, "Well, we could always hire a chef to come and cook for us. Who's going to pay for that? Uh, it's not going to be her." <laughs> right, right. So now, right. so now, so now right. her options are limited even further because. They say, oh, money, you know, money doesn't matter to every woman. Yes, it does. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to cook a clean because so, you don't want to be a slave. You want to hire somebody to do that. That's not free. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to pay for that. I'm right. going to pay for that. Right, 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 pay right. For that. right, 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 right. Which in essence is taking money out of your pocketbook. It's taking money um, out of what could be given to your legacy for your children and also for your wife. But see, who would you say is to blame to the level of entitlement? Now, I know what it is. But I'm going to see what you what you say, because some will argue that uh, many have contributed to the level of entitlement of these modern women. But before you answer the question, guys, get the likes up. Go check out Brother Holland. He's killing the game right now. Go check out his uh, his YouTube channel. I'm tell I put I'm Brother Holland's on YouTube channel in my in my chat. My twenty dollar twenty five dollar cash. Link to the channel. If you don't have any money to share, just share the content or spare. Share the content. Get the likes up to them being so entitled so i seen i was looking in the comments and i've seen two things i've seen uh somebody said the simps which right, i would I, agree that's I, that's I agree. them that they can people only get away with what you allow them to do and there's men so-called men that allow them to do this mm -hmm. but uh right here somebody said if she doesn't make me feel like I, I would be ready to go to war to defend her and my family's freedom then she's not the one 
So I would agree when I went to Brazil, this is what I this is what I say when I say they made me feel more masculine. They empowered me Talk about that. to make Oh, so when in Brazil, gotta take off my shirt and squeeze my titties. I feel like a man, Kim. You don't understand. When I went to Brazil, I felt like a man, Kim. You you will never understand how I feel, Kim. You'll never understand how I feel. How I feel when I when I went to Brazil. I felt like a man. You don't understand how I feel, Kim. When I went to Brazil, I see tens everywhere down there, girl. Why don't you understand that? Why don't you understand that? Why don't you understand that, girl? Why don't you feel that way? When I went to Brazil, I saw tens. I saw tense. I literally saw tense, Kim. I don't care what you got to say, girl. It made me feel like a man. I went to Brazil. You got no idea how I feel. I'm telling you, you don't understand. You don't understand how I feel. I feel like a man. They make me feel like a man. I never felt that way before. I tell people all the time how I feel. No one believe me. No one believe me. But when I went to Brazil, it was the first time in my life. These women inspire me to be a man. And we're about to hear it right now. You want to protect them. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like protecting these women around here. Right, right. I, I, I don't, right, I don't right. feel, I don't feel in not the one. So I would agree. When I went to Brazil, this is what I, this is what I say when I say they made me feel more masculine. They empowered me. Talk about that. To make me want to protect them. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like protecting these women around here. Right, I, right. I, I don't, right, I don't right. feel, I don't feel indebted mm -hmm. uh, to stand up for uh, American women. The typical American, of course, not all of them, but the typical American women, I don't feel indebted to stand up for her and uh, risk my freedom of my life mm -hmm. if you're being disrespected. Because if they're that masculine, the point was like, you got it. But when I was in Brazil, or I, the uh, chick that's from Brazil that was here, I felt like that was my duty without her saying it, without her right. showing that she wanted right. it. It just, that, right. but that's that's a empowerment she gave me because yes, she was sir. feminine. Right, I don't I love feel that. that. I don't feel. Yeah, I don't feel that way right. with masculine right. women. Masculine right. women are like men. I don't protect my homeboys unless they're already getting hurt. <laughs> well, you know, Ted Pendergrass said, "You inspire me." That's what Ted Pendergrass said. Yeah. He called this woman the Mona Lisa. He said, "You inspire me," and so they don't understand how powerful femininity can be if the woman is genuine. Brother Holloman, there's a lot of chicks that are, are more or less using what's called fake femininity we know yes. that you checked out but were there times where you saw women that more or less exhibited fake femininity and how did you expose it or did you ever check them on that behavior when you saw it well they're the american version of the green card chicks that they talk about are overseas mm -hmm. they, they they love to say these women overseas are faking it well they're the biggest phonies that there are mm -hmm. and when have i seen uh when have I seen somebody display fake femininity? That is a hard question because I can have I ever experienced femininity until I left. I don't think I experienced fake femininity. Mm -hmm. I can't answer that one. It wasn't here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The first thing you saw when you got hit with that feminine oscillation in Brazil was what? What was the first thing that? What did it do to you? Uh, we call it the clinical world from a psychosomatic response, meaning how did it penetrate your mind and what did it do to your body? Because you like you're physically fit. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're a young buck. You're looking strong. I'm sure, you know, the women in Brazil found you to be handsome. But what did it do to your mind and also your, your body when you got around a feminine woman? Because I always tell men, you know, if you got erectile dysfunction in America, you, you'll be healed in foreign countries. You'll be healed in foreign countries. <laughs> Because the women are so feminine, but but what did it do to you, brother? What did it do to you, to your mind and also your your body when you got around a feminine woman? Because 
I always tell men, you know, if you got erectile dysfunction in America, you, you'll be healed in foreign countries. You'll be healed in foreign countries because the women are so feminine. But but what? Oh, you've been healed because you got that erectile dysfunction, man, because you do all the straggle daggles here in America. And you be healed when you went to Brazil. Oh, oh, mmm, mmm, spicy, firm. Oh, oh, oh. Oh yes. Ugh. I never felt this way in my entire life. I told you a long time ago, Kim. I told you a long time ago, Kim. I feel like a man. I feel like a man, Kim. I'm sorry, man. I feel like a man when I go to Brazil. I feel like a man and you don't know how I feel, Kim. You don't know how I feel. You know how I feel growing up as a man going on. You hear me, boy? When I go to America, when I got erectile function, I knew how it was, was a man. You understand me? Uh, that's just how these guys talk. That's how stupid these guys talk. You know, right? Yeah. That's how that's 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 how these guys talk. Not even joking. No joke. We're gonna zoom. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Well, okay. I want to <laughs> say I I haven't said anything yet. I know I. Have Respecting uh, guys in the passport community. That... <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I want to say I, I haven't said anything yet. I know I had some um, technical issues before, so um, I don't know if everybody everybody else has spoken. I I just want to um, say something now. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll so, hop on after you. Uh, th thanks. So, um, just starting with the beginning about um, why are black women upset that um, black men are going. Uh, that are traveling. First of all, we're not upset that you're traveling. You could do whatever you want to do. And pause it. First of all, you are upset that they're traveling because they're shitting on you, saying that you're crap. That's number one. You're upset. It goes back to what I was saying about the whole preference thing. You can have your preference. You can go to Brazil and you could prefer the women. Shout out to Top Gun. Top Gun said for that five dollar super stick. I appreciate it, brother. He says Stella really got it on her face. Her man really like um, dingling, but they try to shame us. He said, you can't make it up, brother. And I agree with you 1,000%. That's why I keep telling me, live your life on your own terms. Um, don't worry about what Which I never did. I do, but don't feel mm -hmm. this need. And again, I'm not saying all black men do this, but a lot of them, you get a passport, you go out of the country, you meet a woman that is not black and does not live in America, and you're cocky now. Now you feel like you need to down black women in America and you don't need to do that. Do what you want to do, but don't don't feel like you have to drag us in order to do that. That that's that's basically all I'm saying. That's my reaction to it. Which I never did. I, sir, I, I I said more than once. I'm not saying all black men who travel do that. I'm not saying you specifically. I'm talking about the black men that do. Let, let me ask her a question or the women on the question real quick. So when black so when black women convince other mm -hmm. black women to travel, which way what in what ways or forms do they convince other women to travel? How did mm -hmm. how do women know about Jamaica or these other countries where it's popular for black women? How how is that communicated? I'm just curious. How how do they know about it? Well, I can only speak for myself. Like I said, I've been traveling since I was a baby, so it's not some it's not some secret thing that I just discovered and other black women have to tell me. So Maybe I'm not the right person for that question. Are you asking because you want to know if it's in relation to men? Because because, because you say because you because 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 men put out information on social media to 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 basically inform other men on their options. So when we put information for men, the 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 way we structure our message may be offend some people. So if if you don't like the way black men structure their message to other black men 
how do black women structure their message to women to encourage them to travel? Because women are just not traveling on their own. A lot of them get information from other women. Okay, can I chime in? Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we hear you. Okay, so I, I just wanted to answer your question, then I can kind of, then we can kind of piggyback. But um, then you mentioned like the message that that males kind of put out there. Oh, I know what it is. It's called tricking. What y'all do is y'all just compare notes. Which girls are the most expensive? Who's the least expensive? Who who will cater to your American dollar? So basically, y'all are talking about the places that's easiest to trick. Now, for women, we don't have to trick to, to be in the company of a foreign man, unlike a lot of y'all. So end of the day, when I go to the... Hey, first of all, this is when, when these females come on these platforms. This is how they got to stop talking about this. Number one, um, when women when women travel, don't say that because now you're not paying guys. But let's be for real. When you go to countries and you're single, you're trying to meet guys. Let's be for real. And that's perfectly fine. I don't have a problem with that. But there are, you, the difference is, and this is the reality of it, they are going for the same reason why these guys are going. Now, notice what he, she said, Jamaica. Like Jamaica, like Jamaica. They always keep bringing up Jamaica. And it's funny because that's really dumb by design because Jamaica's full of dark-skinned black dudes. And that's the thing about it. Like, they're still kind of like mammy worshiping these guys still. They're, you're, you're about to hear it. I've been to 81 countries, probably more than most people on the panel. I've oh. lived in 10 of them. Yes. Oh. I speak several languages. I'm from Miami, by the way. I'm a Black American and proud. But yes, ma'am. I don't have to pay for play, unlike the males do. So when I talk to <laughs> other women, ha, 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 yeah. So when I talk to other women <laughs> traveling, it's... It's more so the culture, the history, the architecture. You ever thought about that? The museums. It's not about tricking because, again, we don't have to pay the trick unlike a lot of y'all do. All right. I get what she's saying. These are factual things. But let's be for real. If you're going to Brazil, you're not there to look at museums either. No one's going to Brazil to see the museums. No one's going to Brazil to see the art art galleries. No one cares. Everyone, same from Colombia, same from and now. There's stuff to see that they show you. Yeah, but let's be for real. Just like the guys that go down to these places, same thing for the girls too. And she's in Miami, in a area is predominantly from Latin America. See, I told you these people got some quasi fetish for these people. I swear to God. I swear to God to you. Like, I'm not, and by the way, I'm not saying there's other countries. They, they go to other countries as well, like Asia, Africa, Europe, and all those places. That's fine. I feel like the problem with a lot of these girls is, is that at the same time, when you're talking like this, they're laughing because they know it's true. They, they These guys are, listen, if these guys are traveling to these countries, they're not stupid either. They see the girls there too. That's why when people have an issue with me, they always say, hey, you know, Kim, why don't you ever talk about the guy, the woman traveling? Because these guys are in the same vicinity. They know why they're going to these places. Let's be for real. Like, the reason why people go to these places, like, for example, in Mexico, not talking about Kim, but these other spots, we all know why you're down there. Like, you're going to many Colombia, why are you going to many Colombia? You're not there to see the museums over there. Or the artwork or the gardening. No one's going to many Colombia for that. Everyone knows why you're going down there. And I funny he said mentioned Jamaica, Jamaica. And I know he's trying to say it because he doesn't want to say like you know other countries because they'll feel insecure. That's when they got that dark skin hue stiff going on in their mental mental gymnastics. But come on. I hope that answers your question. We don't have to compare notes on 
Oh, a plethora of different. I thought you mentioned forms. Okay, you mean forums. Okay, well, we can go there as well. Facebook groups, there are political circles. So, yeah, there are a plethora of ways in which we share, I would say, travel reports, travel stories, best practices. You know, safety is a big issue, but especially if you, if you travel solo. So, that's another thing that we share um, on those platforms. So if, I, so if I was in any of those groups, you wouldn't see any negativity of, towards black men. You wouldn't you wouldn't hear any uh, black man bashing. I first never. So first of all, I'm divested. I I don't deal with black American males. I haven't for years. So you're not on my radar. But apparently, we're on your radar. You That's guys want. Question. I don't deal with black American males. I haven't for years. So you're not on my radar. But apparently, they're, um, on those platforms. So if, I, so if I was in any of those groups, you wouldn't see any negativity of, towards black men. You wouldn't you wouldn't hear any uh, black man bashing. I first never. So first of all, I'm divested. I I don't deal with black American males. I have She's divested, folks. And you know what that means. I'm divested. I love. I'm. I'm a I'm a thick girl, but that's okay. I love something, K Michelle. I'm thinking I look good. Let me tell you something right now, man. Um, these divest. Listen, listen. Um, I know what she's trying to say. It's actually pretty factual. Um, no, we're comparing notes and blah 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 blah. Okay, look. Here's the thing about it. Um. Here's the thing about this. The let's be for real. There are forums that talk about places that get sex. They're not saying pay, but if you're a girl, okay, and you're going to Puerto Rico, why are you going to Puerto Rico? And don't sit there and tell me you dare see museums. I'm not say there's no museums because there is. No, I say there's no museums in Mexico. There's tons of museums in Mexico. I like museums too. But let's be for real. You're not there to look at all the museums. You're trying to find a guy. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you are. And the reason why I know that, because there are forums, actually, private forums. You can't, it's hard to find. But they're there of girls talking about their trips to these places. They do talk about sex. And that's okay. That's none of my business, you know. That's what they want to do. But at the same time, a lot of these girls are, they are lying as well. Because if you know anything about the, those divestic chicks, all they do is bash men. Bash their own men. That's what they do. For years, so you're not on my radar, but apparently we're on your. You want you want so hard, Uncle, for us to care about your degeneracy. We don't care, and then the whole thing about Brazilian women, oh, uh, what are more beautiful? I was in Brazil for Carnival. I think they had a delayed Carnival, like around April. I was there. It's overrated. At the end of the day, I've been to 81 countries, and most of the males look better than y'all look here. Are you married? Canada. Are you married to any of them? Or you want you want so hard, Uncle, for us to care about your degeneracy. We don't care. And then the whole thing about Brazilian women, oh, uh, uh, what are more beautiful? I was in Brazil for Carnival. I think they had a delayed Carnival, like around April. I was there. It's, I don't deal with Black American males. I haven't for years. So you're not on my radar. But apparently, we're on your radar. You That's guys. That's not my want, question. I said, do you, women bash? Do women bash? Yes. And or no? I and I answered your question. I'm not in those circles. <laughs> we, we don't care. You want you want so hard, Uncle, for us to care about your degeneracy. We don't care. And then the whole thing about Brazilian women, oh, uh, uh, what are more beautiful? I was in Brazil for Carnival. I think they had a delayed Carnival, like around April. I was there. It's overrated. At the end of the day, I've been to eighty-one countries, and most of the males look better than y'all look here. Are you or married? Canada. Are you married to any? Okay. All right. Here, here's here's something that I will say what these girls need to stop doing. Y'all need to stop bashing these other groups of women because guess what? Someone could easily say these girls are hotter than you. And were you like it or not, 
and whether you like it or not, these girls have that leverage. Like, oh, Brazil, Brazilian carnival is overrated. Brazilian carnival is all men and women, but particularly men around the world go to the Brazilian carnival. The rest of the carnivals, no one gives a shit about. Let's see for real, like no one cares about them. Even the ones I have in Mexico, no one cares about them. When you think about carnival, what do you think of? Immediately, Brazil. Not not Jamaica, not Trinidad. I'm not dissing on these people. I'm not. I can talk, you know, we can talk, but let's be for real. When you feel Carnival, you're thinking of Brazil. Not talking about the I'm not bashing the ones from Argentina. There's the ones in Colombia. But when you think of Carnival, you think of Brazil. And whether you like it or not. Those girls are attra really attractive. When you think Carnival on a global market, in a global scale amongst men, I've talked to a lot of guys, they only think of one thing, Brazil. Now, I've we have Carnivals all around Latin America, but everyone goes to Brazil. Guys around the world go to Brazil. That's just that's just that's just the reality of it. It's just that's just the reality of it. And that girl that's talking like that, she's just I don't know what she's doing because it seems to me that oh it's overrated. Like I'm like thinking, yeah, I mean, like was there's carnival in Mexico, right? It's it's, it's big, but it's not, I mean it's it is what it is, you know. There's there's the ones in Colombia, right? I mean, there are ones too. The one in you know Toronto, the one in UK. You can never beat up Brazil. Like they've done a really good job marketing that around the world. You cannot beat them. Like it's huge. Everyone goes down to Brazil. Everyone. All these guys literally save nickels and dimes. As you go down to Carnival, it's Literally, all types of men around the world like flocking down there, and I and, and girls too. Let's put um, and that's the thing that's where that's that's what people is talking, that's what it is, and that's where everyone wants to go to. Um, now I've never been there, I, I, I care less about it, honestly, but um. You know, the thing is, from the way guys are talking or anything all the time to me personally, I I, I I understand that. But that being said, okay, whether it be overrated or not, you can't really deny, um, you can't really deny that it's not overrated. It's, it's, I mean, that's just the reality of it. And that's the thing. That's the thing about it. like that's the thing. So when she's talking about overrated, oh, it's overrated. It's overrated. Okay, it's overrated. But let's be for real. Like it does come off a little bit because when you when you think of when you think of the carnival, let's be for real. We're thinking about you're thinking about women. You're thinking about girls. You're thinking about women. That's that's why guys are going down there. Like let's be for real. Like they did a good job promoting it. Um. They do an excellent job from around the world. Um, and the thing is, is that Brazil is number one. They've done an excellent job promoting that. They did a good job selling their women. And that's why men flock down there and they make a lot of money. A lot of money. And where and, and there's you know the samba programs, all that stuff. I get it. there's different samba schools and all that stuff. I get it. But you cannot deny the fact that no one, you cannot, I know why she's saying that. Because she got insecure because she saw really, really attractive women. And they're like, that's what they're trying to point out. And, and I'm not, it's all, well, it's not my perspective, listen for real here. Like, no one's denying the fact that Brazilian girls are attractive. Like, when you go out, I'm not going to deny myself, they are really attractive. 
Okay, but it depends where you're going and who you're talking to. That's another thing people don't understand something also. It doesn't mean everywhere in Brazil the girls are hot. It depends where you're going. But the thing is, remember also another thing too. When they talk about Brazil, they're only talking about the coastal areas of Brazil. They don't not talk about the entire country of Brazil. Most of these guys and girls don't go to the entire country because it's impossible. It's like Mexico. There's plenty, there's plenty of parts of Mexico I've never been to. People told me they were here. I'm like, I've never been there. It's like United States, same thing. That's what I try to tell you. But when she's talking about Carnival's overrated, she's basically saying the girls are overrated. That's basically what she's trying to say. And the thing about it, um, like, and that's the thing about it was like, and the thing is, I there's there's got there's a reason why she's doing that because she's insecure because she knows those girls are actually attractive. And that's just, you know, the thing is, is that. I mean, it's just the way it is. I mean, like, I'm not going to, listen, listen, listen. It's like me. Are there countries that are, like, they're known to be better looking guys, let's say, from where I'm from? Of course. I'm not intimate. I mean, you I mean, you got to admit to that. But the thing about the guys here in this country is that they actually, they actually try to admit that they're not, that they're trying to deny the fact that, most of the guys are ugly. And then and then the reality of it is that um that's the thing is and you know that's just the reality of it. And that's the thing. Why do you think everyone's fighting to go about Brazil, Brazil? Why do you think all these guys, these dating coaches, all these red pill content creators, all these guys going online, all the languages uh in Spanish, well, this case Portuguese. Why if you talk about Brazil, 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 Brazil? Everyone knows why people go to Brazil. And when you go to Brazil, you're gonna see all groups of men flocking down there. Like, let's be um, you know, let's be for real. And they done it, and let's let, let, let's let's believe it or not, they've done an excellent job promoting their culture around the world. Brazil did. That's the truth. And I think he, I think when you talk, we hear this girl talk about the American, you know, about the American, you know, about here in the United States. Why if she's in Miami, dude? Miami is full of mostly Latin Americans. What are you doing over there? And the thing that's the thing about it, like these, they're in, that's the thing. I get it, like you know that kind of thing. But come on. Of them? On this panel. So at the end of the day, are you married to any of them? Are you? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm married to a Colombian. I'm sure. Were you married before that? Do you are you a, a baby daddy? How many kids do you have? Not not now. You want to turn? How the many different baby mamas do you have? No, I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna defeat all you, your. You you got generally speaking. Do you guys see the hypocrisy behind this woman? And once again, guys, that's all part of hyena behavior. That's all part of hyena behavior. That's part of deaf language. You know, they deny the evidence. They become enraged when you present them with the evidence and they fight you or they flee through ad hominem attacks. You guys don't think I'm serious when I say what I'm saying, but this is what I call the concourse of mental illness permeate. It's mental illness, man, because, uh, you know, uh, the hypocrisy is is, is, is unreal. And, uh, and like Capricorn is saying, uh, he said that uh, she's hyperventilating. That's funny, man. And look how my man say, it's, Kelsey and Jay said she doubled down. Right. You guys see the hypocrisy. Look how disrespectful she is. And the brothers on the panel, I, I personally know those guys. Good guys. Shout out to John, uh, Jay, uh, Pierre. Good brother, man. But look at the hypocrisy, guys. The hypocrisy. Men, you should never allow a woman to talk to you in that aspect. On the on the flip, you shouldn't even go on the channel like that because it's just a bait. It's a bait. It's a trap to try to get you to say something off code. Also, to give them content creation to build their platform. Some people build their content off toxicity and beef. So uh, keep listening, guys. Hold tight. Give me one minute. Hold tight. Keep listening. Let's have a conversation soon. Have a problem paying. 40 bucks a month in child support, but you guys will use that same money to trick off a third world. And, and, and you guys see the shaming language. 
You guys see the shame of that. You, you're going to say, brother, the trick off in a third world country. But once again, it's their body, their choice. But when it comes down to you saying my money, my choice, then it's a problem. They can have inalienable rights, but you can't. So you see, guys, that we live in a very gynocentric culture where men can't have rights, men don't have rights, and they're always trying to find a way to shame you back into silence. You guys see it, and I see it, and that's a byproduct of deferred ratification. It's a byproduct of what we call the minimization of masculinity. Keep listening. Country woman, period. You've been in 81 countries, and, and no one has got on their knees. Oh, plenty of guys get on their knees, but... I, I, but we don't we don't try we don't travel because we don't travel because we, we're looking I'm for speaking men. To her. I'm speaking to her. Okay, you so you've been to 81 countries, so she done seen it all. So she she should be ready yes, for and and guess what? And that's the thing. You guys attach a woman's worth to being married and tied down and having kids. I chose never to have kids, and I am proud of being single. I'm sorry that you don't feel that so that's way. that's fine. That, so you support that, casual that, dating. You support casual dating. Me, can... me being attached to a dusty or any male, period, is not a badge of honor. So, me, so you have more of a problem with me being single than I do. That's fine. So you so support casual dating. You with support your casual Colombian dating. Woman you're not that married. You paid for you your mail around. order. Your mail order ride. You your mail you order ride in dating. Colombia. Worry about her. Why are you worried about my singlehood? Is she miserable? How many babies do you have? How many baby mamas do you have? Were you, you guys see the hypocrisy. You guys see the quick and object uh, issues associated with shaming language. It always, when it relates to black men, is the exact negative. Always exclusively negative when it relates to black men. You guys see it, and I see it. Keep listening. You married to an American woman before. Tell me that, Uncle. Look, look, yeah. at, look at how she's disrespecting him, guys, by calling him Uncle. Look at how she's disrespecting him, calling him Uncle. Look how she's disrespecting him. Check it out. Not sure. I'm, yes. I'm not, I'm not sure yes. Uncle. Well, you look like you could be. But go ahead, Uncle. Answer the questions. That's what I thought. Cat got your tongue. Is, who's the next? Who, who's the next victim? Well, apparently, he, you care about my status more than you care about your status. The, I hear some kind of like echo. Your, your microphone is messing up a little bit. Is it somebody? Whose phone is that? It's a, the gentleman with the maroon shirt with, that's speaking into the microphone. Your microphone's a little, um, like, we can't hear you. It's, uh, yeah, it's, no. it's very scratchy when you speak. Yeah, I don't think we can hear you, Tito. Go in, go in and go out and come back in. Yeah, he, he sounds robotic. Um, yeah, um, Lexi, do you, do you have anything to say? You have a take? You can go ahead. I'm going to listen in for a second because I am in the office, but I definitely have something to say. So in a couple of minutes, I will express all my thoughts. Okay. I'm going okay. to mute my mic for a second. Okay, then, Dennis, do you have a rebuttal to um, the young lady? About what? About what she said. I think she was... She um, said a lot, and she said a lot for a long time. I didn't catch it all. Of course, okay. because you have ADD. Go ahead. I don't have ADD, sweetheart. Well, you act like it. Okay, Uncle, so go ahead and address whatever I had to say. Whatever you're able to catch and, like, retain in your brain. So come on. <laughs> First of all, the guys that travel that I encounter, most of these guys are not incels. Most of these guys are not losers. A lot of these guys are decent guys. A lot of these guys got decent jobs. They make decent money, Okay. There seems to be this narrative. These guys are just losers that nobody wants. A lot of these guys have been married, okay? And they don't want to be married again. A lot of them are traveling. Men travel for different reasons. Some travel for sex. Some travel for basic common courtesy and respect. Some are looking for a wife and a girlfriend. I mean, it's just this, 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 this narrative that we're all one monolithic group with the same intention, and that's false. That is false. And Rami knows this. <laughs> He knows this. Not all of us are looking for the same thing. We're not all this monolithic group. It's, it's unfortunate that I have to make these disclaimers because people will take what I say and run with it. 
black men, we're not just individually, we're just as a group. One black man somewhere gets busted for, you know, having sex with underage girls, and we all get catch the heat for it. And that's wrong. As do black women. I agree. Black it, women are placed in one huge group as well, and we're extremely diverse. Jesus. There, there you go. Boom, bang, pow. Continue, Uncle. We're listening. Oh, God. You said that. It. Okay, black women are black women are not are put in a group. Black women are, are generalized, and that's wrong. I didn't say all black women are this. All black. I can't speak for other people. I speak for myself. I don't put all black women in a group. I've had good relationships here in the states with black women, all types of women. Okay, but this narrative that men are just going down there disrespecting black women in the process. Yes, some content creators do that. They do that, and I don't agree with it. Okay, just go and do your do your thing. And also, I get, I do understand Rami Peso's point, and also some of y'all points that some black men travel and act like they're pimps when they're when they're really tricking off. I don't agree with that either. But that's not what I'm doing. That's not I what I'm doing. You. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't think you know you should front like you're a pimp when you're when you're really paying for it. But at the same time, this is not what all the black women, the black men are traveling that are doing. We're not doing the same things. Okay, so you went to Colombia. You found you a male ordered bride. You're tricking for I life. Know. Wait a minute. See, see, now you're lying. <laughs> now you're lying. Now you reach it. Come on, man. I didn't go I to. Think... I went. I've been to Colombia one time, and I didn't look for no male order bride. Okay, nor did I look for a male order bride in Brazil. Okay, I'm not a dusty. I'm not an incel. I'm not a social retard. So you can't use that with me. So stop it. You are a degenerate. So let's. I'm a degenerate. Oh yeah, I'm a degenerate. I got a bachelor's degree in electronics engineer. I got my own business. Okay, and can't nobody fire me. Yeah, I'm such a degenerate. Come on, Educate. man. Educated lane, but go ahead. Um, Educate, okay, whatever. Keep talking about your mail order bride. Whatever, whatever. You're so invested in my life, so apparently she's not that relevant. Whatever, you're just making these ad hominem attacks. Of the you're black making women these ad hominem attacks this, that don't on mean this jack. panel. Sign language. <laughs> Sign so are, language. So, 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 are you going back up there? Like, do back you to like, where? What Brazil? Yes, I am. So, um, are you going up there because you enjoy the presence of those women there? I enjoy the weather when it's cold here in Chicagoland. I go to Brazil. Okay, when it's winter here, it's summer there, so I go there. I enjoy the weather, the food, the culture, the women. Of course, of course, the women are the draw. Nobody's denying that. But it's mm -hmm. not just the women. Uh, I found I like this, the is my, this is my personal experience. Okay. The difficulty that we run into. Is, hold on, hold on. My personality is more compatible with Brazilian culture than American culture. That's why I love it so much. Okay. My love for the country is genuine. Okay. I've been all over the country. So you can't you can't say that, hey, oh, you just, oh, you're a dusty, you're just going down there, you're banging whores. Oh, come on, man. It's, 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 it's more complicated than that. No, I mean, it, it's it's okay to be attached to a culture and love the culture. I, I, I don't think nothing's wrong with that, but but are you are you down in American women in the process, though? I'm not... I, I share my experiences with dating in here in America. I share my experiences. I mean, of course, of course the women are the draw. Nobody's denying that. But it's mm -hmm. not just the women. It's not just the women. Uh, I I feel like this, is my, this is my personal experience. Okay. The difficulty that we run into. Is, hold on, hold on. My personality is more compatible with Brazilian culture than American culture. That's why I love it so much. Okay. My love for the country is genuine. Okay. I've been all over the country. So you can't you can't say that, hey, oh, you just oh, you're a dusty, you're just going down there, you're banging whores. Oh, come on, man. It's, 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 it's more complicated than that. No, I mean, it, it's it's okay to be attached to a culture and love the culture. I, I, I don't think nothing's wrong with that. But but are you are you down in American women? Uh, my personality is similar to Brazilian than it is American culture, man. I relate to them more. It's a joy and love, man. And I'm gonna tell you right now, okay. The way I behave, I behave like a Brazilian man. So my personality relates more to Brazil than it is an American. Uh, no, nobody, no, 
you're an American. You act like an American. You talk like an American because you are American. Sorry, not even close. In the process, though. I'm not... I, I share my experiences with dating in here in America. I share my experiences, okay? I haven't had all bad experiences. I've had good women here in America, but I'm sharing my experience. These women, you guys saw how disrespectful they were. They were, but then these are the same people that get mad at Austin Holman for traveling abroad. They're the same people that get mad at um, um, Zoom to Thailand for traveling abroad. I know Dennis. Dennis is a good brother, but you guys see the level of disrespect. And once again, that's a a front to heteronormative masculinity. It's a strong front to heteronormative masculinity. Hold tight. Let me finish listening. Some men simply don't. Don't vibe with American women. It's not that they're dusty in sales lane. They may not just don't vibe with you, so they go somewhere else. Okay. If if you if you're if nobody's buying, if you're in the marketplace and nobody's buying. Shout out to my man to pay to pay and say, how can every black man have five baby mamas? Hashtag Black Women Choices, no doubt. Shout out to him. Thank you to pay. Uh, keep listening, brothers. Keep listening. What you're selling, you can do one of three things. You can change your product, which you can't. You can't change fundamentally who you are. You can't make yourself taller and this and this and that. A white person can't make himself black. You can improve your product and there's only so much self-improvement you can do or you can change the marketplace. And I changed my marketplace and I had a totally different result. Oh, okay. I, okay. I, I can get that. But but why do the men of spirit, specifically black men, go so hard at dogging American women, especially black women. This this is the part where it's not connecting. And see, God, this is the great disconnect. This is what we call uh, cognitive dissonance at its best. This is the great disconnect that when you know black men talk about their needs and what they want and their desires, it's often met with disingenuous comments where they say they're dogging us, and they're not. Men need to have the right to do what's best for them and get their needs met. And men need to have the right to do it consistent. But because so many guys have a condition like this. Yeah, yeah, you're right, um, Capricorn. Uh, he said we don't have to explain ourselves. And you're correct. You don't have to explain yourself to nobody. You can live your life on your own terms. You can live your life free. You can live your life. You want your freedom, girl. Live your life. Be free from the straggle daggles. Be a man. Be a man. Understand yourself. You better recognize where you came from. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like That's pretty much how these guys of your repute you don't have to brazil you you like it here you, you love the culture there is no, i think everybody that's been out of the country it has some type of love for whatever country they went to and they they, they just love that culture especially if they continuously go back but i don't understand why do black men become so disrespectful and just dog out their own women on social media that's the part that I'm not connecting. Because it's bi-directional. It's, it's bi-directional. Bi I mean, just, I mean, the, the, the I'm, I, I don't know the lady's name that spoke 
uh, that's on the panel next to you, to the right of you. But just just her, in her comments and her attitudes to the to the two men who are not being disrespectful at her at all, that is that is par for the course now in society today with the average black woman. And I'm married to a black woman. Um, I'm a polygamist, so therefore that's you know why I, why I travel and I travel to to, to uh, Kenya specifically because that particular lifestyle is legal there and 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 those women are much more um uh, closer to that particular lifestyle that that I'm pursuing but uh so that so you know to speak on wow wow I'm go, I'm a polygamist that's why in Kenya it's for polygamy that's why it's it's, it's it's part of my lifestyle to get a bunch of bitches in a row, you know, in the bedroom. Traveling to Kenya. It's it's a miracle they actually pick up a majority of black nation. That's that's a miracle. But the fact that I'm going with there, if it's my lifestyle, why can I not go, Kim? Why can I not go? On on that. But you know, the 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 prevailing attitudes. Um, and, 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 and postures. I mean, I mean, you know, we, we talk about go so hard. I mean, let's look at the, the swirler, uh, community who, you know, again, they want to date, you know, non black men and that's fine, but they go as far as to say, if you're pregnant with a black male, you need to abort it. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone in the black manosphere has ever gone that far to say, but did you guys see the hypocrisy? You guys see the hypocrisy, but then, you know, once again, like the brother said, the aggression is bi-directional. But well, do you see God see the hypocrisy? When men begin to speak out and say something, a similar sentiment, then it's an issue. That's why I tell you guys, don't go on platforms like this. Don't get into arguments with them because they're going to always come with you from a level of being irrational. Many lead with the degrees, but they don't know how to lead with femininity. And as I said before in the past, men don't care about your degrees. They don't care about it because it's not relevant to a man's greater prospects men need things to complement their masculinity keep listening hey, anything remotely like that hey, and, and nor nor nor, nor, nor no no me, no might as well no that's not equivalent that's not uh, equivalent ma'am uh, that's I, not I, equivalent ma'am no I, no nor do we nor nor do we nor do we say uh, black women are 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 uh are what do you call it uh body bags and and you know and things of that nature and, you know like no it's it's nowhere near that y'all 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 black men murder the way y'all murder black women and that's not true and that's and that that's that's also not that's also that's a falsity as well man Black That's man is staggering. No, it's not. not. And so, so watch this, guys. You guys see once again the over exaggeration, the over generalization of black men, or more or less violence or domestic violence. But here's the, here's the answer. Most domestic violence, based on a Harvard study, is started by women. That's 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 a fact. Most domestic violence is started by women from a Harvard study. Most domestic violence is started by women. It's bi-directional. Shout out to Dr. T.S.R. Johnson. But also, guys, let's say if men use that argument that... Um... Listen, I think every group of men kills their women. That's just the reality of it. So in that defense, but the, here's the reality of it. Like, that's not true. That's actually very true. Like, we all know who's killing most of your women. It's themselves. Um... It's not themselves. It's actually you guys. Let's be for real. I think a group of guys is the same statistics. The funny thing is, when they come talking negative about me, they use the same argument. They, oh well, you kill your women too. I mean, like, yeah, like so is the rest of the world. Like that's how it is. Like Japanese women men kill Japanese women. Mexican men kill Mexican women. Swedish men kill Swedish women. British men kill British women. Italian men kill Italian women. The list goes on and on around the world. Like, I mean, the, any of you guys that make this argument, like, this is not true, like, look, it's the reality of it. It's just the reality of it. I mean, it, it, I mean but the, the, besides the point, like, these guys don't care about women getting killed. They don't care. They don't care about girls getting killed. They don't care about, you know, domestic violence and all that stuff. They use it as a weapon to kind of deflect and I know these girls want to point out to that, but at the same time, you know what they're going to answer. They go, like, oh, that's not true. That's not true. 
Uh, we don't kill women like that. What are you talking about? That's a bad statistics. Like, come on. Like, let's be for real. Like, come on. Like, every guys around the world have been guilty of this. So it's not like, you know, everything is innocent. But come on. Like, you're in denial of this? Yeah, you're, you're, you're reaching, man. You're reaching. You really are reaching. And that's why I, got, I have to say this. But it is a factual thing. See right here. There we go. There we go. I'm American now. Hey. Uh, hey, I want to interview you because you speak English. I would like to no. talk. Not now. Not now. <laughs> I don't like to speak English. You don't like to speak English? No. But I want to talk to you later on another day. All right. Well, I I want, in Spanish. I want to talk to you about how it is in America being Dominican and you like this, the normal stuff, you know, because a lot of people want to know, you know. I have a boyfriend there. You got a boyfriend in America? Yeah. Are you married? No. You're not married? No. Why not? I'm too young. You too, how old are you? 19. You're not too young. Hold on, see, now you done went to America and went and let that shit influence you. <laughs> see, this is what we like about, see, you, you done did the wrong shit. Hey, you know, hey, hold on one second. <laughs> see, this is what we like about, see, you, you done did the wrong America and went in. You're not too young. Hold on, see, now you done went to America and went and let that shit influence you. <laughs> see, this is what we like Hold on, see, now you done went to America and went and let that shit influence you. <laughs> see, this is what we like about, see, you, you done did the wrong shit. Hey, you know, hey, hold on one second. <laughs> See, she is American now. I know a lot of in America. And so I want. No, no. You know, I'm not no. Let's see, pop. Yeah, that's if you want to pop. You said. It's okay. It's okay. You want to party? They ask you if you want to party. He was like, um, let me, you know, I'm not no, let's see, puffs, puffs, let's see. I'm not going to say that. And so I want it. No, no. He said, it's okay. It's okay. You want to party? They ask you if you want to party. He was like, um, let me, you know, I'm not no, let's see, puffs, puffs, let's see. He was like, yeah, thank you. You want to know if you want to party? I'm gonna for the night club. They can, guys, right, they were like 300 pesos old. But they're gonna open the club in a minute. So they go and let everybody know. Hey, so what's up, man? Hey, how y'all doing today, man? It's your boy King. We are just chilling right now, man. You know what? Hey, let me give y'all a little view of some things, man. Oh, oh, check it out. Oh. Oh, hey, what's up, man? What's going on with y'all, boy? I man, you know what time it is, man. We out here chilling, man. It's the Lions Day and takeover. Drinking for little, uh, uh, a few minutes, a lot of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So One thing about this place right here, it's mixed in with tourists, mixed in with Dominicans. Put it up, put it up. It's... Hold on, man. We're drinking this drink, man. We're doing our thing, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why I hear, man. That's why I'm saying, man. I'm in Dominican Republic, man. You know how it is, man. You know how it is, man. Y'all it is, fool. Y'all see how it is, man. That's how it is in in the Caparate. That's why I say so so many beautiful Latinas in Dominican Republic. Oh my God, yes. You know how it is when you keep it with King Locker. You don't gotta do it the best way, you know what I mean. So I'm about to show y'all guys some girls and stuff. I'm about to show y'all the food that we eat out here around this time right here. We're chilling with the lion's den. You want to say what's up? Okay, hold on, hold on. Now, y'all already know I got one of the den members out here, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to let him go on and say what's happening right quick. Like, I don't just really showed up and showed out right now. You know what I'm talking about? Leon. Bro, bro. So how y'all doing? How y'all doing? Bro? They're right, they're right, they're right, they're right. Now I don't want to put everybody on camera if everybody don't want to be on camera. 
Huh? If everybody don't want to be on camera, I ain't gonna put everybody on camera. Oh yeah, okay, good. That's good. All right, so yeah, so yeah, man, that's what's happening. So uh, I'm gonna show y'all, I'm gonna show y'all the different, I'm gonna show y'all what's going on tonight, man. You know, we eating good. I'm gonna show y'all what's going on at the time tonight. You know, it's been a minute since I actually been out because I've been working on business, you know, doing my own thing, man, and you know, apart from all the other bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, man, so this is what it is. I'm gonna give y'all a good view of what's going on out here. Man. So this right here is like 70, 80 percent tourists, and then the rest of them are Dominican. So you see how you got the, you know, how you got the, see how you got the, see how you got this right here. See, you, know, you got the white girls out here for the white boys. I mean, for the for the Dominican boys. You know what I'm saying? So look at this over there. Hold on, whoa, whoa. Dominican boys. You know, white boys. I mean, for the for the Dominican boys. White boys. I mean, for the. You, know, you got the white girls out here for the white boys. I mean, for the for the Dominican boys. You, know, you got the white girls out here for the white boys. I mean, for the for the Dominican boys. You, know, you got the white girls out here for the white boys. I mean, for the for the Dominican boys. You, know, you got the white girls out here for the white boys. I mean, for the for the Dominican boys. You, know, you got the white girls out here for the white boys. I mean, for the for the Dominican boys. You, know, you got the white girls out here for the white boys. I mean, for the for the Dominican boys. You know what I'm saying? So look at this over there. Hold on, whoa, whoa. Now this. All right, so that white girl is for them Dominican boys. Did you hear that? Them white boys, they're they're um they're for Dominic. They're that that's that's pretty just uh, crazy. That is absolutely crazy to hear that shit. Then why boy that white girl right over there? Well, she's not. I want to see her as white. She's looking for she, that's for Dominican men. That's for the Dominican boys. That's really weird for him to say that. Why is he zooming that camera? Why is he doing that? I mean, there are white. What you call white Dominican women, right? I'm assuming that they're in that position, right? It's not Sasua, man. This this a step up from Sasua, real classic. You know, to my eight. So you get some question to answer. Hey, I promise y'all when I get some eye candy and stuff like that, I'm gonna show them to you. Hold on. All girls. Okay, one guy. Okay. Man, I wish I was Y'all living it up. Yeah, we living it up, man. That's how it is. I can't even exaggerate. All girls. Okay, one guy. Okay. Oh, man, my God. This is how perverted these guys. Yeah, we living it up, man. That's how it is. I can't we, li we living it up, man. We living it up, man. I'm telling you, man. I got some nice ass puss, girl. We living it up. We're living it up. And the reason why I say this, man, before I even, even start having these type of conversations, I'm telling you, this is how crazy these people are. Because, um, you know, that, that proves to me right there just how sen senile these people really are. I'm sorry, but these guys are just weird. These guys are just just weird, you know. That's just the reality of it. They're weird. They're crazy. They're out there. And that's something that's something these guys don't want to talk about. I'm sorry to say that.
And that's another thing these guys need to need to understand what they're doing also. Um, is this is how tragic a lot of these guys talk. They see the most craziest shit ever just because they want attention from uh, you know, people. And before I even say anything else here, I I did want to show this one one part here. I will say this. It is kind of funny how these chicks are on that stream. They're like, you, you know, they're fighting over they're fighting over Brazil. That's the thing about it's crazy about it. They're fighting over Brazil. That let's say men use the argument that uh which I don't believe it that you know they're 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 deleting our women at a high rate. Every ethnic group is complicit in deleting women. But then men turned around and said that okay, let's look at the, that. Let's say that was true, the small sample, if they are deleting uh black women. Would it be fair if those said those same said what men said, uh, look at the amount of black babies that our women are deleting? That they delete black babies at a higher rate than any other ethnic group. So the, the, the lack of self-awareness is is, is is appalling. The hypocrisy is appalling. Uh and and, and, and you know, uh it's always in the state of perpetual victimhood. Baby deletions, many times in our culture, guys, and I believe you guys, I believe it to be true. It's based on uh, what some would call uh, uh, this free sex or free love. Many times it's not on uh, the G word rape. Uh, it's not always on, uh, you know, incest. But many times it's just casual sex. And if our babies had been deleted at the rate that they have been deleted, some will argue um, that uh, our population would have been a lot bigger. But they'll take a small sample size and equivocate it to something way bigger. Uh, I know how to have a conversation without disrespecting the name calling, but uh, still in all, uh, I you talk about like how she, you know, black women disrespect y'all. So y'all disrespect us though. I, I think we in the black community don't know. How did the conversation, guys, go from black men dating abroad and to the so called trick and nonsense to uh, them being disrespected? I think for the last 50 years, we heard it on again, off again about, uh, you know, men of ego to sit being losers, lazy, don't take care of the kids. And, you know, a lot of guys took it on the chin. Um, they tended to equivocate all black men with the few percentage that were doing a lot of the damage. I'm not saying that they're not some white collar men that are complicit and bad boy behavior as well, but in general, it's the bad boys. But this is why Austin Holloman is so passionate about traveling abroad. This is why he's so passionate about not saving a so-called faltering um, community because it does not appear to be alive. It does not appear to be rejuvenated. And that's why Austin Holman is saying, save yourself, black man, do what's best for you and not get caught up in the shenanigans of the modern times. Because once again, guys, uh, that's the spirit of many modern hyenas. I've never accounted. All right. This is a problem a lot of these guys don't want to admit. But it's because deep down inside, these don't want to know how fucked up their community is. They're not that physically attractive. This is why these guys focus so much about Brazil, 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 because the people down there are good looking. Now, it's all a bunch of perspective, okay? Everyone has their own opinions, but that's the perception around the world that these people are attractive. What I find very funny is that he's one of the many guys that go down there in droves. And everyone knows why guys go to Brazil. Like, it's obvious. The girls there are actually really attractive. So you're going down there. Okay, fine. The argument is don't bash the women. Sorry, don't bash black women, quote, unquote. But at the same time, these divesting chicks do bash them in these other countries as well. Because they're insecure, because that deep down inside, these women still prefer their own men. They're just upset that they're being rejected. And the thing about it, they just don't find them attractive, which is why I'm trying to tell you that a lot of these black American females, like even these divesting chicks, they're still quasi, still kind of like idolize and like worship their own men. Because remember, a lot of these divesting chicks used to be a bunch of pro black chicks. So they're going to divest and get with, like, I think they say usually just white and Asian guys. I guess so. Don't be surprised this girl lives somewhere in Asia. That's what you usually always go get Asian, white men, blah, 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 blah. You know, I usually work with these girls. 
But the problem is a lot of these women don't understand is that that the problem is is that that's if they want you. And that's the thing about also. But at the same time, these guys are also lying as well too because a lot of these guys don't understand how they're trying to act like, oh, I, I can relate to Brazilians. Like, no, you can't. I, I, I hate when people start saying that because even in South America, even like Colombians, they can't really relate to Brazil because Brazilians are their own little culture. I mean, because it's a huge culture. It's just a difference. It's a big difference. Not the same thing as Colombia or Peru, Ecuador, because they're all bored to Brazil, but no one goes around saying we're all the same, like Brazilian chicks. You know, like, like because these guys are saying that because deep down inside, they just don't like their own group. They don't like their community. They don't like their women. They think it's ugly. They think their own people are ugly. And about aborting babies, like, they don't care about babies being poor in their community. They don't care. They don't care about that. That's all just a joke. And by the way, not a joke when I'm saying this. Someone sent me this clip right now. Let me see right here. I got something to say about this stuff, right? Um, my problem with with this is that even 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 watching this shit, why are all these guys when they're protesting? There's still women involved. Why why are you letting women be in the charge? Oh my god, he touched he she touched him. Assault, assault. Like, yeah, they they're, they're baby, they're baby. They're very babied. Um, this is the pull up. These are the racist Mexicans. I, I don't think. Do you think that girl's Mexican? I don't know. You know, when I see this video, 
These are the same women that bitch and complain. I'm not here to say this. I'm not here to even argue with this, right? But it is kind of a fact here. But my question is, again, why are you guys allowing a girl to speak? And on the other end, who are these other people, uh, spaces? I thought it was a fight. I was like, oh, there's a fight breaking down. I'm assuming it'll be a fight, right? It's got to be. I'm talking to uh, this DJ in the uh, in the DMs, and he says, "If they were smart, they won't go over there." Um, y'all think these radio stations just because you see black faces, you think they're owned by black black faces? They're not. They're owned by Jews. A lot of these radio stations are owned by Jews. Um, so uh, the Jewish thing. Oh my God! This is such an embarrassment, man. This is such an embarrassment. I swear to God, these guys are retarded. These guys are really, really retardedly stupid. You know it, right? You bring that shit to the non, to, to the black woman. Fuck that jealous bitch. She just hating because of my hair is longer. He ain't check you. You you probably talked a few things with some black woman uh, from from your live stream. You probably was tough. You thought you thought you. You know. You know the problem is with a lot of these guys starts talking about this stuff really just generates a lot of the stupidity about this because let me just say right now about these. Uh, let me let me let me explain how this works. Um. A lot of these guys, they got a bad attitude in this remark. They like to show off they love to be victims. Um, to me, it's still weird how a girl is still in charge of everything. That thing is weird to me. That is weird to me. Now, it, it is kind of sad that these guys are fighting over Brazil, Brazilian women. It is, it, it's weird. It, it, it's kind of weird. Safety freeze other people. I'm going to go with that. And that's the same thing with a lot of these other guys. Like, and no one's going to sit there and just be for real when we talk about this because everything to them is all about race because that's how it is. You know, the Americans are about race. Um, The Americans... As is something that I was trying to tell you about this, a lot of these guys they focus way too much on this shit because, um, as is something that I always try to explain this to a lot of people about, especially about a lot of Americans here, they make it into a whole racial thing. You know that, right? They really do. They really do um they really do make it into a whole racial thing. The Americans do. And for the most for the most most part, um that's just the way it is. Most of these guys got some weird issues. Most of these guys have a lot of problems. And what I don't like, see, this is the thing. What I don't like are all the excuses being played out from most of these people. It doesn't matter how you think or how you feel. 
at the end of the day, you're not these people. I want to literally make this very, very clear. You're not these people. So why is it that these people still talk? And that's okay, but but you got to be honest why you're so focused on this region. Y'all got a fetish. You really do. You actually really love these people to the point it's a fetish. No discussion about it. Y'all wish you were these people. You want to be like them. It's obvious. No one's denying that. I feel like the problem of a lot of these guys, um, what, what my problem with a lot of these guys is, um, who's that on the screen? That's the pro the counter protest of, uh, you know, the little thing about them, man. It's the second pull up, the second pull up. It's like, dude, like, I, I mean, look, for example, like the Mexican things, like I, I know a lot about, about Mexicans. But let's see for real about the Mexicans. No one cares. Same thing with Brazilians. Same thing with the Colombians. No one really talks about you guys like that. That that is the thing that to me is weird. Like no one really speaks about the Americans like the way these guys are doing it. I was making fun of you. That shit was cool though. Man. You didn't know them niggas was showing up. I know a lot of them niggas, for sure. That's right. And they told Josh. They said, I told you, I told you, I'm the one that said oh, they were yeah. showing up deep. I called hey. D like they said, hey boy, they come they said the they said, said uh, <laughs> this, why they come in like that. Hey, we we are, we are interview. You know what they said? Yeah. They said, they said Adam Lucky A D here. Am I lying? Are, are you looking at me? I'm oh. saying. Josh know too. They uh, they interview some 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 young man named America Jolo. Mm-hmm. And Bozo. Same, I mean, if, yeah, and Bozo. You, I mean, you might have seen him. They they the same nigga who got uh the May Tiger Tiger say sorry, and then take his video down on Part One Hundred Six. You ever see that video? I've never seen that. Okay, you really in tune with yourself. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I don't really be paying too much. I'm like, this shit is sad as hell, bro. And with me standing there looking at all of this shit, and them up here. I, I want to uh, uh, formally apologize to Tiger because I feel like I didn't take his side and be a little bit more, you know, compassionate about what was going on. You know what I'm saying with him in that video? I, I was laughing and joking. Even when Lefty was up oh, there. Oh, God. Oh, he this and he that. It could be, you know, how big it could be. Nobody, so, nobody, yeah, no, oh, nobody God. And, and, and I know for sure, knowing him, being close to him, fucking with him, that he meant no malice at all doing that video. Like, That's right. nothing. Like, he didn't mean no malice. He didn't mean nothing wrong by it. Like, nothing that this nigga been giving LA culture and Hispanic culture hits for the last decade. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So, you would have had to find some compassion in there. Uh, it was a lot of things wrong, but as a as a Hispanic coach, I would just be like, hey, homie, that wasn't cool. You don't do that shit again. But, you know what I'm saying? Looking at his track record, because it's more, way more good than bad. You feel me? And I was sure, sitting sure. here and I'm sitting here antagonizing niggas and doing that, and I shouldn't have did that because looking at what Cuz said, American oh, Cholo God. Nigga, looking at what Tyreek said, I'm like, these niggas, wow. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? But, yeah. The storm Bang. You know, we go crazy. Wow. Y'all be crazy on that. That's hard you did that. No, that shit was cool. That was cool. They were very well needed when me and AD sat down. It's all hood talk, folks. You feel me? You feel me? For me, like when we sat down, they for that call me price, like because you know I know a lot of them and shit, and they were just like, hey, for it just, it just, you know what I'm saying? Like I know, oh man, god, blowing out of proportion. People don't know what's going on behind the scenes and shit going. Niggas on. think niggas bum rushed in here and did all like, nah, man, I'm like to me, I'm like, you get this old ass fucking <laughs> nobody not doing this shit. The bitch this ain't 1990, like, like well, you know, y'all niggas in here doing know, bozo. I was his first black feature. You know what I'm saying? Like he's got a lot of shit. He, we not doing none of that shit that the, the boy talking about on his spot. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Our our main my main thing was talking about my boy. He been doing he been doing more for the Hispanic culture than I ever seen that a young was nigga. The, that was the ever. whole reason boy talking about on his spot. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Our 
our main my main thing was talking about my boy. He's yes, been doing he's been doing more for the Hispanic culture than I ever seen that a young was nigga. The, that was the ever. whole reason why I even jumped in this anyway, because I felt like Duno was getting all this pressure put on him. We didn't do shit. We didn't have no nothing. Yeah, he didn't do but, but we didn't got understand. Nothing. Like I think I think teaching both I think just seeing everybody's perspective. Like we like Sean Army Bozo, when we talked, he was like fool, sometimes you gotta educate people even on social media. And that's something that was well needed. Oh I mean, God! That shit was just you feel me? It looked crazy, bro. It looked crazy. And they know power. And I, I was mad as a bitch. This nigga all the way up on this motherfucking platform because you said something. Like nigga ain't got me fucked all the way up. We ain't saying these niggas' names no more. So you know what I'm saying? Oh I just think, God! I just think everybody has like their voice. You feel me? Like everybody's gonna do what they do. This, this is this is a problem with these guys, right? I got um. You know, this is why I kind of feel bad. For me saying this, but this is why no one really respects these people because the fact is, I'm looking at the content right now. Every time these people talk about race, it's absolutely insane. I'm going to look out of here. Hold on a second. It's like, for example, like, I'm not even joking. Like, they get all emotional in these comment sections. You get involved. Again, it's all about race. And it's like, why won't you, why won't this bad community help us? I'm like, what is wrong if you people say we got to help you? Like, this is something these guys need to understand. Like, there's no helping. Like, we can't help you. Um, If you look down here, uh, uh, if you, uh, I love how they blame what America Chilla said out of his own mouth on Adam. Don't say it if you don't stand on it. Uh, Cloud, it was an interview. I act like he don't like Mexicans, ketchup and mustard. It, you see all these points, right? Being scared and you don't get packed up to death by 40 people. Um, the difference between being scared and being s smart, so you don't get packed up by 40 people, blah, blah, blah. Tell, <laughs> reacting towards it. Uh, that's why, this is why, uh, but if you're a Mexican, does that, or Spagars did what Tiger did, just the opposite, then y'all, no y'all would be saying something. That's true. Like, I, we, listen, listen, these, um, these guys don't understand this, okay? If this was reversed... You do know that you got an attitude about this. And this goes back to the whole thing about you guys being spoiled. A lot of you guys do feel like you're entitled for something. And that's something that you guys need to understand. You're, you bitch about your women. You bitch about other people. You bitch about all this stuff. It's like, what's wrong with you guys? And that goes back to being a freaking American. You are an American. You're from the United States. So you're pampered and spoiled. Like, you feel like, oh, someone can touch you. It's just ridiculous. It's just not going to be this way. I'm sorry, but it's true. Look. Like, um. And that's the thing about it. Like, that's why all these broke Mexican gang members keep thinking Dino has to turn into super thug and start acting like a strip tripping broke clown. When really he's a comedian, doesn't have the same take as he's. I mean, good lord, man. The grammar here is just horrible. I mean, every time you people talk, it's just, it's just the gets. Hispanic community has a has lot to say. Let me see right here. Sorry. Hispanic community have a lot to say. Wait, wait, wait. One second, one second. I have a lot to say when it comes to the African Americans, but silent on the issues facing their communities. It's crazy that narcotics destroying their generations, uh, but they choose to get act on a rapper that won't stand up to the cart, but won't stand up to the cartels flooding their community with manufactured drugs or stand up against extortion okay first of all this has nothing to do with the cartel this is these are people here in the united states right 
And it's crazy that the Nutcracker destroyed their generations. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're not taking the drugs. Your community's taking the drugs. Okay? And you don't understand that. You won't sell to the cartels. Flinder. That's like me asking you to stand against the drug lords in your communities. You're not going to do that. Because number one, you're lazy. Okay? Let's be for number one. Number two, you're scared. You're not going to do that. And number three, these that's the thing. The, the drug dealers that are in your community, they're backed by cartels. What they're not going to tell you, see, it says that's the thing about these guys. They don't understand this, how this works. Okay? The cartels has nothing to do with Mexican American gangbangers. That's a separate, different issue. Okay? These guys are deflecting. That is the equivalent of me telling them, focus on black on black crime. Black Americans, they love doing this shit. Every time you question these guys, they immediately start deflecting and start saying, focus on this, focus on that. No. You made a video. The, the, the video was made. Obviously, he's not ADOS with that crap. None other crap. These people are, are going to ask questions. They want you. They're going to ask apology. What's the problem? The reason why you got a problem with it, it's not because the fact is that the guy says something. No, it's the fact that he apologized. Because in your community, you got a problem when it comes to apology and setting some sort of accountability. It's like, I'm serious. Every time these guys talk, it's always them being a the victim. It's the most craziest thing. Like, I'm like, there's a lot of things. Yeah, like, they won't admit your fault, but they won't admit their faults. They love being victims. They can never be wrong. Like, it's always, they want to talk about white supremacy, white supremacy. Like, African-American community has a lot to say when it comes to Hispanic Americans, but the sound of the issues in their communities. Crazy that black-on-black crime destroying their generation, but they choose to act on. Cop for doing his job, but won't stand against gangbangers killing many black men. Listen, I'll be honest with you. You can say that if they're going to go with that narrative. They're not going to talk, they don't care about black-on-black crime. They don't care about that stuff. It's just excuses. Like it, it's just, it really is. These guys just don't want to admit that their community is a problem. And were you like it or not, uh, y'all suckers bowing down to them clowns, acting like they rock with us all over the me are sensitive. Bring that East Coast. Bring it to East. We, we we won't bow down to to nobody. I'm like, dude. Like the reality of it, it's because no one cares. They keep saying the East Coast, the East Coast. You know why I keep saying the East Coast? It's because they feel entitled acting like they run the East Coast, which is not true. Like, like a lot of these guys, God damn, I don't, don't want to talk about game banging on weird shit. I'm not a part of that, that weird, retarded lifestyle. But look, most of these guys, they got issues, right? All they're talking about, hey, just apologize. That's it. If you don't find it offensive, okay, you don't find it offensive, but some people find it offensive. What's the problem? You know why? Because all the time I hear these guys complain, they find it offensive, it's taken down. No questions asked. That's how it is. But someone find it offensive from you guys, you go ballistic. You call it anti-black. All this weird shit. Does not make any sense? Yeah. Mexicans. Mexicans, Mexicans, it's all the Mexicans. What do you expect? Mexicans are always in packs. They have three families living in two bedrooms, splitting the rent. I'm like, well, that's true. Mexicans say the yeah, 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 all the time, but get hurt when Tiger shows their culture mad love. Shaking my head, Mexico are the new LGBT, I guess. Mm, nah. That's that's your community. You guys love the gay community. The the, the new LGBTQ nope, that's y'all because every time there's a new there's a rapper being exposed for being a being a Called homosexual. Trail wound and stage. 
I, you know something? I don't think these guys realize the the people you tell them are Mexicans. You know these are not Mexicans. These Mexicans punk y'all. They made y'all take all that shit down when they copy black cats all the time. Y'all didn't even bring up his podcast about them talking about blacks. Don't get reparations until Mexicans and Native Americans do. Funniest thing, he's not even Mexican. He's making blacks and Mexicans beef while he ain't either. either. I, you know something about that? I'm going to be really, really be fair for you when I say this to people. Like the whole reparation, who gives a shit about the reparations? You know, right? No one cares. I love this one because you're all Americans. You'll never understand why Chicanos want to be black because you're Americans. Because you are all Americans. What's the problem? Uh, you go in, you go out, the list goes on and on. Mexicans, Mexicans, uh, Mexicans, all these Mexicans. Oh, my God. More game banging. All that weird stuff. All that do or die ride. All that. All, hey, listen, listen, listen. Let me let me just backtrack the whole thing. I'm going to tell you. Um, Listen. I understand why a lot of American guys. I might. Okay. I might defend American guys. For a quick second. Listen. I'm not denying. Okay. I am not denying that there's no mean American girls. Because I'm not going to deny that. Like, I'm being honest with you. I met American women, and it, it's kind of true. Like, you go outside, they do have mean faces. It's hard to approach them and all that stuff. And that girls are, you know, not the same as anyone else. And that's okay to recognize that. No one's, den- listen, listen. No one's denying that. No one is. Okay? And let's be for real. It's a reality of it. Like when these guys talk about like Mex about like you know like the girls in these countries, like for example, Latin America, it is different though. I'm not gonna lie, it's easier to approach, blah blah blah. But the problem is is the the problem I have with these guys is really what they've been saying on their channel. Because a lot of these guys sit there and just act like, oh my god, they're so aggressive and mean. And stand up why they're acting like this, and they act like they're dumbfounded, play stupid when you know what happened to these girls. These girls have been assaulted, they have been harassed, they've gone through some abuses going on. These guys know what happened to them. So instead of them like comforting them and saying, Hey, look, listen, not all guys are like this. I'm a little bit different. Let just like let me earn back your trust. If they went with that approach. I think things will be different. But no, instead, they get upset that why is she rejecting me? And then start proceeding on the bitch about it. Like a girl. Like it's it's it's, it's insane. It's like, hey, what you get, woman? That what you get. And it's like a revenge fact. What happened when they're 21? I'm like, bro, like you're in your 30s right now. Why do you care whether or not girls hate you or not? Listen, listen. Okay. You gotta understand something about you gotta understand something also. Like, I know these guys love to talk about Brazil, Brazil, and girls in Latin America go to these countries and blah, blah, blah. I, I, I get I get it. I get why these guys are fixated because there's an abundance of hot women and, and your country's a lot of ugly-ass chicks. This is what they'll usually say all the time, right? And, and that's something that... um. That's something is uh that's that's something that I'm not going to deny because I, I can't deny. Listen, listen. If someone told me right, if someone told me like um, you know like um, you know these girls down there are pretty. I'm not gonna sit and deny like no, no, that's not true. No, no, it's true. The girls down there are really, really pretty. I'm not gonna deny that. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, no, that's not true. No, no, no. Okay, there are very attractive women. Yeah, but but it doesn't mean that everyone, okay, is attractive. 
that's another thing. So we got to look at this whole thing about attractive. So, and I always keep telling this to so many of these guys is that, and I'm really sorry to say this, but it really is the truth, okay? Like, it really, really is, it really is the truth when I say this, but a lot of these guys here are just, you know, they're not, they're not, I'm going to put it lightly to these kids here, okay? The problem is, is that they don't want to admit they fucked up. That's the truth. They messed up the system. They had a good role. They denied it. And they're going around blaming everything on the women. You can't do that. And the fact that these guys are going around and just lying to people and just telling people that it's it's my fault or, you know, sorry, it's your fault. You're the girls. We got to replace you because... This is not, it's not, it's not plausible. You know what happened to these chicks, okay? You know why the girls down there are attractive and feminine, whatever, and the girls here are the way they are. You fucked them up in the head. You mentally messed up in the head. You don't want to take any accountability. You want to blame everything on the sun. You want to blame uh, uh, the, the, them being hoes, them, them being not loyal, them being too nerdy, them having degrees. It's every single thing you do with these females, you make it out. It's all your. It's all their fault, and and I'm not saying there's no accountability because there is accountability to be made. But let's be perfectly clear here: a lot of these women that are talking like this, they're out of frustration because they don't know where else to go. And the reality of it, they still want to get married. They want to marry you. I don't know how, but they're going to marry you. They want to marry you, but you don't want to get married. Okay, you don't want to get married. The real reality of it is that the majority of these girls that are talking like this, it's because most of these girls are upset. They're upset because the fact is you're shitting on them. What a surprise they're upset. You're upset because you're hiding the fact that, well, look at these women. Why they're not being, why are not like the women down in Colombia? Well, first of all, it's not that they got a problem with these guys. You got to stop comparing the women that are not your women to your women. Okay. Understand that you're not Colombian, you're not Mexican, you're not Cuban, you're not Dominican, you're not from Venezuela, you're not from you're not from Chile, you're not from Brazil, you're not from Argentina. So why in the world are you comparing women that are not your women to your women? That is nowhere in the same range as your mentality, and then you get pissed off why women are crap. When in reality, that's your fault. I'm sorry. I hate to break the news to you, but these white girls being whores, for example, that's on you guys. They're doing that for you, not for me. Okay? Because the last time I checked, the vast majority of white chicks are checking out and mostly want to be around white guys. Same thing with the black ones. So someone's getting these girls pregnant. Someone's suffering these girls pregnant. And the thing is, it's you guys. It's your fault. This goes back to what I said. It's all these guys' fault. I'm sorry. It really sucks to say that, but it's the truth. You guys do not want accountability. You don't want to take responsibility. Anytime you mention this, they you use all these names and everything, but that's just the truth. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say that, but that's just the reality of it. And a lot of these girls... They got to take it in, but the reality of... I, I mean, look. These girls are mean, right? Stop being stupid. You know why she's mean. You, Someone heard her. They're looking for comfort. And you shit on them. When reality of it, when a girl gets hurt, you as a guy put her on the side and say, look, not all guys are like this. And just be give her a pep talk and let her improve herself in her dating life. That's what you should be doing. You guys don't do that crap. You guys like to shit on women constantly and blame everything on them for no reason other than the fact they got a vagina. Because you know what? Because they're an easy target and you know, and this is something I'm trying, this is very dangerous as well. You condition your girls to stay here in the United States. 
and to limit their options to black chocolate and vanilla. That's what's going on here. The girls here are not, girls here do not want to do this, but you don't want to come here and say this, but let's be for real. You made your women undesirable on purpose. That's why right now they have a hard time dating and you're oh, well, uh, they can't date. Like, of course they can't date like the way you got. Because number one, you're asking guy girls out. These girls can. And the thing about it, since you guys tarnished them so badly around the world, no guy wants to come here. Italian guys don't want to come here like that. You know, Russian guys don't care about the girls here. Croatian men don't give a F about the Greek men don't give a F about the girls here. The list goes on and even the guys from Latin America and our, our other country, I mean, you know, like they don't care about. And when I'm saying this, I know that sounds offensive about that, but at the same time, they don't have to care because they're not your women. They're not your men. I keep saying this to people like they're, they're not your men. So don't worry about it. The fact that, you know, let's say the beaners, hate don't like you. Why do you care? You, they're not. You're not, but you do care because what's happening is that you feel like you're in a rut. And I really do feel like they're in a rut. And I feel the situation is pretty, pretty bad. And I don't know what to say because I'm thinking, well, I'm not your community. So I don't have to abide by this. But these guys are having mentality. So what's good? And this is why I keep trying to tell a lot of people about this. A lot of these, a lot of these guys. They're gonna have a massive wake up call because I really do believe this. There has to be some sort of intervention, utter uh, intervention going on outside the United States because these guys here are really too spoiled. Same thing with their cousins up in the UK, they're too spoiled, they're too pampered. And I, you know, and something's gonna happen to all of this because you know. I, I keep telling you, this is so many different guy, different guys here. If you keep promoting these countries, you're gonna track your woman down there. I don't think you're gonna like to see your woman down there. So, you know, it is what it is, man. It's just one of these moments. Is just what it is.